north of Ashland, it looks like. This is moving off to the northeast. I can put a track on these cells to give you an idea of where they're going to go over the next few minutes because that's going to move into Lone Pine in about five minutes. Essary Springs in six minutes, 11 minutes from Cypress. Chihuahua Lake about 16 minutes away, 25 minutes from Guys. And this is just rain right now, but we want to watch this closely because the atmosphere, again, very unstable all across northern Mississippi and the entire coverage area. But the most intense cell is this one. Now, we're also watching what's occurring back to the west because I'm not on the Little Rock radar here, but this is the Memphis radar picking up strong to severe storms back into Little Rock that could make their way into our area before the night is over as these cells continue to mature and move to the northeast. Now, if they continue on that track, it may just clip us, but this one right now, that's the one that we're watching closely. That's the one that looks like it may very well have produced a tornado. We have no actual confirmation on it, but the radar signature was very impressive. And Spencer, it looks like it may be collapsing on itself right now. Are you seeing anything on uh, the links that may give you uh, that same indication? Yeah, it, it's try it looks like it's kind of uh, recycling a little bit. So it's going through those uh, cycling uh, rotations where it will uh, kind of dampen down and then it will uh, crank back up. And you can see, and let me uh, redo this because uh, it looks like it just updated. So we just have the uh, newest update coming in here. Still at 5,000 feet, we have eight, uh, 81 mile per hour winds near the community of Balch. Again, that's about 5,000 feet up, so it may not be quite that strong at the surface. Uh, but either way, there is strong winds rotating around uh, this cell. The, uh, I'm watching the BTI and it is slowly going back up. It's now at a 4.4 on a scale of 1 to 10. So that's uh, kind of getting into that category where we start to think that there's certainly something there. But I think uh, this storm is cycling and uh, let's take a look at the uh, r latest here. This is heading through the Amagon community, through Pennington. Uh, again, Wiener's right in the path of this storm, yeah. and it looks like uh, Waldenburg is very close to being in the path of this as well. But uh, what we're seeing here certainly indicates this storm has no signs of uh, really dying down. If anything, it's just going to go through these cycles of strong and then weak rotation. Uh, and you can see the latest update there. But uh, Ron, this this is in the area that we anticipated would have the strongest or the greatest threat for uh, strong rotating storms, and that's exactly what we're seeing. I'm going to come back to you in a couple of minutes, Spencer, and I want you to show us those updraft helicity tracks, explain what that is, and, and then focus in on that area because it's really starting to play out there, and I want you folks at home to be able to see that as well. But let's take a look at the big picture quickly, all right? So what we have, we have the one tornado warning right now, but we have the tornado watch that's in effect for a large portion of our coverage area. It's going to be in place through the overnight hours, and it does include everyone, including Memphis and Shelby County. It is also very windy, very warm, and muggy. As a matter of fact, we've got a strong south wind at about 15 to 20 miles per hour across much of the Mid-South. So that's the surface wind. We have seen higher gusts this afternoon, but look at this. Here we are at 630 in the evening, and we're we're all we're still seeing temperatures in the low to mid 70s. We hit 80 degrees in Memphis earlier today. We're at 78 degrees right now, and it is warm and muggy all across the coverage area. Futurecast has a good handle on how this is playing out. It's tapping into those cells that are back to the west and also some of that activity in the central Arkansas. So it's giving us a good idea of where this is going to go. Here's the thing that's important to keep in mind. It looks like this is really just going to kind of linger around northeastern Arkansas between now and about 9 or 10 o'clock tonight. So we could see more tornadoes firing up in these lines, and that's where we were seeing those long track or those helicity updraft lines that uh, Spencer will show you in a moment, and that will really help to paint the picture. But the big show comes through late tonight, and that's going to be with the line of storms that will line up, first of all, into central Arkansas, and then make a push towards the Mississippi River, and right around 3 o'clock, should be making their way along and east of the river into West Tennessee, northern Mississippi, and into the city of Memphis. Now, it's along that leading edge 
where we could find damaging wind overnight tonight. We could see gusts of 50 to 60 miles per hour with this. That's also going to be followed by some very cold air moving in quickly behind it. And it's quite possible there could be a couple of lines working at that time. One in northeast Mississippi, the other one through west Tennessee and northwest Mississippi. By 5.30, 6 o'clock, it will start to push out of the coverage area, but we could still be dealing with problems well into the early morning hours of Saturday before all this finally clears out and moves out of the region by 8 o'clock. I think we're going to have clouds, and we're also going to be dealing with falling temperatures around the Mid-South. This evening, I want everybody to have their severe weather checklist ready to go. I want you to download the First Alert Weather app. Put it on your smartphone or your tablet. It is free for Apple and Android products. You're going to have the interactive radar. Should additional warnings be issued, you'll get alerts there instantly. And here's the other thing. Should you lose power where you are and we're in wall-to-wall -wall coverage, you can follow us right there on your phone or your tablet. So that is a very, very critical piece of equipment to have tonight. Also, if you have a NOAA weather radio, make sure it is on. Make sure the volume is up and it has fresh batteries. I think it's going to get a workout overnight tonight. You still may have a little time to secure any loose items in your backyard that may be susceptible to flying because we are going to have some high winds. Make sure everybody in your family knows about your severe weather plan, too. With this coming through at the middle in the middle of the night you may be waking up out of a dead sleep and those gro being all groggy you may wonder or need a moment to wonder where to go if everybody knows where to go and where to congregate before they go to bed that's going to make that a lot easier and of course follow us on Facebook and on Twitter for more updates you can also watch us on Ro on Roku Amazon Fire and on Apple TV just by downloading the WMC app there. So back to the storm. Spencer, do you have that uh, tornado potential map that I was uh, talking about moments ago? I'm going to let you explain that because it really does paint a pretty vivid picture. Yeah, I, I think the biggest threat, Ron, we've been talking about this, is going to be north of Memphis, and that's where the uh, greater uh, really rotation is with some of these storms and also some of the uh, instability and some of the different parameters. Take a look at this because this is what the forecast model has been showing. Look at these little tracks that you see here going across parts of northwest Tennessee as we go through the overnight hours. I'm going to go back in time. Look at those tracks. Those are rotation tracks. And the forecast models have done a fantastic job, unfortunately, of showing us where those will be. Now, for the folks that are in Dyersburg, Northeast Arkansas, the Boot Hill, Missouri, up to Union City, you just want to stay weather alert. This doesn't mean that there's going to be a definite tornado on the ground in those areas, but what it does show is that the potential is highest there. Now, could there be one in some of these other areas across the Mid-South? That's uh, certainly not out of the question uh, for sure. In fact, uh, we can't rule it out really anywhere here in the Mid-South. Uh, this could happen. However, as I uh, clear this off, I want to show you this is the area that we've been most concerned about. Let me uh, go, go back and grab that tool again and show you what we're talking about. This has been the area of biggest concern right here. So uh, we'll be watching that area very closely uh, over the coming hours to see what to expect uh, with that area of storms. Let me go back to the analysis here real quick of this cell. Look at this cell, man. Just a, an impressive cell. And I'll just clear everything off. This is northwest of Memphis uh, in northeastern Arkansas. So if you're in these areas, again, we'll go zoom back out. So here is Memphis, and this cell is moving northeast toward uh, parts of northern uh, Mississippi County. It's moving into Craighead County as we speak. And, you know, I've already seen some posts on uh, Facebook and uh, Twitter saying, you know, tell me this isn't coming into Jonesboro because these folks have already dealt with uh, mm -hmm. numerous tornado events over the years uh, recently within the last couple of years and they're still rebuilding from some of that in that area. So uh, folks just need to stay safe, stay in their safe place, uh, take your bike helmet if you have it, uh, anything that you can to protect yourself and just stay in the lowest part 
of your home, in the center of your home, away from windows, bathroom and interior bathroom is a great idea. And uh, hopefully this cell will not produce uh, what could have been already one tornado. Hopefully it won't produce another one. But if you're in those areas of Poinsett in Craighead County, you need to stay in your safe place. Let's check in again with uh, Ron and see what's happening. You know, I wanted to show the uh, SPC outlook, uh, Spencer, after you were talking about that area where the greatest potential for strong to severe storms and tornadoes will be. Well, earlier today, the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma, issued a moderate risk for strong to severe storms. That's a four on a scale of one to five. So mainly along and north of the I-40 corridor, they were seeing the same thing we were seeing today about the increased instability, the enhancement for storm rotation and formation, and that allowed them to make the decision to make that a moderate risk area. But we still have an enhanced risk for the rest of the coverage area. That includes much of West Tennessee, northern Mississippi, and areas in East Arkansas, south of I-40. So anyone in the Action News 5 coverage area is susceptible to severe weather tonight, but it looks like the greatest threat for tornadoes and long track tornadoes is going to be right here in this area. However, we can't rule it out anywhere else in the Mid-South. Right now, we're still dealing with that one tornado warning. There's also a lot of lightning in that as well. Let me take a look at that and show you how uh, that's playing out. I tell you what, let's put some parameters on here for you quickly. And let's take a look at the lightning within that cell because there were a lot of strikes in there. And sometimes the best laid plans don't work. Tell you what, I think if I zoom in just a little tighter, that may help us out a bit. Let's zoom in just a little more on that because I was seeing a pretty good amount of lightning with that moments ago. Let's see here. I'm still picking that up. Guess not. All right. So for some reason, my lightning data went away. Spencer, are you seeing anything in that cell that's causing you to concern right now? Because... I was looking at the lightning in it a moment ago, and for some reason, I think we may have lost our lightning data on that, at least on this system. So we'll yeah, see we, what that's producing. We've got uh, 36 lightning strikes with this, uh, from what I'm seeing right now, 37. So we've still got a good, uh, decent amount of lightning uh, showing up with that uh, particular cell. The BTI is still holding at about a 4.4, and uh, you can see some of the area. Jonesboro, this is... Uh, this is heading your direction right now. And again, it's still got that hook, Ron, that uh, we were showing earlier. Let me look at the shear rate right now. Still looks like it's uh, ramping back up. You can see the shear swath and where it really tried to ramp up a little bit there. Look at that. There might be some hail with this. That does uh, look like it wants to in intensify. Yeah. You know, let me, let me see. I don't see anything. Uh, we're looking from the Memphis. Let me look from the other one. Just, yeah, it's not showing it as well. Let me go back to the... Uh, Memphis radar and, and what Spencer's doing is, is switching back between two radars. We have access to the Little Rock next rad radar and the Memphis next rad radar. Yeah, and, and that's it's basically uh, let me see if I yeah, I'm not it's seeing. almost in between the two. So we're hitting that at a pretty good height. Yeah, from either radar. Yeah, and you can almost see on the back side of it. There's still some there's definitely some uh, some uh, debris still trying to maybe lingering aloft, but there's uh, definitely rotation there. This is heading in. This is about to. This is clipping northwestern sections of uh, Poinsett County right now. It's about to move into that circulation is going to move into southern Craighead here in the next uh, few minutes, and so we'll have to watch that. But the good news is, Ron, we don't see anything else for anyone else in the uh, mid south right now. Is in fact what I'm looking at here. Uh, if I flip back over to the reflectivity, just some non-severe downpours near Selmer, Tennessee, another one near Oxford. But uh, so far, things are quiet across the rest of the area. We just need to get this one cell. And man, the, the, the reflectivity, the, uh, not, the hook on that is still quite impressive. That is, and it looks like they just extended that tornado warning. They did. Yep, you're yeah. right. They it's did. They it's just going until 7:30. Okay, so from 6:45 now until 7:30. Again, an indication of long track tornadoes holding together. So once these cells develop, and they develop in this environment, there's nothing there to really allow it to weaken or diminish. It's going to have everything it needs to hold together. So that's again another great concern for these cells that are developing back to the west and moving in this because anything that does intensify and enhance is going to have the ability to hold together 
for a significant period of time. Not a lot going on along and south of I-40. Much of the coverage area this evening calm, but it is this one tornado warning right now that we're with you this evening, and that is for Poinsett and for Craighead County. That is now going to go until 730 this evening. Mississippi County now being clipped by that. That bull portion right there, western Mississippi County, under that until 730. This other warning is going to expire at about 645. So what we really have working right now are three active warnings. The one for Jackson County is about to expire. This one uh, right here for Poinsett and Craighead will be replaced, and that cell will, or the warning for 730, We'll continue to hold together there and that will stay in place for that area. So here's what we're looking at right now. Let me zoom in just a little tighter. Number of strikes. I got 96 lightning strikes on that now. So the lightning in, has ramped up just a bit, 116 strikes. So Spencer, you were saying that that was trying to show some signs of, uh, of possibly intensifying. And when we see those lightning strikes go up, that's a good indicator to us that the storm is doing just that. And it is still showing signs of wanting to hook. So we have this inflow notch right here. This whole cell is trying to rotate counterclockwise. And so with this air coming in here, that's going to allow the potential for a funnel to develop right here. So with that in mind, let's put another track on this and show you where it's going to go over the next few minutes. And I'm going to track it. We'll do two tracks. I'll do the first track and we'll track it from where the potential for a tornado may be, that area where we could be finding a hook, about 12 minutes from Bay, 16 minutes from Lunsford, about 20 minutes from Lake City, 20 minutes before it moves into Monette, and it's about 32 minutes away from Leechville. Now, let's track this entire system. Let me clear this out, and we'll, we'll track this entire cell to give you an idea of where that's going to be going over the next few minutes, because even though that's the small area we were tracking right there, this is a pretty big cell in and of itself. And I want to give you an idea of where that's going to go and who that's going to be impacting over the next few minutes. So with that in mind, we'll track the leading edge of that. This is where the heavier rain and the possibility of a hail core will be in the next few minutes. About three minutes away from Lake. You got some info for me? Gabe, thank you. 13 minutes from Monette, Black Oak, 22 minutes away, 23 minutes before it gets into Leechville. Storm uh, Spotter says there is a stovepipe tornado on the ground near Highway 49 between Waldenburg and Wiener. So we got that just a few minutes ago. That was at 643. So a storm spotter giving us visual confirmation of a stovepipe tornado. In other words, just a cylindrical column making its way through and I assume they were able to see that lighting up with lightning. Spencer, I see you've got you're still seeing some pretty good rotation north of Wiener. Oh yeah, this is this is definitely rotating, Ron. Yeah. And, and there's no doubt that this is probably on the ground. Uh, I've, I've seen other reports coming in from the uh, National Weather Service of spotters uh, reporting seeing a tornado on the ground. So uh, this is uh, essentially uh, we're getting multiple reports here and it looks like this circulation is tightening up uh, just a little bit. In fact, I'm going to circle this real quick because I want you to see this area. This is the circulation. So if you're in Otwell, uh, you need to be in your safe place immediately. Also, if you are in uh, the, the town of Cary. This is going to go through Craighead Forest. This circulation is going to go very close, but maybe on the south side of Jonesboro, not uh, into uh, necessarily downtown, but it's going to come very close to the city of Jonesboro. And even a piece of that warning now extends into parts of northwestern Mississippi County. So this, this warning uh, may be extended eventually into Manila and Leechville and some of those areas of northern uh, Mississippi County. And there's Hornersville into uh, the Boot Hill, Missouri. But again, very very, very strong rotation with this. Let me look one more time at the, uh, I'm not seeing anything as far as uh, debris right now at the moment. Let's see what the late, and it's a 4.2 on the, uh, on the BTI. So uh, either way, Ron, this is a, this is just a very, very strong cell that's going to continue to uh, work its way uh, through Northeast Arkansas. So Spencer, our friend uh, William Frog, a local storm chaser here in town, he just texted me uh, a few minutes ago and he said it's on the ground stovepipe. 
So he is in that area. He's been uh, positioned right around Turrell, Arkansas. We've been sharing data with him this afternoon. Tell you what, uh, folks back in the uh, in the newsroom, can we get William on the phone? Can you guys see if you can uh, uh, get him on the phone to talk with us about what he has seen? He's been out there. He is a uh, he's been storm chasing for a number of years and has been very generous about sharing the information that he gathers out in the field with us. So it would be good to hear from him, but. That is a very well-defined cell right now that shows no signs of weakening. Let's take a look at the velocity on this and just get an idea. Wow, that is just still. There's the rotation. We've got red and green coming together right there. It looks like it's a, maybe a little more broad scale rotation at this time. Let me zoom in just a little tighter to see if we can pinpoint where that actual hook may be. There it is, right around 49. That's where William saw it, right there at Highway 49. Tell you what, let me, let's move this back and let's put a track on this because I think, Spencer, this little area right here, that's what I'm looking at. I think that's it. Yeah, that's that's definitely it, Ron. Yeah, and, that's and, it. And, you know, this is rain wrapped. It's nighttime. We can't see. Yeah, yeah. and that is, and I tell you, so let's, let's track this because, there's a tornado right there. We know that. We've got a spotter in the field. It's moving off to the northeast at about 60 miles per hour. Let me put another track on here. Let's see. I think I took it out of the field of view. I may need to zoom out just a little bit. I think that may be the issue. And let me zoom out. Here we go. Bang. This thing always works in practice. Now, here we go. Let's put another track on that little area right there. And let's see if we can give some folks an idea of where that's going to go. For whatever reason, it won't work with me. Let's switch modes. Let's see if we can get that right there. I think that was right there around Wiener. There we go. So taking that to the northeast, it may be moving over open fields. Not a lot of, uh, there's not a lot of folks in this area right here. A lot of farmland there. So that may be why we're not seeing anything popping up. Unless, Spencer, do you have a better track on it on the link system? Actually, Ron, I've, I think we have a camera in uh, Jonesboro that we can take a look That's at. Like, it. Let's take a look at that camera if we can. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think there's some lightning that we're going to stay on this for just a second. Yeah, you can see the lightning. Can look at the flashes phone? there. Now, here's the thing. This can is let's William keep in mind a couple phone? of things here. It's rain wrapped. Yeah. Uh, it's nighttime. The only way that anyone, the spotters included, would see this is with the uh, illumination of that lightning and it kind of showing itself all of a sudden. And that's what's so, uh, you know, concerning about these storms at nighttime. And that's why we want folks to be aware that, uh, you know, you're not going to be able to see this coming. And if you're traveling, if you're traveling around Craighead County or, you know, folks that are in the car right now, they need to pull over and get into their safe place or find a safe place because you do not want to be in a vehicle uh, with this type of system coming through right now. But the lightning is just nonstop with this. We don't see anything in that view. I can actually see it when it flashes real bright. I can see the tops of the clouds in some of that uh, in the distance there but uh, we don't see anything from that uh, particular view. Ron? I just got something from the Poinsett uh, Sheriff's Dispatch. They say power lines are down near Highway 214. That's uh, just to the southwest of that view you were, we were showing you there. They're also getting reports, multiple reports of the tornado on the ground. So visual confirmation from people in that area right now. Tornado on the ground. I want you to go to the lowest floor of your home. If you are anywhere between Wiener, north of Greenfield, and in Craighead County, let me give you some idea, an idea of where in Craighead County, southern Craighead County, along and east of 49. I want you in your storm shelter. Get to the lowest floor of your home, away from exterior walls and windows, and I want you to make sure that you have some way of receiving additional warnings should this uh, intensify or become more significant within the next couple of minutes. Ron, it looks like, yeah, what have you got, Spencer? I got something for you here. This let's is definitely it. intensifying, and uh, I wanted to show this real quick. This is the v BTI. The BTI now has jumped up to a 7.4 out of yeah. 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. We saw this earlier. 
I think we had a pretty significant touchdown earlier. I think we're having another one, at least as we speak or within the last five minutes. We're also looking at the rotation detection on this. This is near the Otwell community. This is on the county line of Poinsett County and Craighead County. So if you're familiar with this area, uh, just to the east here is I-555. So I'm going to circle that. Here's I-555 right here. This is moving toward Craighead Forest and it's going to cross over eventually. Let me clear the screen. So That's that going to cross can... Crowley's Ridge. Yeah. It'll this, be interesting to see what that does to it. This is going to cross, Ron, and I, I, I worked in Jonesboro at KIT for a couple of years my first, when I first started doing weather, and the town of Nettleton is right there, and 555 is very well traveled, and uh, folks need to stay off of this interstate, or if you know somebody that's traveling there between Bay and Jonesboro, you want to take your uh, tornado, tornado, tornado precautions and really just don't even get in the car. Don't travel, pull over, find a safe spot because this is a dangerous, dangerous uh, tornado likely on the ground right now. Yeah, and once it gets into Crowley's Ridge, it's going to give that a little lift. Mm -hmm. So we could see it lift momentarily and then set back down again in Craighead County. I'm also seeing a couple of different inflow notches here, Spencer. There's one right there. We've got another one right here. I think this is probably where our hook is at this time. A lot of lightning around that. Let me clear everything out of here, and I'll tell you what, let's zoom out just to give you a better idea of the entire cell itself. Again, we're tracking this tornado warning. This is in place this evening until 730. We have this warning right now, northeastern Arkansas, so Mississippi County, we've got Craighead County, Poinsett County, and Greene County is included in this until 730 this evening. This is going to impact about 124,000 people, so a very heavily populated area, but that's the cell we're tracking. This is what we're watching, and there is much more to come because what's lining up back into Arkansas is already starting to intensify as well, and this is going to be moving in our direction. We've got severe thunderstorm warnings for central Arkansas. This whole line is going to make a push to the east later tonight, and that's going to move through the Mid-South right around coming into the Action News 5 coverage area right around or shortly after midnight, and will be making its way across the Mississippi River into the early morning hours of Saturday. But right now, our greatest threat and greatest concern is with this one tornado warning that we have, and it looks like the heaviest of it is now converging on Craighead County. Let me zoom in just a little tighter one more time. Let's take a look at that because, yeah, it's lifting on out. I think the tornado threat is now over for Poinsett County. This is into Craighead County, and it looks like that's where we are. Who do we have on the phone? B William Frog. William Frog, I'm glad we have you on the phone. Bill, we're tracking this, uh, this cell that you were watching. You actually got visual confirmation on it. Can you tell us, uh, explain to us, or describe what you saw? Is he there? Yes, are you there? Yeah, here we go. Can you hear us, William? Yes, I can, yes. Uh, so we got the first confirmation of a tornado from you, my friend. What did you see when you were out there? So there's a snowpack tornado that was on the ground maybe about 15 minutes ago. Um, I am right now to give you, I guess probably the best thing to do is give you my current location. I'm on U.S. Highway 49 going north towards Jonesboro. I am seven miles north of Wiener, Arkansas. Okay. And I'm the tornado crossed the highway, US 49, um, just shortly. I do not have visual on it anymore. If it's there, it is rain wrapped at this time. Yeah, and, and William, it looked like it was rain wrapped at one point, and we could see a pretty well defined donut shape or a donut uh, echo on the first alert Doppler radar, and that was an indication to us that it was uh, rain wrap, also making that even more dangerous. Now, what are you looking for when you're out there? It's dark. You're on uh, a couple of two-lane roads out there. How do you stay safe? I am um, trying to stay south in the east of the, the main circulation itself, and I'm looking for lightning flashes um, to illuminate the sky, and I'm also looking for power flashes on the ground when there can be, but as we know, this is farmland. There's not much power out here in a lot of places. 
Yeah, and, and we got reports from the uh, Poinsett County Sheriff's Office that there are power lines down all around that area. William, I want you to be very careful tonight. How long do you think you're going to be out tracking? Probably at least till midnight. Okay, good deal. Well, we'll check back in with you later on. You are definitely in the hot spot tonight there in northeast Arkansas. William, thank you very much for that live report. Thank you for uh, the reports that you've provided this evening and over the, uh, the years for us here at Action News 5. We appreciate your support. Stay safe out there, my friend. Let's hope things calm will. down a bit tonight. Well, that's a look at the, that was from William Frog, a uh, storm chaser here in the Mid-South. And whenever there's severe weather, he jumps in the car and heads right to it. Right now, as we head back and take a look at the big picture, it's one tornado warning that we are tracking. This is now making a move towards uh, Mississippi County. Craighead County dealing with the bulk of it at this time. Not a lot of activity in West Tennessee, Northern Mississippi, or Eastern Arkansas. We may be able to get you back to your programming here in just a few minutes as uh, we keep a close eye on this. Spencer, did I see that uh, that cell? Is that tightening back up? What were you looking at there? Yeah, right there around that skit. Yeah, it's actually the, uh, that's the uh, bounded weak echo region, the beware that you were talking about earlier. Mm -hmm. And that means that there's, when you see a little donut like this, and I've circled it, I'm gonna zoom in real tight on this. When you see a little area of green in between all of this red, that means that there's likely a strong circulation here and there still could be a tornado on the ground that is entering Craighead Forest Park now in uh, southern Craighead County. And again, if we zoom out, that circulation should carry it uh, north and west of Blyville. This is going to head toward the uh, Boot Hill, Missouri. But uh, again, this is a very strong uh, circulating storm with a possible tornado on the ground. The BTI is still sitting at a 7.4 right now. So uh, for our friends up there, if you have friends and family in that area of northeast Arkansas, you definitely want to check on them, make sure they're taking shelter and in their safe place. But, but uh, Ron, this is a very significant storm as expected in this area. I want you to do something for me. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to that Lynx view. And I want this is for folks at home. I want you to show that radar view and then switch over to the velocity or the wind. I think we'll likely see that red and green together there. Look at that little area where Spencer is, has circled and you can see the red pixels, the green pixels coming together. That is where we're seeing the greatest circulation. And look at that. He can uh, tap into that. And we combine those winds. So what we're looking at is wind shear of uh, 90 miles per hour. So the shear in that is about 90 miles per hour, just above that. Spencer, now hit the uh, shear swath. And that's going to should show the rotation. I guess it's taking a minute to catch up. Maybe the look sheer the, rate. The sheer rate, look at there that. There we go. Sheer rate. Oh, wow. There you can see it. Just north of Ridge, there's that bounded weak echo region. Mm -hmm. That is it. That is it. Anyone that is in that area near Ridge, south of Nettleton, folks in Nettleton, you need to get to your storm shelter now. That cell is impacting you. You're likely getting very heavy rain, maybe even some hail out of this. So we're watching this very, very closely this evening, but we have visual confirmation of a tornado on the ground and several minutes of radar confirmation of a hook echo. So we know there's a tornado there. There is the potential for damage. There is a potential for damage to property and life. So I want everyone to be in the safest place in their home that they can be. This is also producing a good amount of hail. As a matter of fact, let me zoom in just a little tighter here and you can see that hail swat. That's just with that one cell. It's producing hail. It looks like it may be even getting a little bigger as it moves off to the north and east. Right there uh, near Wiener, it was about three quarters of an inch in size. It may have even uh, produced some larger hail than that. But right now, radar estimates of about three quarters of an inch in size. But it is a tornado warning at this time that we are tracking this warning. Looks like they've compacted a little bit to take out a pretty good portion of western Craighead and Poinsett County. S Northern Poinsett County, you are still in the polygon itself, and it's been extended to include a little portion of uh, Mississippi County also. But this tornado warning, I do believe, is going to remain until 730 this evening. So as I clear this data out of here, till 730, we're going to continue to track that tornado as it moves on through. But 
We cannot let our guard down. We've got a long night to go. This is the one cell we're dealing with at this time. Let me clear this off and let's look again because this cell that's back to the west, this activity that's in Arkansas, this is really, really starting to line up and come together. This is going to become a little more linear. It is also going to enter an environment that is very warm, very moist and unstable. And that's going to give this the fuel to intensify over the coming hours. And as a matter of fact, I want to show you how this is going to play out because let me get this off of here. I want to show you now tomorrow we've got a much better pattern coming our way. I thought I had the future cast on here. I guess I did not. I'll, uh, I want to put the, the future cast on so you can get an idea of where this is going to go over the next couple of minutes. Spencer, let me turn it over to you for just a second. I'll come back with the future cast so we can see what's coming our way later on tonight. Yeah, and uh, we're getting some more information on this cell that's in Craighead County, and uh, there's about seven. Uh, Joyce was just looking up some uh, information there, and there's seven uh, Arkansas Energy customers without electricity. Now up to nine. Now up to nine. So there are some folks losing power in portions of uh, Craighead and Poinsett County. That's right along that county line there where that uh, tornado actually has been reported and still looks like there is possibly something on the ground. The latest uh, data is showing a 6.9 on the BTI. So out of uh, 10, uh, almost a seven still, that is a very strong uh, signature uh, for a possible tornado on the ground. You can still see the uh, area of rotation that is near uh, just past over the Ridge community. It's now heading uh, just north of Bay, Arkansas, and is going to head toward uh, eventually Brooklyn or Lake City at this point and stay just to our north. Let's zoom out because we're with you because of this uh, tornado worn storm in northeastern Arkansas. There's not any other uh, really concerning activity on the radar. Although look at those storms back over north uh, central Arkansas. Those are definitely causing yeah. some issues and I think those are going to be the ones that we really have to watch here a little bit later. I want to I'm going to zoom into this real quick before I go back to Ron and I want to look at the uh, reflectivity from Little Rock. This is actually looking at from the Little Rock uh, radar and I want to look at the uh, shear on this and just just to get an idea of this tornado worn storm that will eventually move into parts of our area. Let's see what we've got here and it looks like yeah this these storms are definitely going to be rotating. You can see the uh, notch there. So Ron this could be a long I, night once that line gets here. Go back to that cell because right there around Maumel hit the shear rate. Okay. And whenever we see it making kind of a little bit of a curve, almost an S curve, if you look around Gold Creek, it, it, it almost makes a bit of an S curve. Whenever we see that type of signature, that's an indication to us that there is a tornado. That is a tornado worn storm right now. Again, it's well outside our coverage area, but that is moving in our direction. So I would, uh, I would almost bet that if there is not a tornado on the ground, it is trying to get there. It is certainly rotating. We still have the severe, the uh, tornado warning here in our area right now, 135 miles from the Mississippi River or from Memphis. That line is moving in our direction. Spencer, that line's moving what, about 45, 50 miles per hour? Yeah, I think so. In fact, I can put a lapse on this. Let me put a lapse in the last hour and uh, see what this line is doing. So it's moving northeast. Unfortunately, it's moving directly toward where that other storm went, but they're, they're tailing back to the south. So this is the cluster. It's going to be a stormy night because we still have another cluster behind that. Uh, that's along the actual main front, Ron. So uh, we, we definitely can't let our guard down, even though things have been fairly quiet for most areas of the Mid-South. And so with those storms trying to lift north, here's why. Look at these winds. These are surface winds out of the south at a, anywhere from about 10 to 20 miles per hour with some higher gusts. So, and even aloft, those winds continue to be out of the south. So they're forcing those storms north. However, they're also allowing them to become a little more linear as they make their way in our direction. And with that linear feature, that increases the wind threat for the rest of the coverage area tonight. Now, temperatures, they're still warm. We're in the low to mid 70s all across the mid south, but we're going to continue to watch this tonight. Futurecast is initializing very well, and it continues to keep some pretty intense cells across northeast Arkansas, the Missouri Boot Hill, and parts of northwest 
Tennessee from now until about 8 o'clock. And then that line back to the west starts to energize a little more and make a push to the east. And I think about midnight, maybe even a little before midnight, we're going to start seeing that make its way across the Mississippi River. And right there on that leading edge, that's where we're likely going to find the potential for damaging wind and hail embedded within that line. And we're going to watch it closely because it could ramp back up tomorrow with the daytime heating in Middle Tennessee and Northern Alabama. But it should exit the Action News 5 coverage area right around or shortly after sunrise tomorrow morning. That's going to be followed by a clearing but much cooler day tomorrow. As a matter of fact, we're likely going to find temperatures only in the 40s for much of tomorrow afternoon. Now the good news, we'll see another warm up next week. Sunday, a full day of sunshine there. So this system coming through tonight is not going to wash out your weekend, but we'll certainly have uh, falling temperatures through the day. And 60, the high, will likely hit that right around 6, 8, 6 o'clock in the morning, and we'll watch it fall through the day and end up in the mid-30s Saturday night. Then sunny and back in the lower 50s on Sunday. We're at 61 Monday. We'll get back to 70 Wednesday. A very active pattern in place across the Mid-South for this time of the year. And for those of you who've spent any amount of time in the South and in the Mid-South, you know that December is another month where we can have tornadoes. We had them uh, a few years ago in northern Mississippi, December 15th, I do believe, in 2015. We also had Christmas Eve tornadoes here in the Mid-South. So the holidays are a secondary severe weather season for our area. But I want you to make sure you've got your severe weather checklist ready to go. Get that first alert weather app. Make sure your NOAA weather radio is on before bed tonight. If you haven't secured any loose items, you still got a little time to do that. And make sure everybody in your family knows the plan and what to do to be safe because we have that moderate risk in place across the area tonight along and north of I-40 and the enhanced risk for the rest of the coverage area. So severe weather is definitely a threat as we get on into it. And now I see they have extended the tornado warning. Yes. Yes. Northern it is Mississippi now, County. It is now extended. It's going to go a little longer. Let's see. So this will go Craighead, Dunklin, Green, Mississippi until 745, 745, 730 was the other warning, 745 now for this one. So they'll allow that to expire at 730, but keep a warning in place for that cell. And that is an indication, again, of a long track tornado. And that's what it looks like. This developed right here. Check this out, just to the southeast of Heber Springs. And it is still holding together well into northeast Arkansas as it now makes its way towards the Missouri boot heel. But it's these storms back here to the west that we're watching. And we could see another line develop just behind that. So there is a lot of moisture, a lot of instability, and there are still several hours to go before this weekends. So I see that S shape on there, Spencer. Are you looking at that? Uh, that's the cell in Craighead. Yeah, that's the cell, and, and there's got to be a tornado on the ground yeah. with this. 7.3, it's the highest BTI I've seen. Uh, we're looking, and there's the latest update. Let me look at the, uh, uh, oh, yeah, there's probably, this is likely debris on the south side of that circulation. Oh, yeah. And so if you're in, uh, you know, if you have friends or family in this area, please make sure they're taking shelter uh, in between Jonesboro and Lake City. This is on the eastern side of uh, the city of Jonesboro, uh, southeast side of Jonesboro, and uh, it's uh, just north of Bay. Bay, you may have uh, debris actually coming. You may, if there's debris in the air, it will likely be coming down in the sky in Bay uh, right now with this, uh, this uh, possible tornado on the ground. And again, uh, there's some of the areas that will be impacted, uh, including uh, possibly Manila, Leechville, uh, Monette, Little River. So if you're in northern parts of Mississippi County, uh, this is a tornado emergency, uh, essentially, and has been for the last uh, probably 30 to 45 minutes with this uh, multiple reports of a tornado on the ground uh, in parts of uh, Poinsett and okay. now possibly in Craighead County. And, and Ron, we'll probably get some reports from this one because it's going through a more populated area there on the east side of Jonesboro. So our storm spotter, William Frog, gave us visual confirmation when that was moving through Craighead County. This just came to us on Twitter. Spencer, check this picture out. There's the tornado. 
Absolutely. Right there. Yep. Highlighted with a flash of lightning. That is from Will Wise. We got that from Twitter. D Meg, do we have any idea when that was taken or where that was? Did he give a location? South. Okay, so south of Jonesboro. That's in Craighead County right now. That is south of Jonesboro. By the way, um, one of the things that we have been highlighting over the last couple of nights is to know your county. It's amazing how many people are actually may not be aware of what county they live in. Know that because tornado warnings are issued by county. Severe thunderstorm warnings, tornado warnings, not necessarily always listing cities, but counties. So it's important that you are aware of the county that you live in and uh, know when warnings are going to be issued for your area. I'll tell you what, I want to track this line next. Let's put some additional tools on here. I'm going to hit clear in our next rad. And then we'll hit a track right here. So we have the tornado warning. That cell's about to move into the Missouri boot heel. But this ominous line starting to ramp up and it's making a push to the east. And it is going to make its way into eastern Arkansas within, it looks like it'll get into Big Lake in about, oh, about 147 minutes, that's uh, that's about three hours away. We'll see that getting to Blytheville about that time as well. So we've got another uh, couple of hours before we start to see this main line begin to impact counties in the Action News 5 coverage area. And that is going to be the catalyst for what I think will be the potential for some damaging straight line wind to come into the area. There's still going to be plenty of warm air. There's still going to be plenty of moisture, a lot of fuel to feed this line as it continues to move off to the east and really intensify. So I'm not sure if there's anything developing back behind that. It, I, I can't rule out the possibility of another line coming in behind that, but that could quite possibly be our main line, but it is going to be very slow to move through the Action News 5 coverage area. But right now, it's all about this cell that we are tracking. Let me get that off of here, and let's take a look once again at that tornado warning and the, the communities that are in the path. We'll put another track on this to give folks a, another idea and a heads up of where that's going and who that's going to impact over the next few minutes. Right now, let's see, I see a little bit of an inflow notch there. Let's see if I can find it on velocity, see what it looks like. Yeah, there's some rotation right there. So I'll tell you what, we'll track it from that area to the northeast. And let's just take that whole area of circulation there. That's going to bring that into Lake City in about four minutes. So if you are in or near Lake City, get to your storm shelter. Make sure you're in the lowest floor of your home, away from exterior walls and windows. Poplar Ridge, eight minutes away. Same thing for you. 15 minutes to Monette. It'll get into Leechville in 25 minutes. I think it's going to hold together over the next half hour. That'll take it into Pauling as it moves on into the Missouri Boot Heel. We'll see it get into Rington in 34 minutes, right around Hornersville in 42 minutes, and right around Clay, Missouri in about 48 minutes. So this is a very potent storm, a very powerful storm. It has been holding together for a considerable amount of time. And at the very least, there's a tremendous amount of wind in there. Spectrum width, that gives us an idea of turbulence or where we could find the strongest wind. And it looks like we're seeing it in this area right here, just to the east of Jonesboro, right there. So that's where the, uh, right there near Lake City. So at the very least, some very strong wind coming through. I'll put the velocity data on top of that and right there. That's where we're seeing that track right there. That's going to take that just to the north and west of Lake City. But if you're anywhere near this area, you're in the path of this circulation and this tornado warned storm. So I want you to uh, make yeah. sure you are in the safest place possible. It's also producing a tremendous amount of rain and may even be producing some hail. Let's take a look at the hail tracker itself. I think I may have deleted the hail tracker, but we do have this cell continues. And we have now seen one, two, three, four tornado warnings with this one individual cell. The latest tornado warning now set to expire at 7.45 this evening. So here we are at 7.15, got about another 30 minutes on that. 
We're watching it, keeping a close eye on it. Spencer, anything catching your eye? We'll also touch base with Joyce Peterson here in a moment. She's in our studio this evening, keeping an eye on any other thing that uh, damage or power outages for us. But what are your thoughts on the cell we're watching, Spencer? Uh, certainly uh, a very strong cell. I'm seeing uh, definitely those indications of debris on the southern side of that storm. Uh, again, near Lake City, as Ron mentioned, as I zoom out uh, and we're watching not only this area, but we're watching the rest of the Mid-South. Uh, there have been some downpours in parts of uh, Selmer, Tennessee. Let me clear the uh, screen off here for you and uh, just get a better view of this, uh, of, of the bigger picture. Again, there's not a whole lot other than that one cell that's uh, extremely dangerous, and we want to make sure that the folks in North Missis Mississippi County, there in northeastern Arkansas, are aware uh, of the potential for a, a tornadic storm rolling your way. But the rest of us are okay right now. We're watching the cells back to the, the uh, south and west, and those are the ones that we'll have to keep an eye on for the rest of the Mid-South as they start to move in. And they're all, they're not a, it's not an actual line, it's individual cells that are moving in in those areas. And uh, look at that BTI, it's seven, is that 7.5 right? Yeah. Wow, like, it keeps intensifying. Yeah, this is a very strong cell. It's, it's and, now crossed over Crowley's Ridge. Yep. I think that it gave it a little lift so it was able to tap into a little colder air aloft. Yeah. And, and drag that down to the surface. And look at the. Um, wow. I, I mean, the, the, yeah, there's definitely, and you can even see, you can still see where the uh, little hole is, the donut hole that we, we've been talking about right there. Look at that. That is the, uh, that is likely the rotation. It's all lining up together uh, when you look at. Uh, everything that we look at and then the I think the debris is just getting spread around the system and it's also moving so fast that it's it's having a hard time keeping up with where that debris uh, actually is within the storm because and you know we may be finding le that the radar may actually be detecting leaves yeah with all of the with all the leaves that have been falling mm -hmm. and they're so light they get lofted into the atmosphere so the radar itself may be having a tough time discerning between what is a hydrometeor and what is uh, actual debris, a leaf or twigs or what have you. So that may be the reason we're seeing that a uh, little bit of a linear shape there. If you're in uh, if you're in Monette or Leechville, you need to be in your safe place right now. You need to be in the lowest place in your house or your home. You need to take uh, shelter as far as uh, if you have something you can put over you because if this is a tornado on the ground, Ron, uh, it's not the wind that's the most dangerous. It's the debris flying yeah. through the wind. Yeah, that's right. And and Brian, can you bring up links again? I want to point out a couple of things that, that Spencer was showing there in the information box and you'll notice right here in the bottom right hand corner of your screen, it says shear. It's about it's moving to the northeast, east northeast at about 47 miles miles per hour. So that's the direction it's moving. And it's got about 126 miles per hour of wind within it. That's rotating winds or about 126 miles per hour. It looks like it's topping out at about 30,000 feet. So with that, there is some very, very cold air at that height. The top itself or uh, the top of the cell at 43,000, but the maximum uh, intensity is at 30,000. So there's a 100% chance that there's hail in there. And look at the hail size. Spencer, it's showing hail size of two and a half inches. That's a loft. Wow. Let's go over to Joyce Peterson right now. She's got some new information on for us. JP, what do you have? A favor, keep the uh, map up there so we can track the storms as I tell you this information. We do have from our partners at Region 8 News, our sister station, a viewer reported seeing that tornado crossing I-555 near the Bay exit. Bay about 19 miles south east of Jonesboro, okay? And so as Spencer and Ron were talking about this, tracking it, uh, just popping up at 7.15, so reported at 7.15, four minutes ago, as they were talking about the rotation in the storm, 923 Energy Arkansas customers now without power in the Lake City area. And, and you can follow this. We were talking about Weldon earlier today. A viewer reported mm -hmm. tree debris. Uh, along the road, Highway 17, just north of Weldon. That was at 632. Then we followed the storm up to Wiener. There were reports of power outages. Another report of power outage in Bay. We also have video of the twister uh, from Jeff Weir. It, he shows the tornado at night. And now the power outages in Bay are coming in. And let's double check this. 
big, big, big blue triangle on the Arkansas Entergy map, which means uh, 250 or more customers out. And right now it's 923. And then I do want to update the customers who were out earlier, around 630, about 10 customers. And that was by the Lake Hogue area. Uh, our meteorologist mentioned there's a lot of farmland out there, so not a, a lot of city proper addresses to get hit by this storm. But as it went through Bay, it looks like that area really took the brunt of it. 923 customers out. We're going to keep an eye on this, but Jeff, we're reporting power out in Bay, so that storm is having an impact on people. No reports of significant damage or injuries, am I right? Not yet. We just have trees okay. down on Highway 17 there in no major reports as of yet. Okay, that cell, it's still holding together. Um, Spencer, I'm going to ask you to track the, the distance on that in just a second because that thing has been holding together for a long time and it still continues to track north and east. I would imagine that's probably about 60, 70 miles that it's moved right there. But this other line we're watching very closely back to the west we're starting to see individual tornadoes popping up in that too. And as a matter of fact, Spencer pointed out something that is very significant with this line. And let me uh, point it out to you here. I'm going to move this over just a little bit, bring it down just a touch because what we're seeing, I know it looks like there is a line itself in there, but what we're actually seeing are individual cells within that line that are starting to rotate. There's another one right there. There's another one right there. And there's another one back here, another and another. So within this line, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven individual cells all capable of rotating and these cells already producing tornadoes and this whole line now moving in our direction. So we're going to continue to watch this. We're going to continue to track it. Let me add another uh, track on this just to give us a general idea of when it's going to enter our coverage area. Uh, it's about a minute away from Little Rock right now. Augusta, 36 minutes. Jonesboro, it's about 75 minutes away, so an hour and 15 minutes. We'll see it get into Truman in just over an hour and a half, and then uh, right around an hour and a half as well, just over that an hour and 45 minutes into Wynn. Blyfield, you're just under two hours away, and we'll see it get into Forest City in the next couple of hours. So this whole line is moving off to the east tonight, making its move towards the Mid-South. And with these individual cells now showing some signs of rotating, we could have additional tornadoes coming in our direction within the next couple of hours overnight tonight. Um, wow, Spencer, what is that you're looking at right now? I just looked at, I have view of your monitor over here on my side, and I saw what you were looking at. That, that's very impressive. Where are you, back in that storm in Craighead County? Yeah, this is Craighead County right now, Ron, <clears throat> and this is the strongest signature I've seen in quite some time as far as a tornado is concerned. If you are in Monette, Arkansas, you need to be in your safe place now, please, uh, if you're not already there. 109 mile per hour winds on one side of this cell of this tornado, 66 in the other. There's the latest update. Let me clear this off and redo this because uh, 103 and 73, that's 100, almost 180 mile per hour shear with this storm. That is a very strong tornado, likely on the ground. Look at that. Okay, there we go. Definitely on the ground, oh, wow. Ron. Yeah. That yeah. is, there is never a clearer signature of a tornado. This is, I'm going to zoom in a little bit because I want to show you real quick this area that it's, it's right over there County Road 512. Uh, this is heading toward the Leechville community. This is a tornado emergency. If you are in Leechville, if you are in Poplar Corner, you need to be in the lowest part of your home or apartment complex. You need to stay in a safe place and, and really you need to get a bike helmet, anything you can to protect yourself. Ron, that is the strongest signature I've seen in quite some time on, uh, on a radar near uh, here in the Mid-South. Can we put a quick track on that? Sure, let's, let's go let's ahead and, it. yeah, let's put a track. Uh, we'll do a, uh, an individual track right on this. Uh, this is, and it's moving at about, what, about 60 miles yeah. per hour? Yeah, they're moving at 60 miles per 40, hour. And Spencer, we're, we're efforting um, to bring you a picture that shows two tornadoes in that cell. 
Okay. It we, is quite possible that cell has produced two simultaneous tornadoes. That's, and that wouldn't be surprising. Look at, all, this is all debris, right? That is debris. That is all debris that's being lofted around this into Leechville right now. If you're in Leechville, Hornersville, you've got some time to go ahead and go to your safe place. And I would head there now. You've got 15 minutes of lead time to stay in your safe place and to get there and to do not move. If you can hear anyone, if you can hear us, if you have friends or family in this area, this is in northern, let me zoom out, this is in northern Mississippi County. Again, this is north of Memphis. This is uh, Leechville. That we have viewers in Leechville. We have viewers in Manila. We, we have folks that are watching us in some of those areas. If you have family or friends in those areas, you need to contact them and make sure they are seeking shelter. Seek shelter now. Tornado emergency in northern parts of Mississippi County, in the Leechville community, in the Monette community that's stretching back into northeastern sections of Craighead County. This is uh, this is a very dangerous situation, Ron. And it's right there in that sweet spot that we were looking at earlier today. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center placed a moderate risk for severe storms over northeast Arkansas, and that's where we're seeing the most intense activity firing up right now. And we're watching what's back to the west. Let's go to our first alert Doppler radar here at the chroma key wall. Brian, let me show you what uh, this line that I'm watching, because now that that cell's moved on through, we've got now this line coming in behind it. It's almost a one two punch of sorts. So that one independent cell or that discrete cell, as we call it out ahead of the main line is uh, not really going to take much of anything out of the atmosphere. And that will allow these cells that are to the west to intensify as they start to move towards Poinsett, Cross, and St. Francis County a little later on this evening as they're rapidly moving off to the east. And it looks like that line itself is moving at about 60 miles per hour. But right now, it's that cell that is in making its way into Mississippi County and starting to approach the Missouri boot heel that is giving us cause for greatest concern this evening. That's the one where we could find the greatest potential for damage. Look at that. So it's moving on through Jonesboro, Paragould, and the radar intensity. Let me look at something here. I think we may have something. Okay, that may have just been with the uh, individual loop itself. I noticed something back here. That is, what could I be seeing there? Let me see. And, and, South of Leechville, as you're tracking yeah. the storm, more power outages. We told you about the 923 mm -hmm. near Lake City. Now another 755 customers without power uh, just south of Leechville as that cell tracks through. So this is taking out power as it moves on through. So folks around Kennett, Missouri, folks near Blytheville, I want you to be prepared for the potential for power outages as this comes on through. Let me uh, move out because this is going to make its way into possibly even clipping Dyer County. I want to just put a track on this whole cell. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to track it right here at this point where the greatest potential for a hook will be. And if it continues to move in that direction, Leechville eight minutes away, Seneth about 18 minutes, Clay 25 minutes, Oakville 43 minutes, 54 minutes before it gets into steel, Haytai 59 minutes, Carothersville 70 minutes, and Tiptonville in about 89 minutes. Looks like this will likely clip northwestern Dyer County, but at the same time, there is still the potential that Dyersburg could go under a tornado warning within the next few minutes. As a matter of fact, there we go till 815 Dunklin, Dyer, Mississippi and Pemiscot County until 815. So this one cell started off with a warning at about 615 this evening. And here we are two hours coming up on two hours later. It's still holding together and will likely pose a threat uh, for folks east of the Mississippi River in West Tennessee, Lake and Obion counties. I know that's outside our coverage area, but if you happen to be watching us this evening, I want you to be prepared. By the way, you can also watch us on our WMC app on Apple TV, on Roku, and on Amazon Fire. You can catch our coverage there as well as on Facebook. And we're posting updates on Twitter tonight also. Back to the home view, taking a look at the big picture. Let me show you how things are playing out in the area. Not a lot going on for much of the Mid-South. 
but this line is moving in our direction. That line is going to bring with it the potential for damaging wind, additional tornadoes, mainly along and north of the I-40 corridor between now and about midnight. But that, as that moves on into West Tennessee later on tonight, it will continue to bring the threat for wind and hail as we get on into uh, West Tennessee and northern Mississippi through the overnight hours. Spencer, I got to go back to you. I'm looking at that cell in Leachville and it is looking mean right now. Yeah, this is this is really uh, for sure a tornado on the ground. In fact, I'm seeing colors that I haven't seen in the rotation detection. That's what I saw moments ago. Haven't seen this really in the last several years. I have not seen this color in this uh, the, and what I'm referring to is this gold color right here. And that's just a, a stronger indication that there is a tornado on the ground. There is no doubt with this one that there is a tornado on the ground. And here's how I know just by looking at radar, you can see all the debris that's being lofted and it's in the color of blue on here. So what I'll do is I'll circle it for you. This light color right here and likely all of this is, being, is debris that's being lofted at about 2,600 feet high. So this is uh, just under 3,000 feet up is either tree limbs, hopefully not buildings. Uh, hopefully uh, this is going through more rural areas, but Leechville I know is a community where folks live. And so it, hopefully you folks are in your safe place. You are taking shelter uh, right now. You're staying away from windows. You're in the center of your home. If, you, if you're lucky enough to have a basement or a storm shelter, you're in there taking shelter right now because this a is a, uh, a significant tornado emergency for areas of northwest parts of Mississippi County. If you're in the Midway community, if you're if you have uh, family or friends in any of these communities, Gosnell, uh, uh, Hornersville, uh, as you go down Manila, is this is the rotation is going just north of you. If you're in Manila, uh, you know I hope you're taking shelter, but. You are, you are directly south of that storm, and uh, this is a big lake as well, directly south of that storm. And even areas like Little River right now is in the, uh, in the actual warning, but I think the rotation is going to be just to your north of Little River. You may end up being okay there. Manila, you're right on the border. Uh, it, that tornado is very close by if it's not uh, on you, but uh, these areas... And they've looked, they've extended this now into Dyer County, Ron. So uh, 8.15 p.m. is what it goes till in, uh, and it goes across the river. So it basically moves through Blyville. If you're in Blyville, take your tornado precautions now. If you're in Bradleytown, Stinger, Lenox, and Dyersburg is not officially in it, but uh, they'll probably be included here shortly. Ron, we can give, this is the type of cell that we can give a long yeah. Uh, lead time on and let people know well ahead of it. If you're in Dyersburg, go ahead and prepare now. Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, anyone in northern Mississippi County, anyone in Lauderdale and Dyer County, I want you to know your storm plan right now. As a matter of fact, good idea to just go ahead and get to your shelter, sit there and let and ride it out and let this pass on through. It is going to come in close proximity. We still have this other line. This will impact Memphis. This line will impact much of the mid south and this line will likely bring with it the threat for damaging wind. Also the potential for power outages. If you have your uh, mobile device or your tablets or laptops and you're getting low on battery and juice, you need to charge right now. Make sure you have a full charge on all of your electronics. Make sure you have flashlights, batteries, and uh, things that will get you through a power outage should it go out later on tonight because I do believe these winds with this line are going to absolutely create some problems here. Spencer, as this is now encountering, you know, we showed those strong south winds that are at the surface moments ago. And as I go back and I take a look at this cell as it's now entering that that highly sheared environment here, then it's starting to give this. It looks like maybe even a little more of a lift north. Let me put that into motion and yeah, see how that's kind of forcing that up to the north just a little more. This may just barely clip Dyer County, Dyersburg. You may 
be able to uh, dodge this one. However, that line that's coming back to the west, it's lining up to the west. You will not be dodging that. And as a matter of fact, that's going to impact everybody along and north of I-40 this evening between now and about 10, 11 o'clock tonight as this line continues to push off to the east. So that's a look right now. At that cell, it's starting to move into the Missouri boot heel. That will take it out of the Action News 5 coverage area just as this next line comes on through. Power outages, that's been the main concern. And, and Spencer, you were talking moments ago about seeing something on radar, colors you hadn't seen before. That's what I'm seeing there. Yeah, that's, an, I, that's another indication. The radar can't interpret it. It is, the, it is so strong. The intensity is so strong that the radar cannot interpret that. It looks like that cell is still hooking there on the, uh, on the link system. I think that's a, that's a debris ball signature on reflectivity Let's right say, now, which I also have not seen since April 27th. That's it. That is absolutely I it. I mean, this is, a, this is a dangerous, dangerous situation. If you're in Leechville, if you're in Hornersville, uh, there's probably a pretty good hail core on the north side of this. Uh, if you are in, uh, so Hornersville, hell, intense lightning, Leechville, this is again northwestern Missis Mississippi County in Arkansas. So we're in northwestern parts of Mississippi County in Arkansas. Debris ball signature there. What does that mean? That means that there is a lot of debris being lifted into the atmosphere of some sort. We don't know what kind of debris that is. Uh, however, if you, and, and here's the thing, when I zoom into this, I, I'm almost a little, 118 mile per hour winds here, and then that's on top of 65. So yeah, we, we've got uh, at least uh, winds that are circulating at possibly, you know, 140, 50 miles per hour around this. Uh, so this is, this is a very, and a lot of lightning. Look at the lightning count on this. 150 strikes in a very small area. So that's this just is, within that cell. Yeah, that's right? just within that cell. So we're this is at county. Uh, this is State Highway 119. I'm going to zoom in and go street level for the folks that have family or friends in these. The, this is starting to be a more rural area of, of northern Mississippi County, but there's there's likely uh, farmhouses, homes in these areas, uh, folks that live here. And, uh, and, and farm, a huge farming community up there. And, uh, y you know, State Highway 119, uh, County Road 265, these are the areas where the strongest rotation are going over. This is just north of Jimmy Kennett Road and just north of Poplar Corner. Yeah, and you can see when I'm not in the, uh, when you look, we're not looking at uh, the reflectivity here. You can actually see all of the fields that are lined out in this area. Uh, all the, the farming communities. This is along State Highway 77, and uh, so this is going to move uh, very close to the Hornersville community. And again, as Ron mentioned, let me, let me do a track on this, and we're staying with this, even though it's, I know it's going into uh, the Boot Hill, Missouri, and I know we have some viewers there, but this is such a strong signature and a strong tornado on the ground. Let me put this in motion because this is, uh, this will give us an idea because Ron was mentioning the motion on this. Yeah, Ron, you're exactly right. This is going toward Hornersville, Steel, Carruthersville. This is pro this storm. This particular storm is going to miss Dyersburg. Yeah, yeah, no it is. That is going to miss. But I tell you what, it's still going to hold together. And right around Hornersville, Steel, uh, uh, Steel, and Carruthersville. There's a lot of instability there. And as a matter of fact, Spencer, yesterday we were looking at that sweet spot and we were talking about it being around northeast Arkansas, northwest Tennessee, the boot heel and western Kentucky. And that's where all these storms right now, or at least this individual cell is moving into. That is an impressive sight. And again, the radar having a tough time interpreting what it is showing and that's why we're seeing that strange color there. I want to see what the hail swath is looking like on this. Wow, that has increased tremendously. Look at that. Hail at least one inch in size and then just to the southwest of Leechville, about an inch in size there. We're seeing hail. So one inch hail definitely within this and that hail is typically when you get a, uh, a hook echo You'll have a cell that will, you'll get the anvil that looks something like this and then a little bit of a hook that comes in there and then that hail core 
is typically in an area like this with the uh, just to the north and back to the south and west of where the actual rotation will be. So you won't have hail within the rotation, but you will have it on that rear flank downdraft area and just to the north of the uh, area of circulation. Let's check out this in relation to velocity. It has now moved on and moved to the east, but you can still see there is a tremendous amount of rotation and we're hitting that at a pretty good distance from the radar site itself. So still showing that type of intensity at that rate that is going to continue to move to the north and east and that's going to take that on towards Steele, Missouri and likely allow it to enter um, Lake County and maybe even move through northern Obion County within the next couple of moment or couple of hours as this holds together, maybe not even the next couple of hours, maybe within the next hour. Are you looking at that line that's back to the west, Spencer? I want to take a, uh, a quick look at that too myself and uh, see how that's lining up because we're now seeing more tornado warnings within that line. That's going to be moving on through the area within the next couple of hours as this line moves off to the east. Let's go ahead and put a track on that. And I'm going to track the whole line, okay? So we'll start it here just to the west of Poinsett County, and we'll take the leading edge. It is going to move off, even though it's moving to the northeast, east-northeast, it's still going to follow in this direction. So Newport about a minute away, 55 minutes from Jonesboro, 85 minutes from Wynn, so you're about an hour and 25 minutes away, just under two hours from Big Lake and just over two hours from Blytheville. So you're getting plenty of advance warning with this, almost three hours away from Forest City, and we'll see that move into uh, Marion and Dyersburg in the next uh, two and a half to three hours as well. But that line really starting to intensify, and we're finding multiple multiple tornado warnings within that line itself. Let me clear this off and we'll give you an idea of what we're looking at as far as uh, tornado warnings go with this. So, yeah. From Energy Arkansas, additional power outages now. We're up to about 4,000 customers without power Whoa. in Craighead County uh, and also in Mississippi County. We've got the Lake City outage. We've got the Leachville outage, 1,000 customers without power in Leachville. You were mentioning the storm moving through there. And then Monette, uh, 674 customers out, and that's in in the town proper where there are streets and homes. This is not out in the country. So when you add up all the blue triangles that are on the energy map here, we're at about 4,000. And literally, as you say, the communities, this storm is moving past. Moments later, these outages are popping up. So it is very strong. It is taking out power. And we have tornado damage reported in Monette. Uh, I'm looking at debris on the ground, wood. It looks like part of a silo. So there is damage okay. on the ground. All right, so confirmations of damage confirmation of power outages, and that is from one cell. We've yet to see this move through. There will be additional power outages at the very least with this line that's going to push on through because the atmosphere is still ripe for this to enhance even more. And as a matter of fact, we've really started to see it fire up now just as it's uh, starting to enter eastern Arkansas. And that's why we have several tornado warnings. I count one, two, three tornado warnings within that line and about three, four severe thunderstorm warnings within that line. That's what's moving in our direction. Spencer, are you still tracking that, uh, that Leachville cell? Yeah, I am, and uh, it's showing 140 mile per hour winds on one side of the tornado and 64 on the other. Uh, that's 200 that miles a shear, 200 miles a shear. Yeah, it's unbelievable what we're seeing with this right now. 7.6 on the uh, BTI. If you are in Hornersville, you need to be in. Uh, hopefully you've been listening to us or somebody get your uh, hopefully they're getting their weather information there. If you have friends or family in that area or the Sunrise community, you definitely want to make sure they are in their that safe spot because this is a dangerous tornado on the ground entering the Boot Hill of Missouri right now and uh, will definitely do some damage yeah. uh, to life and property. So uh, certainly stay in your safe spot. We're continuing to track this, but again, this is moving into the Boot Hill. It still may come out of the Boot Hill and it could clip, it looks like, Ron, it could clip um, portions of northern Dyer County, maybe. It may clip northern and then push into Obion County. Yeah, so it'll, it will likely clip that northwestern corner 
of Dyer County. Ridgely, that's coming your way, though. We're going to see that get into Ridgely and Union City. Um, we've got Martin, UT Martin in that area. That is, uh, I think we're going to see this cell move through that that part of West Tennessee as well. That is very impressive right now. We're working on bringing you some uh, some video. I have a friend who was flying into Memphis and uh, took some pretty impressive video of lightning uh, as he was flying in. So we're going to bring that, that to you in just a few minutes. We're working on getting that. But we've had some pretty impressive pictures coming in. If you are... Uh, in an area where it is safe, if the storm has moved through your area and it is safe for you to venture out and you have uh, damaged pictures or any pictures that you would like to share with us, we'd like to see them. You can send them to desk at, WMS, at actionnews5.com. That's desk at actionnews5.com or on the First Alert weather app. There is an area where you can just scroll to the bottom and you'll see an area where you can submit photos and we can use them there and show our uh, other viewers what you happen to be seeing where you are. Very impressive debris ball still around uh, that Leechville cell that uh, Spencer was tracking and that cell still holding together, but it is this additional line now that we're watching. It looks like the northern portion of it, there may be some steam that was taken out of it uh, from this first cell moving on through and moving out. So not as much amplification here, but where the atmosphere has been relatively untouched, this is now entering. And as that moves off to the east, there's going to be the potential for those storms to intensify and enhance over the next hour to two hours tonight. And even though oftentimes this time of year, once the sun sets, we lose the heating of the day and the energy. Not the case today because we've got that strong southerly flow at the surface that's continuing to bring moisture and it's keeping warm air in place. So even though we're not getting the daytime heating and sunshine heating the tops of those clouds, there's plenty of latent heat that lingers in the atmosphere this evening, and that is fuel for these storms as they march off to the east and make their way into the Action News 5 coverage area. So until this line clears, we've got a bit to go to get on through it. Right now, we're still seeing that hail track there. We're also seeing some hail tracks with that main line back to the west. Not quite as impressive, but wind has been the biggest concern there. We get this out of here. Temperatures are going to fall tomorrow, and then we'll see a drier pattern for the end of the weekend. And next week, we'll see temperatures warming up again as we get back into another potentially active pattern to end next week. In the meantime, we've got a tornado watch for the entire Action News 5 coverage area. That is in place overnight tonight and will remain till about 2 a.m. before clearing the area. We have the one tornado warning that still remains in effect right now. That tornado for Dunklin, Dyer, Mississippi, Pemscott County, and that will be in place until 815 this evening. So with that, we are watching this cell continue to make its way through, continue to impact portions of the coverage area as it makes its way into the uh, makes its way through the mid south but that is the main line right there spencer is there anything that's developing back behind that i think there may be a little more activity that comes in another line that i think could develop behind that as we get into the overnight hours what are your thoughts on that yeah i think that's definitely a uh, possibility ron as uh, we're going to see that line uh, that's behind it move through and uh, you know i think the further it's it's really the further south you are maybe the better chance you have at seeing less impact from some of these storms. Uh, again, we're still looking at this storm moving into parts of the uh, Boot Hill, Missouri. Uh, and uh, I wanted to just kind of uh, go back. We'll zoom out a little bit and I'll take some of this off the uh, off the screen here so you can see it just a little bit better. Uh, I'm just still kind of keeping an eye on this cell up there, but uh, let's turn on the reflectivity and again, Numerous storms. These are all tracking northeast. If and I'm going to draw a line. Here's what I'll do. I'll clear this stuff off. Clear that off. And let's draw a line of uh, areas that will be impacted by these. This uh, line of storms. It's moving to the northeast. And so, if you are along and north of I-40, I think you have the greatest chance of being impacted by these storms. Now, if we switch over to the uh, Little Rock radar, there are storms even in southwestern Arkansas that we're going to have to keep a very close eye on. 
in, in, in this part of the storm right here, this part of the line may end up going across the more southern sections. That, that's the, the area we'll have to watch and see what that does. So that, and that would mean it would make it in much later tonight. Ron, it's only 750 right now. Yeah. I, I don't think that part of this, of this line is going to make it here until maybe 11, 12 o'clock, maybe well, a little let, bit later. Let me show you what Futurecast is showing. I was just taking a look at the uh, high resolution rapid refresh model just a moment ago, and it's lining up pretty good. This is the actual live first alert Doppler radar right now. This is what is occurring. Let's flip over now to Futurecast and notice it's picking up on that line back to the west. It ejects that cell out and that line back to the west is kind of diminishing to some degree. And we're even seeing a little bit of that right now. But that's not all. Watch this. Back to the west. Right around 11 o'clock tonight, some regeneration around Little Rock, just to the west of Little Rock. Then that makes a push to the east. That's going to bring with it the potential for more strong to severe storms to move through the area. And this will be the main and final line that comes through between 1 a.m. and 3 a.m. moving through eastern Arkansas and into West Tennessee. It will likely continue to push to the east and by 6 o'clock make its way into middle Tennessee and northeastern Mississippi. But along that leading edge and through those overnight hours, the potential will remain for damaging wind and isolated tornadoes within that line. So that's what we're looking at right now. Tomorrow morning, the sky should clear out or the uh, rain should move out. I think skies will be slow to clear behind it. Some of that cold air could keep clouds in place a little longer, but it will certainly be a drier but much cooler day for tomorrow. In the meantime, this line now with one, two, still three active tornado warnings in it. We still have the active tornado warning right now for northwest Tennessee, Dyer County, northern Mississippi County, northern Lauderdale County. You are included in this, but just taking a look at the movement of this, I don't think you're going to have to worry about anything in the way of significant weather with this particular cell as it's now lifting to the north. I think this is going to be more likely to impact Lake County and uh, Obion counties in the next 45 minutes, 30, 45 minutes to an hour. I don't think even though northern La Lauderdale County is under that warning, I think it's this line back to the west that we have to watch a bit more diligently and closely to see what that's going to do over the coming uh, minutes and over the coming hours. But it is going to be a long night tonight. It is a first alert weather day. As I mentioned, I want everyone to have some method, actually multiple methods of receiving additional watches and warnings with this coming through in the overnight hours. And while many people will be sleeping, it will be important that you have some way to be alerted something loud, something that's going to wake you up. A weather radio or the First Alert Weather app will do that should additional warnings be issued. But right now, we've got this one warning that's coming on through the area, and that is slowly marching off to the east. But tornado, active tornado warnings here. We'll see if additional tornado warnings are triggered for Poinsett County and for Craighead County with this, and if additional warnings will be issued as we get on into these cells that are just to the north of I-40 in eastern Arkansas. Spencer, what are your thoughts on this one that's just to the west of uh, Craighead and Poinsett County? You think that's going to hold together or move into the area? Yeah, it looks like, Ron, that these, uh, these cells moving into uh, northeast Arkansas will likely uh, keep their intensity at least for uh, the next hour or so. And, uh, you know, even though that atmosphere is a little bit worked over, I still think uh, these storms uh, have so much uh, energy and uh, really just moisture to work with uh, that uh, we're going to continue to see the, the same uh, type threats. Now, these are forming more of a line, so that's good in the fact that they're not out there by themselves like that one was. Uh, you know, these, that, that, that was a true isolated supercell that moved across northeast Arkansas, and these are more 
uh, linear in nature. I was just looking at some uh, some stuff on Twitter and uh, some folks that were uh, showing pictures of a rope tornado near Bay, Arkansas. So a rope tornado there, and also uh, some indications from uh, one of my uh, weather friends that uh, the debris from this particular storm has been uh, lifted all the way up to 20,000 feet. That is a sign of a very strong tornado on the ground. So uh, multiple, multiple reports uh, of this uh, tornado on the ground in parts of northeast Arkansas and now entering into the boot hill of Missouri. And unfortunately, it's just going to be a, a longer night ahead for many of us as we'll have to watch uh, these rounds of storms coming out of the natural state this evening, Ron. Debris at 20,000 feet. We were getting signatures of debris at 20,000 feet. That is an impressive storm. That is a very strong storm. We had, uh, we've had the images coming into us tonight of tornadoes from various uh, spotters and people that are in northeastern Arkansas, but that was with that one cell. Now this other line back to the west, and it is pretty impressive right now, and it's holding together, as Spencer mentioned. There's also a lot of lightning within this line, too. Very heavy rainfall, tremendous amount of lightning, and even wind. There are almost 800 strikes of lightning just within that view itself. Let's take a look at the velocity on this and see how the winds are. I'm just outside velocity range. We call that purple haze. That is just outside the National Weather Service radar in Memphis, but still picking up a little bit just to the south and west of that. I think we'd get a better view on it from the uh, Little Rock radar. I can't switch that over here, but at the very least, there's a tremendous amount of wind just within this line. This is called spectrum width, and it's uh, it gives us an indication of turbulence within the atmosphere, where the strongest winds are. And when you start to see them, yellow, pinks, reds, that's an indication to us that there is some very, at the, at, at the least, some strong, possibly straight line wind within that. But right now we're also seeing the tornado threat that continues within that line itself and the several tornado warnings that are within that line as it's now approaching. We've got one tornado warning that's in Jackson County right now. That is for Independence Jackson at White County. That's going to go until 830. One over Searcy, Arkansas for Lone Oak Prairie and White Counties. And then one just to the north of Little Rock. That's for Lone Oak Prairie, Pulaski and White Counties. But that whole line is moving in our direction tonight. So we're looking at a potential impact from these cells as they're now starting to make their way into the Action News 5 coverage area. Some lightning, some very heavy rain, and Spencer, I'm seeing those bizarre, those bizarre radar returns and those strange images, uh, color uh, pixels in there just because the rain is so heavy, the, the turbulence so intense, the radar having a tough time resolving what it is seeing. I see you've got a pretty impressive cell. What are you looking at there uh, southwest of Paragool? Uh, still, I'm still looking at, uh, and this is actually uh, just to the northeast there. This is it. That's that cell in uh, parts of the Boot Hill, Missouri, 140 mile per hour shear with this cell as it moves through uh, parts of southern Missouri now. So there's some of the areas that will be impacted. But again, this is a still a very strong tornado that uh, does include the tornado warning still goes into uh, a, a very small section of Dyer County along 155. And let me take this off here and uh, just show you where we're talking about. So there's the city of Dyersburg. And uh, this, I think, I still think the circulation is going to stay well north of Dyersburg. But if you happen to travel 155 uh, or had plans to travel that this evening northwest into the Boot Hill, Missouri, uh, I would just sit tight, hang tight, don't go anywhere, call your family and friends if you're in Dyer County, tell them to sit tight and stay where they're at and really be in your safe place until this, uh, this uh, storm passes. But this is going to affect uh, possibly the extreme northwestern uh, piece there of Dyer County. Let me uh, turn this off and zoom in to some of the areas. So that's Bogota, uh, Tenemo, uh, Boost Point, Miston, Calvary. Those are the areas uh, that if you're in those areas right now, you're extremely close to this uh, very dangerous tornadic cell that is moving through uh, now just to the north of Steele, Missouri with uh, really uh, what I haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, the, most uh, the strongest signatures we've seen on radar 
uh, in quite some time. BTI is still hanging at a 7.5, and uh, you can see clearly where the uh, where the rotation is here, just south of. Oakville. And you know, Spencer, just looking at that, I, I could actually see the potential for that cell to produce two, possibly three tornadoes. Mm -hmm. Just to the uh, just to the south of Braggadocio, right there around Oakville, and then uh, Gibbons, south mm -hmm. of Gibbons. And as a matter of look at the one south of Gibbons, that's rain wrapped. Yeah. There is some sort of circulation. Now you've got the rear flank downdraft coming in there. But the strongest rotation is right there around Oakville. So what we may have, what we likely have, is that wind coming down to the surface on the back side of that and getting a little spin mm -hmm. as it comes on down to the surface. But the most intense rotation is right there in Oakville. And I can't believe, do you have the, uh, the distance tracker yes. available? It, can you just give us an idea of where that storm formed and how far it's traveled. It started just around Batesville, Arkansas, and has now, we saw that, we were watching that, what, right around 5, 5.30? Mm -hmm. And it was right around Batesville, and I want to know how many miles it has moved from Batesville to where it is right now because that cell has really been impressive. And I think that first tornado warning we got with that came shortly after six for our coverage area, but it had already tornadoed or was, had already had a warning prior to that just outside our coverage area. But from Cabot on through, so that's a, about where it started I guess we could say the genesis of that cell was right there. And to where it is right now, it has traveled 135.4 miles. We call that a long track tornado. That is a long track tornado. Spencer, earlier today, you were showing those tornado updraft tracks and it's following almost the exact path that the forecast models had indicated. Absolutely amazing. Yeah, it's uh, it really, you don't see this, especially at nighttime. The, these storms are working off of less, I guess you could say, fuel than they would if they were in the middle of the day or in the uh, early afternoon hours. I mean, we're at 8 o'clock at night, and this thing is still going. Uh, so it, it started to gain the fuel from the late afternoon sun and the, the temperatures, but then here it goes. It's continuing into the nighttime hours. Yeah, and this isn't over. As a matter of fact, our eastern county is under a tornado watch until 2 a.m., so we're going to be dealing with the threat for more severe weather. But that one cell traveling over 130 miles produced some damage and a lot of power outage. Joe Birch is with us right now. He's got more on that. Joe, what do you have to share for share well, with us? Well, we know this, gentlemen, that Monette, Arkansas, has suffered a, a major hit. And according to a source who is texting with me right now, uh, the report says a Monette nursing home took a direct hit tonight. Uh, so we hear, we see here some damage. Uh, this was sent to us by a viewer in Monette from Austin Burks. And it's kind of hard to tell what that is. It might be an outbuilding, a utility building of some kind that has been flattened. Uh, this, of course, is a rural area of eastern Arkansas, Craighead County. Uh, but according to a source who is sharing information here, uh, Monette Nursing Home may have suffered a direct hit tonight. Don't know how many people were inside at that time. Don't know of any injuries uh, at this point or any of the extent of the damage. But as we see this picture from Austin Burks in Monette, Arkansas, in Craighead County, we can see the, a pile of de debris on the ground. And of course, being nighttime, uh, it's very difficult to uh, gauge just how damaging these storms are at this point, but we do know that they have hit. And as you've shown, Ron, uh, throughout the last hour or so, we have seen pictures of the twister in action. And so um, <clears throat> everyone's holding tight tonight and staying close and uh, following all the severe weather guidelines of trying to be safe, Ron. Wow, and that, so we have had visual confirmation. Now we have damage, power outages, tornado, 
on the ground, has produced damage. Let's hope there are no injuries. Joe, uh, just we, we have no reports of injuries, am I correct? That's correct. Okay, so we have people working on it, making calls right now. As soon as we get additional information, we will pass that on to you here, also on Facebook, on Twitter, and on our Action News 5 web page. So I encourage you to follow us there. I want to show you some lightning. I got this from my friend Josh Vinson, who was flying into Memphis uh, this evening. And let's show you this video that he shot from the plane as he was coming into Memphis. Look at the anvil tops on those clouds. Brian, can you put me over this video? Because I want to point out a couple of things here. Can I step into the video? I don't know if I can or not. I guess not. Okay, so I cannot. So couple of things. Watch when the lightning pops up. Do you see that little top right there or at the very top, almost center of the screen? There's a little bit of a bubble over the anvil that you can see kind of stretched out there. That's called an overshooting top. And what happens is when warm air rises so rapidly, it overshoots the top of the storm. And that gives us an idea of the lift that an instability that is within a cell. So that was from Josh Vinson, and that was a look flying into Memphis tonight. So a lot of lightning there and a lot of activity still on our first alert Doppler radar. So we take a look at this line. We've got several tornado warnings and they're now starting to line up right there just outside our coverage area. Let's see here. I cannot get this to work. I'm going to step out for just a second put this back into play and I want to show you this line because that's moving in our direction. We've got tornado warnings already on it right now and let me put this into motion for you and show you that's approaching. Um, Cross County, St. Francis County, Poinsett County, I want you to get ready because additional tornado warnings will likely be in uh, will likely uh, be issued within the next couple of minutes. So I want everybody who is along and north of I-40 to find the safest place in their home. I want you to go to your storm shelter. I want you to, let me uh, put the live radar back on here because we have tornado warnings already lined up from just west of Cross County on through Poinsett and Craighead County. I am almost 90% confident that the National Weather Service will extend those warnings uh, to include Poinsett Cross and likely St. Francis. And then folks in Lee and Phillips counties get ready because we're watching this line that's moving along in north of I-40. That could impact you if it becomes a little more linear. Now this line will move on through. Let's track it. Tell you what, let's put a quick track on here. And I'm just gonna track it through I'll do two tracks with this. So this northern portion of it from right around uh, Cross County <clears throat> north, it'll get into Augusta in about eight minutes, Gilkerson in 28 minutes, Jonesboro 37 <clears throat> minutes, about 51 minutes away from Harrisburg. So you're getting, you're getting plenty of advance warning. I want you to make sure you're in the safest place in your home. Truman, you're just over an hour away, about an hour and 25 minutes from Mark Tree. Big Lake, just over an hour and a half in Blytheville. You're uh, just under two hours away from this line itself. Now, the second portion of that back to the west, that too is going to be moving off to the east. So that will be moving into wind in about 80 minutes. Forest City, you can get hit by this portion of the line in just over uh, an hour and a half. And we're looking at it moving into Madison in a couple of hours and right around West Memphis within the next two to three hours. So that is that one line as it's making its way to the east. There's a tremendous amount of rainfall in there at the very least. As a matter of fact, taking a look at rainfall rates within this, it's coming down at close to two inches per hour. There may also be some large hail within this line. And as I uh, take a look at that future cast, it's picking up on it pretty well. So between now and about 11 o'clock, it's going to be making its way into the coverage area, and that could be followed by another line that will develop back behind it that will move through in the overnight and early morning hours. Interesting note here, Spencer, I'm using the high resolution rapid, refle rapid refresh forecast model. It's changing. 
on almost every run as it's trying to resolve what's taking place in the atmosphere as to what will likely take place in the coming hours. It's having a tough time figuring it all out, but I think it's got a pretty good handle on the general idea of what we're going to be expecting tonight. And that general idea is we're going to be dealing with storms from now well into the early morning hours of Saturday. Yeah, this this is uh, really it, the radar is much more lit up than some of the models initially had a, just a couple of days ago, especially. And now they're starting to see what's going to happen with all of this activity. And uh, really, we just need to keep an eye on this line. That line is the one that's really going to have the biggest impact across eastern Arkansas and maybe eventually here in Memphis and Shelby County. So even though we haven't seen much in some areas, and we talked about the fact that maybe we don't see as much early on. We knew a few areas would between 6 p.m. and midnight, but we knew the bulk of it would come through between midnight and 6 a.m. And that's what we've been sharing over the past couple of days, trying to let everybody know and get the word out that, you know, these are going to be some pretty potent storms with damaging wind, with potentially large hail, but certainly a tornado threat. Now, the one positive that I'm seeing out of this, if I can pick something positive out of it, is that this line, this is becoming more of a linear line instead of individual cells. Now, there's still a lot of rotation within these cells, and we're going to have to watch. This is where it becomes a little more uh, difficult to pick out these little brief spin ups that occur. This is in a, uh, a linear, uh, just kind of uh, line that's coalescing that's basically coming together and it's going to have high wind, high straight line wind, and it's going to have some areas of individual spin within these storms. So if you are in Harrisburg, Cherry Valley, Earl, Wynn, and Forest City, uh, you are going to be the first ones all the way up to Jonesboro. Of course, they don't want any more of this because they've already seen their share tonight. But uh, again, we're looking at those areas that will see the brunt of this first. And then later on in the night, it's going to cross over the river, as Ron said. Now, look at all the lightning strikes. I want to I want to pause this for a second and just show you. I'm going to take it off the laps. So this is if we just zoom into this area, 965 lightning strikes within these storms, just within this cluster of storms that's moving through parts of Arkansas. In fact, I'll zoom in. I'll go back over 900, 971. So the further you zoom in, the more you lose because you're losing some of those storms. But wow, almost a thousand lightning strikes, Ron, with this activity as it's moving toward the Mid-South. I'm since we've seen a, a significant storm system like this earlier this evening. I mentioned a couple of December storms that have moved through. It is not unusual, but we were talking earlier today. It's been a while since we've seen something this significant come through the mid south. So we've got this line. It is going to take a while before it moves on through. I want to uh, just zoom in once again and let's put some more tracks because I think giving people as much notice as possible is the most important thing to do right now. And with that in mind, let's track this portion of the line from Poinsett County down to about Cross County east and northeast because that's where we could see tornado warnings extended into. So Fisher, you're eight minutes away from a tornado warned cell. Wiener, you're 16 minutes away from that. 26 minutes away from Gilkerson. Jonesboro, 37 minutes, 42 minutes from Nettleton. It'll get into Truman in about 60 minutes. Lake City in 66 minutes. And it's about 80 minutes away from Caraway. Now, we'll scan down just a little bit or zoom down just a little bit and let me show you this other portion of the line because I want to put a track on that also and we'll track it from right here and along and east of I-40 or north of I-40 I should say and we'll move it to the east so about four minutes before that moves into McCrory the view that's 20 minutes away these are communities that are just outside our coverage area but Cotton Plant Arkansas you're just over an hour away from this segment of that line impacting you. And we have severe thunderstorm warnings and tornado warnings embedded within that line. And when 77 minutes away, it'll get into Earl in about an hour and a half. And we'll see it move into Forest City in just over two hours. So that's what we're looking at with this entire line. And with that, the potential for additional power outages and the potential for additional damage tonight, especially with the winds with this system. And taking a look at those winds, 
I'm going to zoom out just a little bit, and I want to show you, we're going to go into the spectrum. With I'm zooming in instead of zooming out. Here, I'll tell you what, let's just hit the, uh, go back to the home view, and then I'm going to show you what this looks like as far as winds go. This is spectrum width, and this shows us where the greatest amount of turbulence is found within that. There's almost a little bit of a break. I think it may have just dropped some radar data, but you see these areas in orange and red, that's where we're seeing some streaks, some little jet streaks of sorts. That's moving off to the northeast. Then we've got this little segment right here that's pushing to the east. So that's strong wind at the very, very least. And then there's additional heavy rainfall in there too, and a tremendous amount of lightning. Spencer pointed out the fact that there's just over a thousand strikes of lightning in that. Taking a look at the latest update on it, I'm picking up 757, likely not tapping into the lightning strike south of that and just to the north. So just within the line itself, we're looking at the potential for over a thousand strikes of lightning and these tornado warnings holding together. I see a new warning just now entered for Craighead County, Jonesboro under another tornado warning. That's going to go until nine o'clock tonight. That is for Greene County and uh, Craighead County. There is one just to the west of Cross and Poinsett County for Jackson, White and Woodruff County. That's going to go until 845, so about another 30 minutes on that. It will be interesting to see if they uh, extend that into Cross and Poinsett. I think they will because this line is still holding together and it's holding together very well this evening and just continuing to enter an area that is remains extremely unstable. Something I want to point out we had that cell that traveled through this area right here. So it zapped a little bit of the energy from the atmosphere. But look at this, Spencer, that area where we were seeing the strange colors on the radar, more cells popping up now just outside of that. And they're starting to enter an environment that hasn't been touched. So that's going to have a lot of instability, a lot of energy to work with, even though we're well past eight o'clock tonight, so not your typical summertime pattern. And that's the thing about summertime storms. The daytime heating is the fuel for that. Wintertime storms or late fall season storms, they're fueled by the latent heat that remains in the atmosphere from the daytime, which we're still finding out there right now with temperatures in the 70s across a good portion of the area. It is still muggy out there, so plenty of moisture, plenty of heat for these cells to work with, and plenty of time for this whole system to continue to amplify or intensify as it makes its way to the east. But at this very moment, the vast majority of the Action News 5 coverage area is dry, rain-free, but this line is coming and could be followed by another line that will continue to move through well into the overnight and late night hours. Are you seeing debris on that on another cell? It's on that uh, cell, Ron, that's going, uh, it's just it's just to the north of Dyer County. So this is the one that's uh, moving now into parts of uh, O'Brien County. But look at that, that's from the Paducah radar. And man, that is a, in a, in a really scary looking uh, debris signature. And I'll, I'll circle it for you. This is between Concord and Cottonwood. This is just northwest of Lenox and Bogota and Calvary in northwestern Dyer County. So we're not forgetting about you folks up there. We're watching this storm. This is going to go uh, just north of O'Brien, but it, this is this circulation is going to go through Haines, uh, the Haines community, Tiptonville. Uh, this is, uh, you know, this is going to go through some populated communities here in uh, portions of O'Brien County, and then it may get close to Union City, Ron. This, that could be very close to Union City. Spencer, for folks who just, who may be just tuning in, can you explain what debris detection is and what that is, what we're looking at? So we're looking at what the tornado is lifting up aloft. So we're looking at this cell at about, this is about 5,000 feet. So it's telling us that it's, either finding tree limbs or whole trees or buildings, pieces of building that's all lifting up into the atmosphere. Could be leaves as well. You mentioned, you know, we've got a lot of leaves flying around that would be picked up very easily. So uh, there's, there's certainly some debris aloft uh, with this and that indicates that there's likely a tornado on the ground. And that's why this debris detection is so important, especially at night because we can't see what this would look like with mm -hmm. cameras and uh, the only people that can see it is spotters and it's only if the lightning 
is like because there's obviously not a lot of light in those rural areas like that. So uh, the only way you're going to see these storms is uh, by seeing the lightning. And that's why it's just more important not to look for this, but to go to your safe place and uh, stay there until it until it passes. And by the way, every community that cell has passed through, they've lost power. Yes. So the radar itself, as it sweeps around, we're very fortunate to have access to dual pole radar because typical radar just spanned in uh, just a, a horizontal uh, field. So it, it went this way. But now we can go vertically and horizontally. So as a result, we can now get a good cross section of what the radar is, is hitting. So the radar now has a capability to make the difference or to determine whether what it is seeing is circular or round in nature or some odd shape. And that's where the debris detection comes into play because if there are twigs, leaves, limbs, shingles, what have you, they're not showing up as little round structures in the atmosphere. The radar sees it and says, okay, this is square, rectangular, don't know what it is, we'll paint it blue. That's for us a, signature, uh, a signal that there is debris being lifted by the winds and a potential tornado. But right now we do have tornado warnings within this line. Most of them now, again, just outside our coverage. There we go, just got issued. That just came into play for Poinsett and Cross County. That's going to now go until 9 o'clock. So we were pretty certain that was going to be extended into the coverage area, and that has been the case. So now we have a new tornado warning. Let's put a track on this. I'm going to clear this off. Let's put a track. I'll tell you what, let me zoom in just a little tighter first so we can give you a better idea. Whoops, here we go. Let's go into this area right here. And we're going to take a closer look at this. Harrisburg, you're now in the path of this. So if you are anywhere near Harrisburg, if you're in Cross, Poinsett counties, I want you to get to your safe place right now. Let's track this from the leading edge of the heavier precipitation. We'll follow along that polygon. It's right on top of Wiener right now. Harrisburg, 19 minutes away. It will get into Weona in about 34 minutes. Truman, 39 minutes away. Just over 45 minutes from Cherry Valley. Mark Tree, just under an hour. Slightly over an hour before it moves into Mark Tree Municipal Area. And Etowah, 66 minutes away for you. So, taking a look at this, let's see if we can determine where we may be finding a hook echo. And I think it may be this little area right here. I think I'm just outside of the safe viewing area for that. I'm zooming out and zoom back into that because I think that's where I'm seeing. And I don't know, Spencer, you may have a better view on the velocity itself. I'm having to use the radar just to see where we may have an inflow notch. And it looks like I found it right here. That's where we're seeing a little bit of a notch. We could have some hail. Let's see if we've got hail it's just to the north of it. Okay, so let's go back, zoom in tighter one more time. Let's take another close view of that. Tell you what, I'm trying to get just the right angle on this so I can put a better track on where the rotation itself may be. And let's see if I can find a better view here. And I I think, again, that may be it. So I tell you what, let's track it from this inflow notch right here. That's where I think we may have the circulation. So Harrisburg, looks like that's going to move through you in about 25 minutes. No confirmation of a tornado, or at least I haven't seen that just yet. But there is most certainly some sort of rotation or circulation there near McFadden. So McFadden, it's about a minute away. Same thing for Beataville, Fisher, 10 minutes away, 25 minutes from Harrisburg, about 30 minutes before it gets into Weona Junction. So if you are in the path of this, I want you to seek shelter immediately. Lowest floor of your home, put as many walls between you and the exterior as possible. Let's not try to take a picture of this. Let's wait, let it pass and just make sure you and your family are in the safest location possible where you are. If you're in a mobile home, I encourage you to seek shelter in a sturdy building, whether it be a nearby church, storm shelter, 
or facility that uh, is a concrete building or cinder block building, you're going to be in much better shape than a manufactured or mobile home there. Spencer, do you have a good look on the uh, velocity? It's just outside the range on the radar I'm using right now. Can you see anything a little better on this to give us an Oh, I, see, I can see that from here. Yes, uh, yeah. we, I, I switched over to the Little Rock uh, radar, and now I've got a good view of it between Tupelo and Goodrich. This is moving toward the Beadville community, uh, Brushy Lake. Uh, let me change some of these uh, real quick so that you can get a better idea. I'm going to switch out some of the towns here so that I can. I'm going to go out about 50 miles, and we're going to go, let's see, let's go out about 90 minutes. Actually, let's go out about 60 minutes. This, thing's, this thing is really moving. So that puts it in Harrisburg at 35 minutes. So if you are, and that's, I'm tracking the direct circulation there. That is the uh, circulation. I'm not tracking all the different storms. We're tracking where the tornado could be on the ground. Uh, again, if you are in, uh, this is going to go just north of Hickory Ridge, and it looks like it's going to be in Harrisburg within 20 to 40 minutes, uh, depending on if it uh, picks up speed or not. And uh, again, the uh, National Weather Service, uh, and it looks like they're uh, down again. The uh, it, the but, chat, yeah, yeah, the chat is down. But we're gonna we're gonna continue to track this because uh, we are looking at uh, the potential for more tornadic activity in portions of Poinsett and maybe Northern Cross County as well. So if you're in any of these areas, you need to be in your safe place now. Be sure and go to the lowest level, lowest level of your home. Stay uh, maybe in an interior bathroom. That that's always a great place to go so that you can uh, really uh, stay away from all the outside walls, the outside windows. And then, uh, of course, you want to have any type of headgear. If you have a bike helmet or anything, uh, those are always good to have as well in case uh, there is debris that's flying with these storms. And we've seen that already tonight, Ron, unfortunately. All right, Spencer. And this is lining up with the area that the uh, Storm Prediction Center put under a moderate risk. That's where we're seeing the strongest storm so far. And I think that's going to continue to be the case this evening along in north of I-40 in northeast Arkansas and west Tennessee on a scale of one to five, five being the greatest threat. This is coming in at a four. And that's where the majority of the instability and the greatest probability of storm enhancement will be as we get into the overnight hours, but an enhanced risk still continues for the rest of the area, and we're not done with this by any stretch of the means. That's why I shuck the jacket. I think it's going to be a long night. I want to check in with Joe Birch right now, and we had reports of a tornado hitting a nursing home in Monette. Joe, what do you have? Additional information for us this evening. We have visual confirmation now, Ron, and we have a tweet from a viewer over in eastern Arkansas. The viewer's name is Maddie Birdno, and she shared this image. Now, I know it's kind of hard to see here, but as I zoom around with this and look more closely, I can see that it appears that the coatings and the exterior of this building appear to have been stripped. This is Monet Manor. This is located in Monet, Arkansas. This is at 669 uh, Highway 139, State Highway 139 North in Monet, a community of 1,500 people in Craighead County. And we understand that there is no power here and that all of the residents of the nursing home were inside and some of them may be entrapped right now. Uh, so uh, volunteer firefighters and other first responders are making the scene here at 669 North uh, Highway 139. They're in Monette, Arkansas, at the Monette Manor, where we understand, according to reports, there are this parties trapped. They uh, are there inside a nursing home where all the residents were uh, on a Friday night uh, safely in their uh, rooms. And unfortunately, the tornado took a direct hit on Monette Manor. And as you can see, there's a lot of debris on either side of that vehicle there. In the foreground there, there are large amounts of debris as well. And it appears as I zoom in closer to the, to the picture here that the, the, the actual coatings or whatever was on the exterior has been stripped. And it does appear that the roofing uh, has been damaged heavily as well. We do not know about the extent of injuries at Monet Manor in Monette, Arkansas, but clearly uh, there is a call for help there. 
And so if you are in the eastern Arkansas area and you are a first responder, that is a place you may want to head. Ron? Joe, Monette, Arkansas is about 70 miles to the northwest of Memphis. It is in Craighead County. It's just to the east of Jonesboro. It's in this area right here, and we saw that cell move through. As a matter of fact, we're efforting to get a picture on the air for you in just a couple of minutes here uh, from William Frog, a storm spotter who has been in that area. He's been chasing tonight. He sent me a picture just moments ago of a well-defined wedge tornado on the ground, and we do believe that was the same tornado tornado that uh, moved through and struck that nursing home. So as soon as we can get that ready, we will bring that to you in just a few minutes. In the meantime, we've still got tornado warnings working their way through Craighead County. Another one there for Jonesboro. We've got one for Poinsett and Cross County. This is just north of Wynn. Wynn, Arkansas, you're not included in this, but there are strong to severe storms that are west of you and are moving in your direction right now. But I want to track this cell that we're watching that is moving through through. Now, let me point out a couple of areas. First of all, I think we're going to find hail and heavier rain in this area right here. We're going to find some strong wind, possibly some hail here. The greatest probability of rotation looks like it's right here in northwestern Cross County. That's going to allow that cell to move in this direction. So with that in mind, let's put a track on this and let's show you where this is going to go within the next few minutes and we'll track it from that little center of circulation. Let me make sure I am hitting that in the right place. Tell you what, let's do this. We go back here and I'm going to bring up the scope and we will, that will help me to better get an idea of what I'm looking at and where that potential rotation may be. It's really tough to tell right now. I think it may be somewhere right in here or it may be just outside that area slightly to the west, and I bet we're finding it in the purple haze. Let me zoom in a little closer. And keep in mind, and I apologize for this, but I'm analyzing this live right now as I'm talking to you, so it makes it a little more, and there it is, right there. I knew if we zoomed in a little tighter on that, we'd see something. That's it, so, and there we go. So this scope allows me to see velocity. So with that, I can move this around. This is velocity or wind data. So I move this off and we're seeing the rain data here. So this is precipitation, this is lightning. I move the scope back over it and we're looking at the wind. So let's track that. Let's put a track on that right now. And I'm gonna track it from where I think that hook is to this area here. Eight minutes from Fisher. Rotation, eight minutes away. Rotation 16 minutes from Sally Wolford. Oakview Church, it is about 33 minutes away. Greenfield, 36 minutes. 43 minutes from Central High School. 54 minutes from Bay. And 55 minutes from Bay High School. As I've mentioned before, I put churches and schools on there because most people know where they are in proximity to a school or a church in their neighborhood. So this gives you a better idea. We're trying to give you as many tools as possible to help you know where these storms are in location to your uh, specific in, in, in reference to your specific location. So I hope this helps you and helps you plan. But if you are in the path of this in any of these communities or areas, you need to get to the safest place in your home or storm shelter right now as that cell is moving in your direction. So let's clear it out quickly. I want to show you the rainfall rate with this too because it's producing a tremendous amount of rain, especially north of Beatable. It's coming down right around two inches per hour there. We're seeing rainfall rates anywhere from uh, about an inch and a quarter to two inches, close to two inches per hour. And there's also a significant amount of hail. It was really starting to fire up west of Augusta. It's coming in just under an inch in size. It looks like it may have shrunk down just a little bit to under half an inch, but it's still pretty in, it's still pretty impressive. Now I want to go back to uh, the storm Joe was talking about a moment ago. The area that was possibly hit by the tornado, that was in Monette, Arkansas, near Caraway. Let me zoom in and we'll show you where that is. And I think it may pop up on here. Was, we know it came through Lake City. So in between Truman and Lake City, Monette is right around there. It's not going to pop up on the, on the screen for whatever reason. But William Frog, our storm chaser, was in this area. He took this picture and shares it with us. Can you see the wedge 
Look at the light that's right there in the center. Just to the left of it, there is a, a V shape. We call that a wedge tornado. And Spencer, I want you to notice the lower cloud level. That's the lifted condensation level. In other words, as moisture rises and condenses to form a cloud, it is very, very low to the surface. And when we have a situation like this and that lifted condens condensation level is so close to the surface, you can get tornadoes that pop up quickly in an environment like this. Pretty impressive picture. William, thank you for sharing that with us. We do believe that may have been the very same tornado that hit unfortunately, the nursing home in Monette. And as we find out more information about it, we will certainly pass it along to you. In the meantime, we're still watching a big line that's back to our west. Spencer, I've seen some rotation. You've got the, uh, the Lynx radar. Let's take a look at what you've been watching because you've been showing us some pretty impressive views this evening. Yeah, the uh, rotation is entering uh, parts of Poinsett County right now. So it's like you said, if you're in Harrisburg, you need to go ahead and uh, be in your safe place. This is going to go just north. At least this area of rotation is going just north of uh, Cherry Valley. And uh, the, these cells, the, the good news here right now, at least, as I look at this, and I'm looking at this from the Little Rock radar, uh, these do not seem to have uh, as strong a rotation. However, uh, I did see a report from the uh, National Weather Service in Little Rock that mentioned that there was a uh, tornado on the ground earlier with a couple of these cells. So we'll have to keep in mind, keep that in mind as they move in. Uh, one thing I'm seeing is I'm seeing uh, these cells back in in parts of central Arkansas that look like they are becoming more uh, severe thunderstorm oriented with severe thunderstorm warnings rather than tornado warnings. So let's hope that trend continues as uh, this area again in uh, parts of Craighead, Poinsett, and uh, Cross County, that's really the biggest area of concern at this time. So we're keeping an eye on these very closely uh, for you folks there in Northeast Arkansas. Unfortunately, you have been under the gun tonight uh, with these storms and uh, and we're still watching that cell that's uh, now moved into uh, about to move into portions of Southern Kentucky. That one's still going, Ron, still going. That one's going to probably have lasted I don't know, 140, 150, maybe 180 miles. That long track tornado. Long track tornado. So uh, these storms have that capability, but again, with this line, it's because it's all together, they're feeding off of all the energy instead of one cell feeding off of all the energy around it. So it, it's actually better that these are in a line, but that does make the damaging wind threat a little higher, so uh, we want to watch that part of it as these storms roll in. Ron? You know, we don't often see that around here, long track tornadoes. I think the last one I remember was 2008. There was a tornado that traveled about 120 miles through northeast Arkansas. Many of you may remember February 5th, 2008, and the devastation that caused here in Memphis and across much of the Mid-South. But Spencer, that has been on the ground for, as you mentioned, almost 140 miles. That's like a storm you'd see in Alabama, central Alabama or Mississippi. So that's the case. That's why we made today a first alert weather day. We saw this coming. We saw the potential for this, and that is certainly the way it's played out. Now, unfortunately, there's still much more to go because this isn't over yet. We've got this segment of the line that's working now along and north of I-40, and it's a very impressive portion of that line, and that is moving into an environment that is still ripe for formation. And then what is developing back to the southwest from uh, Little Rock South into southwestern Arkansas. I expect to see that intensify tonight and make a move to the northeast. And all of this is going to pa pass through the entire Action News 5 coverage area, bringing with it the threat for additional storms that will linger well into the overnight hours and early Saturday morning. I mentioned earlier that if you have a phone that is nearing the end of its charge, Go ahead and charge it up now. Make sure you've charged up all of your electronics. Make sure everything has a full charge in the event that you lose power. And should you lose power, you can still follow our coverage just on the First Alert Weather app. Or you can uh, pull us up on our, uh, on our uh, streaming devices, Apple, Roku, or Amazon Fire if you have battery uh, capabilities there. But certainly on our First Alert weather app and on our Action News 5 news 
news app, you can continue to watch our coverage should you lose power. And I do believe power outages will become a bit more common as we get into the overnight hours. We've also already seen a significant amount of power outages across Poinsett and Craighead County, some power outages in the parts of Mississippi County. But with this main line now coming through behind that, that could exacerbate that and add to additional problems in those areas and then allow that to cross east into West Tennessee. So I think just about everybody in the Mid-South is under the threat of at the very least power outages tonight, given the fact that the wind profile with this could become pretty substantial as this continues to move off to the east. And moving to the east is exactly what it is doing tonight and moving along at a pretty good clip. It is starting to become a little more linear. We, these individual cells we had earlier are now starting to blend in to form a one line. And with that, we could likely see the development of some strong straight line wind just within the leading edge of that. So there is the potential for additional wind damage there. And we can show you that on spectrum width. This is a indication of turbulence or stronger winds within the line. And right here around northeastern Arkansas, that's where we're seeing the strongest winds right now. And even a little Boeing segment with that too. Notice that little area right there. Let's put a track on that. Let's put a track on that. Uh, tell you what, track that little bow right there because there may be some strong winds that will follow through for Jonesboro, about eight minutes away from some potentially damaging wind. 14 minutes from Nettleton, Harrisburg, 27 minutes. Lake City, 38 minutes. Truman, 40 minutes. 52 minutes from Leechville, Manila, at 65 minutes and 69 minutes before gets into Big Lake. It's also producing a tremendous amount of rain. I want to look at the rainfall rates. Still very heavy. Look at that north of Jonesboro. I think there may be some hail in that. There's probably some hail right there in Western Poinsett County. Just over uh, at the very least, if it's not hail, it's raining at almost two inches per hour. And here's the other thing rain does is it falls and even hail as it falls through the atmosphere. It's bringing a column of air down with it. And as that air comes down with that precipitation, it hits the ground. It's got nowhere to go. So it just spreads out. That's what forms straight line winds when that air rapidly, that very cold air at that rapidly rushing towards the surface, it hits the ground, it spreads out. If you've ever spilled the liquid onto the floor, same thing with the air. The air is coming down very rapidly. It hits the ground. It spreads out in turn, takes out trees, can create, uh, can cause roof damage. It can take down power lines, you name it, wind is certainly a force to be reckoned with, and that's the case within this. But we still have the tornado warnings within this as well, and I want to go back right now and take another look at what we're watching here because there's still a pretty good little hook right there around Harrisburg, and I'm not sure if we're seeing a little rain wrap in this area here. Let's take a look. Okay, so back to the west of Harrisburg, a little rotation there. I'll point that out here. There's a little something right there, maybe a little rotation. It looks like right around Weldon, we got a little more right there, a little circulation within it. And of course, active tornado warnings there too. So with that, let's put a track on this. Let me clear this off, take this out, and then let's track this whole line from where we're likely dealing with hail down to the circulation area. We'll expand that east, northeast. So what I'm tracking is the whole cell, all right? The entire cell, not just the center of circulation, but the entire cell. So seven minutes away from impacting Truman. It's about 17 minutes from Harrisburg, 24 minutes from Steyer. It's about 27 minutes from Cherry Valley, Etowah, 35 minutes away, 47 minutes before it moves into Little River. Mark Tree, just under an hour and just over an hour before it gets into Burdett. But that is that one individual cell. That cell is also producing a tremendous amount of lightning. And from right there around Augusta East, look at this almost 250 strikes of lightning just within that. But again, it is all part of this main line that is rapidly moving off to the east. Now, earlier this evening, we saw a few showers around parts of northern Mississippi and even a couple that have dotted West Tennessee, but much of West Tennessee, most of northern Mississippi 
It's been tranquil throughout the day and now into the evening, but it's overnight tonight. We're going to see this line really start to develop and push on through, and I think that could cause us some problems, especially as we get into the overnight hours. So we want to watch this very closely. We still have a tornado watch for eastern Arkansas, good portion of West Tennessee and North Mississippi. That's going to be in place until 11, but that tornado watch was expanded farther east along the Tennessee River Valley into Middle Tennessee and Northeast Mississippi. That's going to extend until 2 a.m. By the way, wind advisories for Alabama, middle and eastern Tennessee. But here in the Mid-South, it's all about the tornadoes tonight and the strong to severe storms that we're dealing with at this time. So this is what we're looking at. There's that line. Future cast showing it still working its way to our west at 9 o'clock. Then as we get to around 11, starts to become a little more linear. Right there along that leading edge, the greater threat for straight line wind as this intensifies. And notice... There could be some embedded cells that will be capable of producing isolated tornadoes too as it moves off to the east. Then as we get to around 1 o'clock in the morning, it's moving on through West Tennessee. We'll see it get into northwest Mississippi. An additional line or a secondary line back behind that could swipe through parts of northern Mississippi and eastern Arkansas south of I-40. But right around 3 a.m., I think many of us will likely be roused up and out of bed by the sound of very heavy rain, possibly hail, strong wind, and a lot of thunder and lightning that is going to accompany this as it moves on through the area. But by 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, the vast majority of it's out of here, and we've got a much calmer day coming our way for tomorrow. In the meantime, We've got a first alert weather day well underway. Moderate risk continues for northeast Arkansas, west Tennessee, and this is the area along and north of I-40 where so far we have seen the greatest amount of activity, the strongest storms, and the tornado that we now know created some damage in Craighead County. Joe Birch has some more information to share with us this evening. JB, what do you have? All right, we have with us right now the Chief Executive Officer of Craighead County in northeastern Arkansas, County Judge Marvin Day. And Judge Day, thank you so much for joining us. Give us a report on what's going on in Monette at Monette Manor. Sure, at 9 o'clock we declared a state of emergency for Craighead County. Uh, we uh, They've asked for additional uh, search and rescue uh, uh, police and fire, which was provided by uh, local law enforcement, Jonesboro and Caraway and others uh, have gone in to help. Um, the latest update I got, they have had two fatalities and uh, five serious injuries um, of residents and, and, and possibly staff there. Um, and then also I was told there's uh, approximately 20 people that were trapped before they started that uh, search and rescue a few moments ago. All right, so two people have died as a result of the uh, tornado that struck Monette Manor. Five other people are suffering major injuries, and as many as 20 were trapped in the basement. Is that right, Judge? That's what I've been told, yes, um, that, that when they first called and asked for search and rescue help, that there were 20 people trapped, and, and they've gotten in there and are, are working their way through it, but that's, that's the update I've got at this point. All right, are there other areas of Craighead County, uh, a community of uh, more than 110,000 people. Of course, it's home to Arkansas State University there in Jonesboro. Do you have any other reports of damage or injuries? You know, I, I, the first area that we were made aware of was County Road 403 in the, the south side of Jonesboro. Um, had significant power line and tree damage, but uh, uh, we were not aware of any um, uh, major structure damage or, or injury um, at this point. Um, I've heard unconfirmed reports in the cash area, but I've not gotten any kind of verification of issues on, on that part of the, which would be the western side of the county. But I've not seen any more, uh, had, had anything confirmed there. So uh, obviously we're keeping our eye on the, on the storm coming up our backside, hoping it'll go away. <laughs> Absolutely, Judge. We're uh, hoping and praying that uh, any more storms bypass Craighead County as you suffered so much there with the loss of two lives and we have five major injuries and as many as 20 people may have been trapped in the basement.
Now, this is unconfirmed at this point about the folks who were trapped, but we understand that uh, first responders have begun to extract people from that basement at Monette Manor in Monette, Arkansas? You know, I've, I've not heard of exactly what tools they have at their resources, but I, uh, I have heard that there are uh, well over 150 uh, people that have responded, and uh, I'm, I'm sure they've got everything they need to, uh, uh, to get to those folks. When you say a state of emergency has been declared, specifically what does that empower you and the other first responders to do? You know, that's, that's really, um, as my role, I have to uh, uh, declare that state of emergency to the State Department of Emergency Management. Um, it does not necessarily mean that we're going to need additional resources, but it, we're just kind of putting them on notice that it's possible. Um, like I say, we uh, uh, we just didn't know what we'd find as we got in there. So, uh, but right now, our our local resources, um, the many cities and and our and our county folks are 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 able to keep up and and manage through it. All right. Well, Judge Marvin Day of Craighead County, Arkansas, thank you for taking a few moments to be with us here live on uh, WMC Action News 5. And we, we hope we don't have to check back with you later, but we may have to call you back uh, throughout the night. And we appreciate your availability, sir. Thank you very much. You bet. All right. Take care. See you. All right, Ron, there's the report. We have uh, a confirmation of two people killed by this tornado that hit Monette Manor Nursing Home, Monette Manor LLC at 669 Highway 139 North in Monette, Arkansas. Five major injuries there in addition to the two fatalities and some 20 people reports say were trapped in the basement and as you uh, meteorologists always tell us, we need to go to the lowest point in our structure with uh, no windows is, is possible, and so that's apparently what the folks there in Monet did, and uh, they are now being extracted, uh, we understand, from that uh, location, but uh, uh, as we understand it, there are no more serious injuries in Monet, Arkansas. S Absolutely heartbreaking tonight, Joe. Thank you for that report. They are still dealing with rain. Fortunately, no active warnings in Craighead County or for the responders in Monette, but we do have a tornado warning that is just to the south of that, and we're watching that very closely for Poinsett County and also for, Cre for uh, Cross County. This uh, tornado warning is going to remain in place for the next few minutes. This will go until 9 o'clock tonight, so about another eight minutes on that. That. But it's that cell that moved through northeast Arkansas. Spencer Denton has a track on that. It's traveled more than 140 miles, a long track tornado. And Spencer, I think you've got a pretty good animation of that thing from its genesis all the way to where it is now, right? Seeing, let me uh, let me turn my mic on there real quick, and you can see on that long track tornado, there is the the track, the actual length, 162 miles wow. so far. Let's put this in motion. So watch from where it began, just east of Searcy, Arkansas, all the way through the Boot Hill, Missouri, and now just past, the, just to the north of Union City, moving into southwest parts of Kentucky. This thing has been on the ground for more than 160 miles. And now we're dealing with the storms that are moving over the same spots that were already hit by that tornado uh, on that long track path. They're dealing with storms and uh, you know, this is not what you want to see, especially when you're trying to clean up, especially for the folks uh, that uh, are in that uh, debris of the nursing home and, and all these areas that are trying to deal with uh, potential damage and a loss of life. We're going to have to watch the radar still for even those folks, the rescue folks and some of those uh, people that are helping out with the uh, cleanup and, uh, and helping out with that sort of thing. You can see, uh, and I'll take off that, uh, that track there, but you can see we're still watching a, one tornado warning right now, and that is for Poinsett County. And I've been watching this so closely, and here's the good news for you folks there in Poinsett County. I don't see any kind of signature that is near what we saw with that uh, one singular supercell that moved through. Uh, let me make sure we are on the uh, latest imagery here, and I'll look through a couple more things. A little bit of rotation with this, but again, nothing substantial compared to what we saw earlier. Now there is 
uh, what I'm seeing here, let me go back to the reflectivity. There still is uh, some indications of possible uh, debris aloft. That could be leaves, that could be limbs. Uh, it's hard to say what that is. Uh, but when you look at the actual velocity itself, um, you know, I just don't see a whole lot does it, there. Does it look like there may be straight line wind, giving that, that a little bit of a kick up? Yeah, that could be. That could be straight line wind. It's, it's kicking up all those leaves and all that uh, debris from, from tree limbs and whatnot. Because I, there is a little bowing segment there between Bushy, mm -hmm. Brushy Lake and Harrisburg. Yep. You, you I can think see you're that right. little bit of a bow right there. So it, it, at the very least, there may be some 60 or 70 mile per hour winds if there's not a tornado here, uh, but uh, really approaching Harrisburg and just to the north of Whitehall. So uh, if you're in those areas, you still want to take your tornado precautions either way and just stay, st really sit tight until this storm passes. Uh, if you're in the uh, McCormick community uh, over toward uh, Truman, you need to stay weather alert because this may be extended uh, at the very least for uh, damaging winds in your area. So this is going to cross over another one that's going to cross over I-555, another cell that uh, thankfully does not look as bad as the uh, earlier cell, but still has the potential to produce damage. So that's why uh, you folks want to stay safe and uh, sit tight. and We'll keep an eye on it for you, Ron. Now, look, I want everybody else in the Action News 5 coverage area to realize this isn't over by any means. And as a matter of fact, we are watching uh, more activity back to our west. Now, I, I'm not able to tap into the Little Rock radar on this on this computer right now, but we're starting to see a line develop just to the south of 40 from Little Rock Southwest, and that has the potential to intensify or most likely will intensify as it moves east. And as it does, this is going to be a line that could quite possibly begin to impact areas south of I-40 in eastern Arkansas and even into northern Mississippi. Northern Mississippi and West Tennessee have pretty much remained untouched through the evening hours. However, with this entire line now starting to make its move to the east, this whole segment is going to come through overnight tonight, and that's going to be impacting everyone as it moves through. And along that leading edge, that's when we can find the greatest potential for straight line wind. That's going to lead to the potential for power outages. It could bring down trees. Trees could fall on homes. That's why I want you to stay weather aware through the remainder of the evening and especially overnight tonight. Make sure if you have a weather radio that it is on and that you have the volume up. Get the first alert weather app, put it on your smartphone, make sure the volume on your phone is on so that you can receive any additional alerts that may be issued through the overnight hours because we're several hours before this is all said and done. We're approaching nine o'clock right now. I don't expect this line to exit the area until six o'clock Saturday morning. Yeah, we're in for a long night here in the Mid-South tonight. Joe, I saw, did you have more information for us? No? Okay. All right, we'll come back to you in a moment. Spencer, what, Spencer's got something. And by the way, Spencer rolled up his sleeves. I haven't seen that in a long time. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been quite a while since we've had to even uh, talk about this. It's been great because we've had a long period of uh, uh, without really any kind of major severe weather right here in uh, the Mid-South and the surrounding areas of Memphis. But we're tracking this storm that's tornadic, and they just reissued that tornado warning. So that now goes for portions of northern Poinsett County. That includes Truman, I-555 from Mark Tree to Bay, Arkansas. And again, these are these are areas that have already been hit by uh, some of that uh, that last round, that first round that came through. And I wanted to show you this because it looks like, and I was looking at this from the Little Rock radar, and it looks like we're now on the outer edges of that. So I'm going to switch back. But it looked like a little Boeing segment there a second ago from the Little Rock radar. So let me go over to uh, our, yeah, and it's not showing it as well now on the, uh, from the uh, weather site in Memphis, but it was bowing out with 60 to 70 mile per hour winds. And I think that was picking up some debris and lifting it aloft. And that's why we were seeing that from the uh, debris tracker just a few minutes ago. Let me go back to that debris tracker and see, yeah, it's still picking up on that, uh, that area there of potential uh, debris. And I think that is uh, from straight line wind. But again, 
It is uh, hard to tell. These are big time rain wrap storms. So either way, you want to stay in your safe place. But the Weather Service continuing that warning now for Poinsett County until 945 PM in southern parts of uh, Craighead County. So if you're in Truman, Lepanto, Caraway, uh, Cary, Greenfield, Harrisburg, uh, you need to stay in your safe place until this storm passes. Stay in your lowest level of your home and uh, just uh, get into an interior bathroom and uh, make sure that uh, you don't come out until this tornado passes or until uh, we can give you the all clear. So Spencer, Monette is under a tornado warning again, right? Uh, yes. I, I think they're under that warning. So yes. Monette, Arkansas, if you're just tuning in, a tornado hit a nursing home in Monette. We have two confirmed fatalities. We have five major injuries. There is a search on for others, major power outages and damage in that area from one tornado that moved through. It's now ejected north and east into western Kentucky, but now that same area under another tornado warning tonight, making the rescue scene, cleanup and rescue there even more difficult. Now, let me clear all of this off. Let's put this into motion. Let's show everyone what's working, where it's going, and where it's moving to. This is becoming a little more linear, but as Spencer pointed out, there's still some individual cells that are showing some signs of rotating within that line itself. That's very common, but there's also the potential for straight line wind within a line like this. And just taking a closer look at the just I want to identify the bow echoes that may be in there or little areas where we see, oh, just a little protrusion of sorts. And let, let me point out a couple. So here's one right here. You see that? We call that a bow echo. You see that little bit of a curvature here? I'll bring that up in the uh, middle of the screen. You can better see that. A couple of things to keep in mind here. So we see that bowing segment right there. What we have is wind coming in aloft and it's being forced to the surface and it's kind of punching that segment of the cell out. But when it does that, it allows the southern portion of it to rotate a little bit and the northern portion of it to rotate a little bit. Do you see those inflow notches in there? Let me point those out quickly. I don't mean to give a, a weather lesson here, but I just want you to know what we're watching and what we're working with. Those little areas right there. We could have straight line wind damage here and then there's the potential for isolated tornadoes south of that and just to the north of that. So that's what we have to watch with this entire line, watching that entire line for bowing segments, for inflow notches, additional bow, additional inflow notch, and that continues on down the line. So that's why these lines can produce some quick spin up. Um, some quick spin up tornadoes. Now, typically in a line like this, a tornado will be an EF, if it does produce a tornado, it will be an EF0 to EF1, 7,500 mile an hour winds with that. The winds where we're finding that bow could be even more significant. So that's what we're looking at. And that's what gives us cause for concern tonight is the wind threat and additional tornado threat that exists within this. Now, right now we have three tornado warnings. One, Warning. Let's see if I can bring up the information on this. That is going to be for Craighead and Poinsett County until 945. We've got another warning just to the south of that. That is for Craighead, Crittenden, and Cross, as well as Poinsett County. That's going to go until 930 tonight. We've got a severe thunderstorm warning that's just outside of that area for Prairie, White, and Woodruff counties. That is going to go until 915 tonight. So I inadvertently said there were two or three tornado warnings. We have two that are active. We have a tornado warning here and then another polygon tornado warning here. And it is due to these inflow notches that we're seeing in these areas that we think they may be kicking up some brief little spin ups. But I think for the most part, straight line wind is really the greater threat within this. So now that I've explained that, let's put some tracks on this because I want you to see where the potential for straight line wind damage will be with that segment of the cell over the next few minutes. Cherry Valley, 
eight minutes away from some very strong wind coming in your area. And at the very least, you're also going to get heavy rain and lightning out of this. About 17 minutes before it moves into Bird Eye, 22 minutes from Weona Junction, 30 minutes from Coldwater. We'll see it get into Mark Tree in about 40 minutes, 45 minutes from Tyronza, 54 minutes from Witten, and 66 minutes before it moves into Turrell. That line is also going to hold together, and it will be moving into West Tennessee. So Tipton, Lauderdale County, be prepared. This is coming your way. Now, let's pan up just a little bit. I want to go just a little farther north, and I want to track this segment that is to the north of that. But I'm going to put two tracks, one that extends from right here around the Boot Hill, Missouri, east and northeast. We have the tornado warning, the northern portion of a polygon there, but this is mainly heavy rain and wind. So Monette, two minutes away. Heavy rain, wind, you are just, Monette is just outside that tornado warned area. Can you see the little area right there? Here's the polygon. They are just slightly north of it, but in close proximity, they're still gonna get more out of this. Nine minutes from Leechville, right around 25 minutes from Big Lake. We'll see it move into Gosnell in 38 minutes. 45 minutes from Blytheville. It will move into Steele, Missouri in about 50 minutes, 67 minutes from Barr, and about an hour and eight minutes away from Ayers. Now, this little segment right here, let me tell you what, it wants to move that whole segment. I'll clear that off. And let's put a track on this portion of the cell and move that east. And I'm going to carry that on across the river, although I think my last report, yeah, Ashport, 76 minutes away. So just over an hour from Osceola. But Truman, two minutes away, 17 minutes from Carraway. Mark Tree, it's coming your way in 27 minutes, just under 30 minutes from Mark Tree Municipal. Uh, airport, uh, White Whistleville, 37 minutes into Kaiser and 51 minutes in Osceola. Again, just over an hour for you. So that whole line moving off to the east. Now, Spencer, I'm tracking that line at about 60 miles per hour. It's still moving along about 50 to 60, I do believe. Yeah, I think it's about 50 to 60. I think the individual, uh, <clears throat> the individual cells are probably a little bit uh, faster than the actual line itself. The actual line's probably going a little slower, but uh, you know, this area is the area we'll have to watch for continued uh, areas of rotation. And I've, I was watching this area south of Harrisburg and I've actually got a uh, friend that is uh, there in Harrisburg that is monitoring and will uh, let us know if there are any damage reports from this either straight line wind or potential tornado. But uh, you can see that uh, along Thomas Road is where we're seeing some of that uh, possible, at least some uh, tree limbs blowing around. Something is uh, either blowing because of straight line winds or because of a uh, circulation there. If you're in uh, Lake Point okay. set, you need to stay put until this uh, little area of uh, higher wind passes. Let's take a look at the shear rate on this. And yeah, they're still showing some, uh, some potential uh, shear here. And uh, as we look at, uh, let me look one more time. Yeah, it's around Thomas Road. If you're in uh, the Dam Road area, Dawson Lane, uh, there in the city of Harrisburg, uh, South, South Illinois Avenue, uh, also Cole Street, uh, Bay Lane, any of those areas are going to be impacted. So that's just give you an idea, uh, idea of some of the streets that are being impacted right now as uh, they continue with these warnings. And as Ron mentioned, the, the very edge of this warning goes into Monette where we're seeing uh, what looks like uh, another area of possible rotation uh, near the Monette community right now. But uh, they're right on the edge of this. But either way, they're, they're going to get hammered by heavy rain, maybe some small hail and some gusty winds. So uh, unfortunately, look at that notch. That notch just continues to hang out there, Ron, uh, just south of Harrisburg. And I think, like you said, if that is a tornado, it's a, it's a weak tornado yeah. or it's straight line wind. Yeah, because right there around McCormick, we own a McCormick Truman. I think that's straight line wind right there, but mm -hmm. there is some sort of rotation just to the southwest of uh, Harrisburg. And yeah, look at that. You can see it on the shear swath. Yeah. And th so there is some some minimal rotation there. That uh, is a good placement for the polygon. Great job by the National Weather Service in placing that polygon where they did. But I do believe that's probably a quick spin up. Um, the sad thing about this is the fact that it is now bringing additional rain and wind into areas that are without power, that are scrambling to uh, to just 
get out and inspect damage. As a matter of fact, we got this picture in just moments ago from Leechville, I do believe. This is damage in Leechville. Meg, do we have that? Let's pop that picture up and let me show you. This is, I, that's a wall. Is, it, is that a, it's a building we're looking at. So a building, the wall has come down. So some damage there. And yeah, you Ron, I think what that is, is you see debris there in the distance. And I think the individual is sheltered under what may have been a damaged building looking out at the damage there. Wow. That, that's what I'm thinking. But we are seeing some incredible tweets from storm chasers right now that we're going to bring to you. What we have to do is gain permission from them to share them with our viewers on the air. But there's one report of a monster, this is the quote, monster wedge tornado hit Monet. And there, there's just an incredible amount of damage at the Monet Manor. And the great concern that everybody must have right now is those first responders are on site there extracting some 20 people who are in that building in the basement and we have another tornado warning for that very same small town of 1500 people in craighead county and so uh, extreme concern tonight for those who are trying to help others in Monette. Yeah, this is absolutely heartbreaking indeed and something that we had hoped would not happen tonight. Unfortunately, that's the way it's played out. And these are just the images that are coming into us now. It will be interesting to see what uh, we see tomorrow when National Weather Service goes out to survey the area, the sun comes up and more people can get out and see uh, what has transpired. Let me show you something a little promising or, or somewhat positive. This line is starting to become a little more linear. Um, and notice just the last couple of just frames in this. And here's what I'm pointing out. It's just, it's becoming more of a, a line of rain as opposed to individual cells. Before, we had the, the, you could just see the little individual pockets. Now it's become more of a line. That's going to be more conducive to producing heavy rain and just some strong, possibly straight line wind with this. But I think it does eliminate to some degree the tornado threat that we were looking at earlier. And I want to uh, just take a quick look at this. We still have the active tornado warning, so it's still a very dangerous, very serious situation. But I am somewhat uh, encouraged by what the radar has been showing over the last couple of hours. Right there around Harrisburg, it looks like there may be some rotation there. Spencer, I think that was the one you were pointing out earlier. You certainly have the better radar view on that, but there's some broad scale, what looks like broad scale rotation there. And as we uh, pan a little more to the south and west, and let me bring the scope down with me here, um, and, just, and we're just looking for areas of red and green coming together. Red pixels, green pixels, uh, and we call them pixels, the little individual colors that you see, the individual squares themselves. There are a couple of purple pixels there, and we call this area purple haze, but it's where we're seeing the red and green come together. Not as much, but what I am seeing, you see that little line right there? That's an indication that there's probably some strong wind in that, and yeah, spectrum width shows that. Spectrum width shows us where the greatest turbulence and the strongest winds will be and from just to the east of Park and Bend to southwest of Cherry Valley is where we're finding what looks to be the most significant wind within that line itself. So with that in mind, let's put a track on just that line of wind because wind has a tremendous ability to take down trees, power lines and we can see we've seen what it has done to buildings also. So here we go. I'm just going to track this leading edge of what the radar is indicating is strong wind or the most intense turbulence. Nine minutes away from moving into Cherry Valley. It's about nine minutes from Cherry Valley Elementary School, Langill, about 13 minutes away. It's going to get into Bandel in about 18 minutes. We'll move into Birdseye in 20 minutes, Bethel Church 
and men and right around Monterey, about 21 to 24 minutes from getting to you. So dealing with very, very heavy wind or strong wind in those areas and very heavy rainfall associated with it too. As a matter of fact, right there just to the east of 49, Highway 49 is coming down about an inch and a half per hour just to the west of it near Pumpkin Bend, it's coming down at about an inch and a quarter per hour. So very, very heavy rain is what we're looking at in those areas. Back to the big picture, we have, still have two active tornado warnings tonight. Let me uh, hit this and show you what we're looking at. We've got, tell you what, let me zoom in just a little tighter before I do that and outline these tornado warnings. But these are the two active warnings. And Northeast Arkansas has really bore the brunt of all of this tonight. And it has been rather tranquil elsewhere in the Mid-South and West Tennessee, Northern Mississippi, but Northeastern Arkansas, just line after line of strong to severe storms. We still have the two active tornado warnings that are working right now. This first warning, that is in place for Craighead and Poinsett until 945, so about another 30 minutes to go there. That's the one that's also close to Monette. We've got Craighead, Crittenden, and Poinsett Cross in Poinsett County, that is until 930, so another 15 minutes with that. But looking back to the west, this portion of the line showing some signs of trying to intensify back to the southwest. I know that's a long way from us, from Little Rock, but we want to watch this because all of the atmosphere south of I-40 through eastern Arkansas into northern Mississippi has been relatively untouched today. So as a result, there's still some energy that exists, some moisture, some latent heat that these storms can interact with and still intensify. As a matter of fact, Spencer, um, you're showing that line, that secondary line that we were talking about earlier coming in behind it. So two lines. One that's going to come through northeast Arkansas, and it looks like another more impressive one developing in northwest Arkansas behind that. You want to talk about it? Yeah, Ron, those uh, those lines, those two lines that we're watching right now are uh, really holding together pretty well. Now, the one behind it is still a little bit broken. So as these continue to move off to the east, we'll have this one wave come through. And this is why it's still going to be a pretty late night with the storms and why many of you that haven't seen the storms uh, still continue to uh, be in the threat area because this entire line is going to continue to move east and we'll see uh, what develops, but it's developing all the way back down to the southwest of Tex Arcana right now on that that initial line along the front. So the front, the actual front itself, and I'll zoom out just a little bit so you can get a better idea. The front itself is this this back edge of this line. This is the, the uh, main cold front. So once that passes through, we should be okay after that. Uh, we still have, again, we're watching these cells here. I'm going to take the uh, laps off and uh, we're watching these cells. I'll go back to the uh, reflectivity here. And uh, we still have two tornado warnings in portions of northeastern Arkansas for Craighead, Poinsett, Northern Cross County. Severe thunderstorm warning with those storms rolling into Cross County from the <coughs> west of wind right now. It looks like there's some damaging wind with that. And then these extend and uh, flood warnings even for portions of northeastern or central uh, parts of Arkansas. So we are seeing uh, uh, really a little bit of everything out there flooding. We're seeing uh, severe weather and we're seeing damaging winds, tornadoes, you name it. Uh, we're seeing it out there. And one thing I noticed, Ron, I've seen pictures tonight of a rope tornado, a wedge tornado and twin tornadoes all within this little cluster that has moved through northeastern Arkansas and now to southwestern parts of Kentucky. So uh, unfortunately, this has been a night where we have seen more than we have seen in quite some time. 2015 is really when it, when it comes back to me, Holly Springs to Selmer. Uh, Tennessee, December 23rd, uh, 2015. That was, a, that was a pretty big event around here uh, again, but it wasn't in this area. This area has really been hammered tonight. And Spencer, it shows no signs of letting up anytime soon. So we still have several more hours to go. If you're just tuning in with us tonight, we are on the air due to several active tornado warnings that are in place across the Mid-South. One tornado that formed back in eastern Arkansas moved through Poinsett County and Craighead County 
We have confirmed damage, multiple power outages. We also have confirmation of two fatalities, multiple injuries, and rescue crews on the scene at a nursing home in Monette, Arkansas, just to the east of Jonesboro in Craighead County, slightly to the west of Mississippi County in northeast Arkansas. New tornado warning just issued moments ago. Let's go to it because this one is now for Mississippi County. That is for Craighead, Dunklin, Mississippi, Pemiscot County, now extended in until 10 o'clock tonight. So these tornado warnings continue to just come one right after the other as the atmosphere continues to support these storms, not allowing them to fizzle. They're holding together. And as a matter of fact, the one storm that we were tracking earlier this evening that started it all has already traveled more than 160 miles tonight. So it is a very, very dangerous situation. If you are getting close to bedtime, I want you to make sure that you have your weather radio on, that you have some sort of method to get warnings. Hopefully it is the first alert weather app on your smartphone or tablet with the volume on on your smartphone or tablet so that anything that does move through overnight, you will be alerted to and you will be uh, able to get to a safe place with plenty of time in your home. So this is what we're looking at right now. Let me clear this out of here. Let's take a look at the big picture and I want to run you through what we are going to be dealing with tonight. So we have the active tornado warning still in place for Northern Cross, for Poinsett, now for Craighead and Mississippi County, a portion of the boot hill involved in that as well. Three active tornado warnings at this time, but there is still more to come. Now we have a tornado watch that will remain in place for all of eastern Arkansas, good portion of West Tennessee and northwest Mississippi until 11 o'clock tonight. But that watch has now been extended farther east to include counties along the Tennessee River Valley, northeast Mississippi, McNary County in West Tennessee and well into Middle Tennessee until 2 a.m. Wind advisories south and east of that. So winds still a big concern. Let's talk about those winds because we're seeing wind speeds around the area. These are sustained winds. These are not gust. These are sustained winds of 20 to 25 miles per hour out of the south, although we're starting to see a little bit of a southwesterly shift in northeast Arkansas. That's where we could see the potential for a little more rotation, where we start to see a little veering with the wind, but very strong winds and still very warm temperatures. Look at this. It's 77. We're coming up on 10 o'clock tonight, and it is 77 degrees in Memphis when typically this time of year, the average high High on this date 55. We already broke a record earlier today when we topped out at 80 this afternoon. So there's the fuel for these storms to continue to work with through the overnight hours. It remains firmly in place along with the strong winds. So this system's not going anywhere anytime soon. Future cast picking up on that line this evening, but it's also showing the potential for more activity and this slow moving line lingering into eastern Arkansas until 11 o'clock tonight. So a very slow moving system that will bring it on into West Tennessee right around or shortly after midnight, but there's also the likelihood that a secondary line will develop just west of that, and that too will be pushing through the coverage area, and this whole system will start to move through West Tennessee and northern Mississippi right around 3 o'clock in the morning and continue to push east right around six in the morning. Now, I think the greatest threat for additional severe storms will linger from now until about two to 3 a.m. I think once we get, once we get past 3 a.m., we're gonna see a bit more stable atmosphere. We'll start to see some cooler air filtering in behind. That's gonna help this system turn into more of a heavy rainmaker for a good portion of our eastern counties, but for everyone who is along and north of I-40, there is still a significant threat for additional strong to severe storms and the possibility that we could see more warnings issued. As a matter of fact, that's where we find the slight risk area tonight. 
the Storm Prediction Center outlined that or outlined that earlier today, and that's where all the activity has certainly been. Northeast Arkansas, the boot heel, and into western Kentucky. Memphis and Shelby County still in that uh, moderate risk area, and on a scale of one to five, with five being the greatest threat, this is coming in at a four. And that's certainly the way it's played out. And this is what we're dealing with tonight. These are the storms we're tracking. And there's still plenty more to come as this line is just now starting to get its act together. And that will be, I think, intensifying to some degree as we uh, head into the overnight hours. But right now, it's this main line that we are tracking. There's a lot going on in here from heavy rain, intense lightning. Just taking a look at this view from right around Cross County. St. Francis County, north and east, almost 400 strikes of lightning within that view. Now, at one point, we had about 1,000 strikes of lightning. This is a good indicator that it could be weakening to some degree, but it looks like uh, it's still packing quite a punch. And it's also dropping some very heavy rainfall in those areas, too. Rainfall rates showing up at about an inch and a half to close to two inches. Look at that, 2.73 inches per hour. So I suspect there to be some hail within that area right there around uh, St. Looks like that's uh, right there around uh, Poinsett County. It's coming down an inch and a quarter per hour. Northwest of Wynn, Arkansas, just over an inch per hour. So a lot of very heavy rainfall in here. And with that heavy rain comes the potential along that leading edge for also the potential for some strong wind right there along that leading edge. And as it moves off to the east, that's where that strong, potentially straight line wind will occur. But there is still the potential that continues tonight for additional isolated tornadoes in the area. Let's hope that's not the case, but it is certainly something we're watching. Spencer, do I see a fourth Tornado warning? Yes, it looks like they just issued another one now for, and this one goes until 10:15 p.m. So 10:15, and this includes portions of Mississippi County and also uh, portions of Eastern Poinsett County. So if you put all these tornado warning boxes together here, uh, really it includes majority of Mississippi County, excluding the very southern half, most of. Poinsett County, extreme northern sections of Cross County, and extreme northwestern sections of uh, Crittenden County. So we've got several uh, warnings on the radar right now. And, you know, here's the thing. There is definitely some rotation within this, but this line, this line of red that you see, and let's just focus on that, moving through Caraway, Arkansas right now, I think this is straight line wind right here. And I think that this is going to continue yep. to move to the north and east. So this, at the very least, is going to be 60, 70, 80 mile per hour winds. So that's going to cause problems on its own. But then uh, you've got in the fact that there's still some possible uh, rotation within this. And when I look at the radar, I don't see any major signs of rotation, but there's going to be these little spin ups possibly within here that we just can't see. So some of this we're not going to be able to see uh, on the radar itself. Let me clear this off here for you and go back down. But anywhere along this line, we could see brief spin ups. I think the ra I think uh, the weather service may be warning down here uh, east of Cherry Valley for this area right here. It's a little brief spin up along the line and it look and just like that in the next scan, it disappears. So what we're looking at is they're just going ahead and warning for any of those brief spin ups that may occur along the line. They also just issued a severe thunderstorm warning that goes until 1015 and that goes for portions of Cross County, Southern Cross County. Let me uh, zoom out a little bit. So here is, let me, let me just show you where we're at here so you guys can get a better idea. This is Memphis right here, okay? I'm gonna tilt the radar a little bit and just to the north and west of Memphis is where we are seeing this big cluster of storms. As Ron mentioned, this is, this is an area that at least at the very least now is not as prone to major long track tornadoes. We're not looking at that threat as much as we are damaging wind and as we are these brief spin ups that may have 70, 80 mile per hour winds in them. So still substantial, still could do some damage, but maybe not as life threatening as some of those other, uh, as, as that one cell that tracked for over 160 miles. So uh, if you're in uh, any of these areas like uh, Osceola, Wilson, Earl, 
uh, when you're kind of on the border there uh, of that severe thunderstorm warning, but you folks are definitely going to see uh, some wind from this line right here. This is the uh, area that's kind of bowing out, I think, and within this area that's bowing out, Harrisburg, Truman, that is the area where there could be some rotation within that cell. Now, here's the question a lot of folks are probably asking that haven't seen anything tonight. If you are in Tipton County or uh, Shelby County or DeSoto County, you're wondering, well, when is this going to arrive? These are moving to the northeast quickly. And as I put a lapse on these for the last hour, you can kind of get an idea that, you know, these are moving more toward Munford, Covington, Ripley right now. So if you're in those areas, you need, need to be weather alert. You need to uh, be prepared to head to your safe spot uh, if the warnings are extended. Now, when I put this back uh, in uh, real time, tornado warnings now include Osceola, Luxora, Victoria, Kaiser, Caraway, Lepanto, Blyville, Manila, Lake City. Uh, this stretches back to Truman, uh, McCormick, Harrisburg and uh, even Mark Tree, Taranza, and Black Oak. So a lot of communities right now hearing those tornado sirens, uh, your weather radio is going off, your, your first alert weather app, uh, you probably are getting that warning and wondering, hey, is a big tornado bearing down on me? Right now, it looks more like a straight line wind or weak uh, spin with these tornadoes. And there's the latest scan. Now this looks concerning. Let me see if we can look at this real quick. Uh, That's trying to do something. That's rotating. Yeah, there's something there that, and, and this is, and I'll circle it. This is between, uh, is that Tulot and Lepanto? Um, so, yeah, if you're in these areas, hopefully you're in your safe spot right now. You're in your lowest level of your home until these storm passes. Until we give you the all clear, there is, uh, the, the tornado warnings will continue for at least the next 45 minutes at the very least from Harrisburg to Blyville. So stay in your safe spot for now. Now Ron. people in uh, people in Covington are hearing uh, sirens right now and that is because a portion of Tipton County, very small portion, is, does it even? It does, it looks like it actually does. Tipton County? County? It, it goes into a very small portion right here. Okay, so yeah, we've got that tornado warning right there. So, uh, and that's right there around Ashport it looks like. So uh, just to the east of Osceola. So that is the reason that we're hearing sirens going off there. Now the town of Covington and most of Tipton County, well, it doesn't even look like it's, it's touching Tipton County. Now that's Doesn't. actually in Lauderdale County. Huh, okay, yeah, so Lauderdale County. But uh, I got a report, T Kelly Cook is in Covington and tells me that the uh, sirens are going off there. So I'm not sure if it's a malfunction at this time. Um, let me take you back to the big picture though. Let's take a look at it because there are strong storms moving towards Covington and there are even strong storms moving toward Shelby County. But right now the tornado warnings themselves are north of Tipton County and west. So Covington, you are not under a tornado warning, but the sirens are sounding there in some areas. But just to recap what we are dealing with, let's uh, zoom in a little tighter, show you once again, we'll run through some times on these cells and when we can expect them to finally move on out. But we are gonna be dealing with the severe weather threat again for a good portion of the night and into the overnight hours. So I want everyone to remain weather aware tonight as more is moving through. So Craighead, Dunklin, Mississippi, Pemiscot County, you've got a warning. This is gonna go until 10 o'clock. So another 28 minutes on that. I've got to clear this off. Let's go to the next warning just below that. That's a tornado warning. That is for Craighead, Lauderdale, Mississippi, and Poinsett. That is until 1015 tonight. So 1015 for that. And then we've got a severe thunderstorm warning that is just along and west of the Mississippi River for Crittenden, Cross, Mississippi, and Poinsett County. That will be in place until 1015 tonight. So we've been with you now since about just after six this evening. We're coming up on 10 o'clock tonight and we will have more of the damage from the storms that move through Craighead County. We'll be bringing you that on Action News 5 at 10 p.m. And of course, these storms show no signs of weakening between now and then, so we may still be tracking storms well through 10 p.m. tonight. But this is the area mainly along and north of the I-40 corridor 
in eastern Arkansas that we're seeing the bulk of the strong to severe activity. But back to the west, we've got storms that are lining up. They're moving in our direction, and those storms will be moving in later on tonight and late night. And look at this, west of Heber Springs, severe thunderstorm working there. We can see that line moving through, although this may not leave much for that to work with once it moves on out of the area. But as we put this into motion, just to give you an idea of where it is and where it's going, it is taking somewhat of a east northeasterly pattern so it is very slow moving in its eastward eastward progression and a big reason for that is because we have very strong winds out of the south so those southerly winds are preventing this from making its move to the east and really just kind of slowing it down to some degree and it tends to just kind of once it enters that it tends to move it off to the northeast but We've still got a lot of rain in the area that's yet to make its way through. A lot of wind in the area also. And it's going to be a little while before this finally moves out of the Action News 5 coverage area. In the meantime, let's put some tracks on some things to give you an idea of what is where and where it's going. I'm going to zoom in first of all to Mississippi County near the boot hill of Missouri. Let's give folks around eastern Arkansas and West Tennessee an idea of where these storms are going in the next few minutes. Right now we're tracking two tornado warnings within this and looks like there are a couple of tornado warnings back to the west of it. Once those expire, these two will begin, will then take over. But just putting a track on the two individual cells, I'm going to track this one from just to the west of Blytheville to the east, northeast. That's going to bring that into Gosnell in about five minutes. We'll see it move into Blytheville in 13 minutes, 20 minutes before it gets into Cooter in about 23 minutes from Heloise. It will move into Ayers in 36 minutes. Tylersville, 50 minutes away, just over an hour from Evansville. And then we'll see it get into Dyersburg in a, just over an hour, about an hour and six minutes. Now, just south of that, we've got an additional line of storms. That is going to move to the east as well and putting a track on that following along that polygon. This will impact Lauderdale County and possibly clip northern Tipton County. Mark Tree, seven minutes, about nine minutes from Mark Tree Municipal Airport. It will move into McFerrin in 20 minutes, 30 minutes before it gets into Kaiser. Osceola, you're about just under 45 minutes away from that. Ashport, about 58 minutes. Lightfoot, 79 minutes. And just over an hour and a half before it moves into Ripley. Again, very slow moving storms. But these are the times you have, and this is how much time you have to prepare for this to come through. You want to make sure you have flashlights. You want to make sure your mobile devices are fully charged. You want to make sure that you have a safe place in your home to ride this out. Take along some snacks. Just for the, for the kids, help keep them occupied. Make sure, and if you have bicycle helmets, take those with you as well. A lot of folks put their bicycle helmets on in case there's any falling debris from potential tornado. So don't be afraid to do that. It's all about staying safe and letting these storms ride on through. That's what we're here to alert you about tonight. And that's why we want to make sure you get through the night on a safe note and hopefully unscathed. Now, let's take a look at this line because this is an interesting little stretch here. I'm going to put a track on this and it is a severe thunderstorm warning, but let's do another track. Tell you what, let me clear this off. And then we'll track it from right here all the way back, just like that, off to the east. Some interesting times with this one. So, Mark Tree, two minutes. Heavy rain coming your way. Tyron's is 17 minutes away, 41 minutes before it gets into Golden Lake. Park in Arkansas, 51 minutes. It will move into Earl in just over an hour. It's about uh, an hour and 25 minutes from Covington. Jericho, about 84 minutes for you as well. And it looks like it's just under two hours away before it moves on into Munford. So these are some of the communities that will be impacted by this severe thunderstorm worn cell. There's also a lot of wind in this too. As a matter of fact, taking a look at the velocity on it, you can see the stronger winds right here, right there along that leading edge. That's an indication. We're not seeing rotation. What we're really seeing with this, I believe, straight line winds. We've got that colder air coming in aloft, hits the ground, spreads out. As a matter of fact, Spencer, you've got a good view on that. Where, where is that? Is that that's uh, around Truman? There's actually something I want to show you. I saw it on my, uh, on my Facebook page. Actually, let me see if I can find it. 
me make sure my mic's on. Okay. I saw a post on my Facebook page just a minute ago of Truman Nursing Home and Fire Department just got hit by another tornado. So I went back and looked at the uh, data because it was a very quick moving cell. Notice the little area there, Ron, of red and green. Now watch what happens when we go to the, uh, when we go to the, the, Look at that. Whoa. So this one so blew up. So a brief up. little debris ball. A brief little debris came through. So that confirms to me that the Truman Nursing Home and Fire Department has definitely, there have be definitely been some areas right around Truman hit by another tornado. And this was at, uh, this was at 917. So at 917, a, tr a tornado moved through. Truman, Arkansas, and this was one of the weak spin-ups in that, in that area, that cluster of storms. So this is how quickly they can spin up and die, but they can do enough damage uh, that uh, you need to just stay inside and stay in your safe place until these storms pass because picking up these little weak areas, and let me go back into the, uh, let's go back and fast forward ahead, and you can see what looks like uh, when you look at, at this, it looks like with all this blue here, let me, let me go back to the velocity. Along this line, it's hard to t tell just looking at this if there's any actual rotation right now. But I think the Weather Service is doing a great job of putting these tornado warnings out because the, really the, we could see a spin up at any time uh, really within the next hour along this line. And that may stretch back all the way down to Taranza and uh, Black Oak. But that was just a, that was a very telling, uh, really, signature of what these, these storms can do. So now instead of long track tornadoes, we're looking at uh, basically uh, these little brief spin ups that can still do significant damage. And we can have straight line wind as well. Then we've got the lightning. We've got 270 lightning strikes right now. Uh, with this activity as it's moving into Blyville. So if you're in Osceola, Luxora, uh, Hilton Community, Marie, Dice, any of those areas, uh, just stay in your safe place until and it's, it will take a little bit for these storms to pass because they are moving off to the north and east. The good news is um, that when I look at this, and I'm going to go back to the reflectivity, it looks like um, uh, Monette is now just in the rain, but there's still a lot of lightning out there. So for the air, for the, the crews that are cleaning up right now, for the rescue crews, for people that are trying to dig out or help out, uh, lightning, Ron, is going to be another big issue for those folks to have to, to deal with while they're out there because you don't want to be outside during this kind of intense lightning, but, you know, a lot of folks don't have a choice. So Yeah. And, and, and Spencer, what we're dealing with here, this is called a QLCS. It's a quasi-linear convective system, all right? I know that sounds complicated, but basically what it's doing now is lining up. And we're getting these little eddies within this that little spin, brief spin-ups, as Spencer mentioned, that as this moves off to the east, it's got the wind coming in from the, from the south. So here's what happens. You have strong wind at the surface from the south. This line is trying to move to the east. So as it encounters this southerly flow, you get a quick little spin-up. You get another little spin-up there. You can get another little spin-up there. But at the same time, this whole thing is now becoming linear. So that's what we're looking at. Meg, Let's go to let's go to Joe Birch because Joe, I think we have some more information on additional damage. Am I correct? Well, we do, and we wanted to really double check on the Truman Nursing Home tornado because, as you, we've reported tonight, the Monette Nursing Home, which is in Craighead County, did suffer a massive uh, tornado strike, and two people were killed, five seriously injured, twenty were trapped at some point, but another tornado, a separate tornado hit in Poinsett County, which is south of Craighead County, and it hit the Truman, Arkansas nursing home there. So it was two nursing homes in eastern Arkansas suffered direct hits. We do not know uh, the extent of damage. We do not know the number of injuries, if there are any, but we do have confirmation from our colleagues at KAIT over in Jonesboro that uh, this indeed did happen. And interestingly, for the first time in many of our colleagues over there's history, they had to take shelter tonight inside KAIT Region 8 News uh, because of fear of a tornado strike there right at the TV station, which is located uh, out of 
right there on the outskirts of Jonesboro, Arkansas. And so uh, this is an extraordinarily dangerous storm. As we look at uh, the tweets that are coming through, uh, we see these pictures of this wedge tornado that struck Monette, Arkansas, and hit that nursing home and caused the fatalities and the serious injuries. And according to one source, that tornado crossed Interstate 55 and tossed semi-tractor trailer rigs. It may be that when the daylight appears tomorrow, we are going to see massive damage, a lot of tractor trailers tossed here and about, uh, and no telling what kind of damage we're going to see when all of this is over by morning. Ron? Yeah, absolutely, Joe. And I tell you what, I, I, I want to emphasize tonight why it is so important to pay attention to the Storm Prediction Center's severe weather outlook. Earlier today, they painted a moderate risk over the area. Now, we had an enhanced risk um, day prior, a slight risk the day before that, but the severe weather risk kept ramping up each day. And today, looking at the data, Folks at the Storm Prediction Center placed that moderate risk over northeastern Arkansas, northwest Tennessee, into southeastern Missouri, western Kentucky. Tonight, that's where we have seen the bulk of the activity, the strongest storms, and that's where we have seen multiple tornadoes overnight tonight. So they've done a fabulous job with that, and that's why it is very important that we always pay attention to this and also know that even though much of the Mid-South is not in this moderate risk. We're still in close enough proximity and still under an enhanced risk for additional strong to severe storms to continue to develop overnight tonight. Now, the activity, as I mentioned, has been along and north of I-40 and right now still confined to northeastern Arkansas, but this line is trying to make a move east and take it to the west or east of the Mississippi River, and it looks like by the time it's all said and done, it is going to be able to do just that. So let's put some tracks on here. Let's show folks where this is going, where it is, where it's going. We're going to track this non-severe, non-worn part first. It is moving off to the northeast. That'll bring that into Ridgely in about 10 minutes. It'll get into Broadmoor in 18 minutes, 13 minutes from Elbridge, Troy, 43 minutes away, O'Brien right around 45 minutes for you. Mason Hall, 65 minutes away, about an hour and 15 minutes or just under an hour and 15 minutes from Gardner. And we'll see it move into Martin, Tennessee in about 81 minutes. Now we have this additional tornado warned line. And I tell you what, I'm going to redraw that real quick. I don't like that line. Let me redraw that. Put a track from right here, right there around Blytheville southwest and I'm going to take this east and move it northeast. This is going to impact Dyersburg. As a matter of fact, Dyersburg about 45 minutes away. It looks like it's a lot closer, but remember it's kind of moving north and east. The southerly flow slowing it up considerably, but it is still going to come through and there's still going to be a considerable amount of fuel for this system to work with. I think it's going to hold together its intensity. Spencer's got something in a minute I want to show you too because that's a confirmation that, that this doesn't show any signs of weakening. But Kaiser, five minutes away, 16 minutes from Osceola, 31 minutes before it gets into Ashport. We'll see that move into Dyersburg, 44 minutes. You've got 53 minutes before it moves into Folk. Ripley, just over an hour away. It will then move into Friendship in about 77 minutes and just under an hour and a half before it moves into Dyer, Tennessee. So that's the portion of that. That's that portion of the storm. Then we've got this severe thunderstorm warning that is back to the west. This is going to clip more of Tipton County and it's also going to clip a portion of Shelby County. And as we put a track on that cell, Let's take that all the way back to the west of wind and march that off to the east northeast just a bit, 16 minutes before it gets into Tyronza. Then Gardner Lake, Gar Golden Lake, excuse me, 35 minutes, parking 51 minutes away, so just under an hour for you, right at an hour before it moves into Earl. Covington, 79 minutes, so you've got some time to get ready. Find that safest place in your home and be prepared for this to move through. Atoka, uh -huh. 110 minutes, so that's going to put us at just over an hour, about an hour and 45 minutes, and then we'll see that move into Brownsville in uh, 119 minutes and just under 
are just over two hours away before it moves into Huntersville. So these are some of the communities that are going to be impacted by this line of storms themselves, but there is still a lot of activity that remains around the area and there are more storms coming our way. Here's a look at the big picture and this activity back into Arkansas now. That's starting to show some signs of intensification and even a little bit of a Boeing segment there. And that's from hitting that with the radar in Memphis. So that's a long way from the site. That's going to be moving off to the east. And I expect to have to deal with that through the overnight hours as well. But right now, the bulk of the activity, the strongest storms continue to be in northeastern Arkansas and along and north of the I-40 corridor. But don't let this fool you because the rest of the coverage area is still going to be dealing with strong to severe storms before the night is over. We've been fortunate thus far here in much of the Action News 5 coverage areas that this has been confined to our northwest, but this whole system is going to be pushing east. Spencer, I saw that you had, it looked like you were showing a sheer swath or sheer rate there a moment ago. Mm -hmm. That looked like, that did not show signs of weakening. It almost looked more intense. Yeah, is it? And, and I think this is still the wind, mainly straight line winds with this, but then again, there's these little weak vortices within the line that's uh, really producing those spin ups. And the other thing, too, Ron, is this is uh, kind of got that. That, uh, that shape that it takes whenever, whenever we see the spin-ups in these little creases. So that's, the, that's what the rotation, that's still some rotation that's being detected on the leading edge uh, of those storms. But then you look at the sheer swath and man, you can see, it, and, and they're kind of covering up each other now, but uh, the first one, the big long track super self, I zoom out and I'll just take off the lightning and take off the warnings for a minute so I can show you. So when you're looking at this, look at this track. First of all, there's the long track tornado right there. And then here's the secondary stuff that we've been seeing uh, with that possible uh, tornado developing there in Truman, Arkansas here recently that could have done some damage. So. Uh, this is, you know, this has been a long night for those folks in northeast Arkansas. And uh, unfortunately, it looks like this is going to continue for a while, at least uh, with the storms, the lightning, the intense rain and the intense wind as as well, Ron. So it's, it's a this is definitely it's not the uh, threat we were seeing earlier. It's like the threat has uh, really transitioned into more of the wind and the brief, but still intense. Uh, circulations within this uh, line. Hey, you were looking at something at Lepanto, near Lepanto a minute ago, weren't you? So, uh, yeah, let's see. That's where you were, we were seeing the potential of a, uh, a little rotation. I, and I say that because William Frog, Storm Chaser, just texted me. I say just texted me, it was about uh, just a few minutes ago. He said a possible tornado near Lepanto right now can see the funnel but not confirmed on the ground. So that was, uh, I think I see what you were, just to the north of Lepanto, is that what we're looking at or is that it's that either, little area to it, the southeast of it? It could be this or it could be either one of these uh, and, that's, that's possibly. And I'm not sure, he didn't say what road he's on, um, but he's in that area. And also the only way to identify it is through is with a lightning strike lighting up the uh, the sky, mm -hmm. so it's very hard to see, and it's on, and you have a brief second before it's gone. So, uh, but there is very likely there there is definite rotation there. Radar has been showing that, but we may have had a a brief little touchdown or a quick spin up there along that uh, that line of storms. Yeah, so, we, may, we may have some other spin ups right now. This is, uh, let's see, what is that? What's that, that's, crossing 55? Yeah, that's crossing 55 right now, just west of Osceola. This is uh, in the Kaiser Avenue area. Uh, this is also County Road 439. So uh, we may have another spin up. Let me go look at the. Uh, and Osceola, you are under a tornado warning right now. So yeah, this get is. In, 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 if you're in Osceola, Kaiser, Osceola, Get in your storm shelter now. Let me uh, let me go back and look at this. Yeah, this could be that's this, a, this could be a weak tornado. Yeah, uh, I, I think that is. Is there a bow with that? Yep, there sure and there's is. There's the little uh, and there's a little notch. 
Uh huh. Right there. So if you're in the, if you are, if you are in between Kaiser and Osceola, uh, again, and I'll turn the warnings back on so you can tell. You are. This is right in the middle of that tornado warning uh, that goes until 10:15. So it's 9:53 right now. If you're in Osceola, stay in your safe place until this storm passes. Luxora, same story. Victoria. Uh, the circulation is very close to you, but these little notches and let me let me uh, clear this off and show you again. It's either on the leading edge or right here on the northern end of that little bow echo right there that we could have another brief tornado forming. And then north of that, there's likely some small hill within that cell. And again, I'll zoom out. This is Osceola, Arkansas. This is uh, just west of the Mississippi River. If you're in Ripley, Henning or Halls, you need to uh, stay weather alert and be prepared to go into your safe spot. Then the uh, other tornado warning now goes until 1030 for die. So they've extended that into Dyer County as well. And so Dyersburg under a tornado. So warning. So Dyersburg. Now. So we have Dyersburg, Steele, uh, Missouri, Blyville, Osceola, all under tornado warning. So this is most of Mississippi County and then uh, the northern half. It looks like of uh, Dyer County also in a tornado warning right now. So tornado warnings continue and Ron, we haven't seen these tornado warnings in this area let up for what seems like at least three or four hours now. Yeah, though, as a matter of fact, we have been on the air now since uh, just after 6 p.m. and we're coming up on 10 o'clock. Uh, we still have three active tornado warnings right now. By the way, I've got to give a shout out to to the city of Dyersburg and, and Dyer County. They, they have they take severe weather seriously and have a community storm shelter there. And uh, one of the communities around the Mid-South, there are a handful of others as well. But I got to tell you, they, they've done it well there. They've done it upright. And there is a community storm shelter in Dyersburg. So if you don't have a place to go, if you're in Dyersburg, don't forget you have your shelter there. And Dyersburg now under the tornado warning. So I encourage you to get there as quickly as you can. Let's put a track on this because because it hasn't made its way to the town of Dyersburg yet, but I want to track this entire line as it's ready to move off to the east northeast. And with that, looks like it will get into Dyersburg in just over 30 minutes. If it continues on that, that path and at that speed, I'm tracking that at about 60 miles per hour. So Broadmoor, four minutes away. Bogota, it's about eight minutes away. We'll see it get into Big Boy Junction in 21 minutes. Tylersville in 21 minutes, 35 minutes from Newburn. It'll get into Dyersburg in 36 minutes, 47 minutes before it's in uh, Churchtown and 51 minutes from Canton. So a very dangerous situation right now. If you're in the path of this, I want you to get to the lowest floor of your home, the middle, put as many walls between you and the exterior as possible. Don't go to a window and try to take a picture. Let this pass and then get out, take your pictures and do your storm damage reports from there. But we're not finished with this yet because we've got additional tornado warnings just to the south. And as a matter of fact, let's zoom down just a little bit and let's track this line that's also moving off to the east because Ripley, you're in the path of this and it's going to be moving through within the next hour or so. And I'll track this on through Lauderdale County. Now, Lauderdale County, you are not under a tornado warning at this time, but you are in the path of this line. And you've got just under an hour, Ripley, before that moves on through. 53 minutes to be exact. It's nine minutes away from Osceola. We'll see it move into Gold Dust in 19 minutes, 23 minutes before it gets into Ashport, 37 minutes from Edith. Folks, 41 minutes away. Henning, 58 minutes and about 74 minutes before it moves into Nutbush. So those are some of the communities impacted by that. And then just scanning down the line, we're still dealing with more activity. Look at this. This is moving through Mark Tree right now. Heavy rain, wind, under a severe thunderstorm warning. Not a tornado warning, but there is a very strong thunderstorm moving through there. Three minutes from Mark Tree. Dewey Mill, 14 minutes away. Tyronza, 24 minutes. It'll move into Whitten in about 28 minutes. It will get into Bassett in 40 minutes. Golden Lake, 48 minutes. Fulton, 52 minutes away, and it will move into Cherry in about 63 minutes. And speaking of that, we're about three minutes away from the start of Action News 5 at 10 p.m. We are tracking storms tonight on a very busy Friday night. The greatest activity has been across northeastern Arkansas tonight, and it continues 
to be the case, although this whole line is now making a push east, taking its uh, making its way across the Mississippi River, but more storms developing back to the west, and these storms will move to the east, impacting areas along and south of I-40 during the overnight hours. So we're not finished with this by any stretch of the means. There are still more storms coming our way. We've got a long night, and it could be a while before this entire system finally moves out of the coverage area. And as a matter of fact, I don't expect it to exit until right around 6 o'clock tomorrow morning before it finally moves on through. Now, will we be dealing with tornadoes that entire time? Most likely not, but I do believe we've got another couple of hours of potential tornadic storms that will continue to work their way through the area. And just to recap, let's take another look once again and give you some times on these storms so you can get an idea of what we're dealing with and where. Dyer County, you are under a tornado warning right now. That's going to remain in place until 1030. Another one just to the south of that, that's going to be for 1015 for Lauderdale, Mississippi County. Again, that goes until 1015. And then there's one for Dunklin, Mississippi and Pemiscot. That will expire in one minute. But that will also be replaced by the storm that is now making its way across the Mississippi River and moving on into West Tennessee, Lake and Obion counties. You're going to be impacted by this, but Lauderdale and Tipton County, get ready as this is all moving in your direction with plenty more to come and more storms developing back to the west, possibly a secondary line developing back behind that. We've been very fortunate in Memphis, nothing happening yet, but the night's not over and there are more storms to come. And right now, WMC Action News 5 at 10 begins. And there you see the pictures. This is a picture taken by storm chaser Brian M. Finger tonight, and this is an aerial picture of Monette, Arkansas, in the Monette Nursing Home, where two people were killed, five were critically injured, and 20 people were trapped in the basement. Again, this is from a drone uh, taken by Brian M. Finger, a storm chaser who captured this image over in the Craighead County community of Monette, Arkansas, where the Monette Manor Nursing Home was destroyed tonight by a massive tornado. Mother Nature has unleashed a massive tornado outbreak throughout the state of Arkansas, especially in northeastern Arkansas, extending well up into the Missouri boot heel. We have reports of damage all over the place. That's right, severe rain and wind hitting many parts of the Mid-South tonight. Good evening, I'm Kanji Anthony. And I'm Joe Birch, and our team here in the First Alert Weather Center has been working throughout this night to bring you the very latest. That's right, tonight we have team coverage from Arkansas to North Mississippi to right here in the Bluff City. But first, we go to First Alert Chief Meteorologist Ron Childers. Ron. Kanji, it has been a long night. We've been on the air since just after 6 p.m. this evening, and now another tornado warning just issued. Let's go right to it. This just coming from the National Weather Service. Dyer, Haywood, Lauderdale, and Mississippi County now under a tornado warning until 1045. This line has a history of producing tornadoes, and as Joe and Kanji mentioned, we already have damage and confirmation of fatalities in the area as a result of the storms moving through tonight. We also have another tornado warning that's in place for Dyer County, Lake Mississippi and Pemiscot. That will be in place until 1030 tonight. Now taking a look at the big picture, let me show you how things are playing out in and around the area. Let's put this whole line into motion. It all started just before 6 p.m., but this is a look at the last hour and you can see the most intense activity continues to move to the north and east primarily into northeastern Arkansas and there are more storms that are developing to the south and west of that that will impact the area overnight tonight but at this time it's the potential tornadoes that we're dealing with and we've already had confirmation not only on radar but visual confirmation of multiple tornadoes in the area primarily northeastern Arkansas, but there's that line coming on into West Tennessee right now. And
and it looks like this is going to be impacting the town of Dyersburg within the next few minutes. I'll put a track on that for you. Dyersburg, it's about five minutes away from, at the very least, some rainfall beginning and a gust of strong wind, followed by what could be an embedded tornado. To find out more about that, let's check in with meteorologist Spencer Denton, who's been tracking storms with me all night tonight as well. Spencer, you've been honed in on that northeast Arkansas area, making that move now to the west or to the east. What are you thinking? Well, I see why they issued that uh, new tornado warning. This is the image out of Luxora, and this was just about two minutes ago, and you can see the circle that I uh, made here. This is around the city of Luxora, and these are very, very faint on radar, but here's the deal. They spin up quickly, they die down quickly, but they can still do damage, and we've already seen that uh, tonight in what uh, may be the earlier storm that went through Truman, Arkansas. Here it is. This is the, the tornado warn storm, and there's a lot of, there's several tornado warnings. So we're looking at the storm, the very southern storm that's moving toward Ripley, Tennessee, into Lauderdale County and crossing over. And I look back, when I take this back in time, you can actually see that there was rotation all the way back to Kaiser. So it moved through Luxora and now it's moving toward Ashport. That same area of rotation, if we just put a small track on that one little area right there uh, and move it out at about, it's probably moving at about 40 to 50 miles per hour. Uh, Ashport landing in about six minutes. I can actually extend this out a little bit further. So we'll extend it out, uh, let's say about, uh, 30 miles instead of 15. And so you can see some of the areas that will be impacted. And again, the fan gets bigger on that. So let me uh, let me do this. Let me clear that off and I'll make a more direct. This is a more uh, kind of honed in track on this area of rotation. So Edith in 23 minutes, that's one of the areas that will be impacted. If this holds together or we see more spin ups along this, uh, you can see it's going to cross over uh, portions. I'm going to zoom in a little bit tighter. So it's going to cross over some portions of uh, Highway uh, 61. So uh, we'll continue to watch that uh, to the north of Memphis right now, or Highway 51 rather, excuse me, Highway 51 near Edith. So uh, Ron, it, it, trying to pick these individual uh, these individual brief spin ups up very, very difficult, but uh, we are seeing them still occur. So uh, the, these tornado warnings cer certainly warranted, and we may even see damaging wind up to the same speed as some of these brief spin ups. So either way, uh, wind damage is a possibility. I want to ask, and I don't know if you can do this on the fly, I may need to come back to you. That cell that we started tracking just before six o'clock. Do you have an animation of that? That cell, the one that we believe did the damage in Monette, Arkansas, that hit the nursing home there, it looks like it has traveled more than 175 miles, impacting four states. It touched in Arkansas, Northwest Tennessee, the Missouri Boot Heel, and Western Kentucky. And Spencer, I think it's still holding together. My radar is just outside the view of that. I don't know if you've got that animation. I've got it right here. It's very and impressive. I want everybody to see that. And here's the thing about this, Ron. This is the cell that, that, uh, that, that's that been a massive tornado that's caused so much damage. It started just east of Searcy, Arkansas. Now, as we draw this out. And one cell. That one cell. And it was only one cell by itself. It moves through Jonesboro, uh, eastern Craighead County, or the south side of Jonesboro. And then it moves into the Boot Hill, Missouri, crosses just northwest of Union City. And if we still go up here, it's still going right now with tornado warnings northeast or west of Hopkinsville, Kentucky. This is basically about 180 miles, 180 or so miles that this has at least been warned on at the very least for 180 miles and likely been on the ground for most of that uh, time. Uh, but, but like you said, the good news with this now is we're not seeing these individual cells. Those are the worst. Those are called supercell thunderstorms, and they can do the most damage. But this, uh, this band of storms can still do damage, but it may not be on the same level as what uh, that individual cell, which is going to be talked about a lot tomorrow. Uh, and and uh, there will be some scientific papers on that as well. Uh, in the future because of how long it stayed on the ground. So really, 
you know, hopefully we won't see any more of that tonight, but certainly uh, we are watching these storms as they roll through northeast Arkansas, still with tornado warnings on them. Uh, Ron, we still have, what, one, two, we got uh, three. three. Three yeah. tornado warnings right now. And Spencer, I, I think, if my memory serves me correctly, that may be the longest track tornado we have seen since February 5th, 2008, when a tornado moved through northeastern Arkansas. You may remember the uh, February outbreak. Um, and we had a tornado on the ground that wasn't even discovered until after we went back and looked at the storms because there was so much else going on, but it traveled more than 150 miles as well. So it will be interesting to see that one. That may be one for the record books. We still have active tornado warnings right now. All the activity mainly along and north of the I-40 corridor. And I want to show you this. Earlier today, Storm Prediction Center painted a moderate risk. In other words, on a scale of one to four, they gave this a one to five. They gave this a four for the greatest threat for strong to severe storms. And tonight, that is exactly the way it is played out. And that's where we're still finding these strong storms right now and active tornado warnings. So with that, let's put some tracks on this. Let me zoom in a little tighter to this area right here that's moving through Dyersburg right now. Some very heavy rain and wind coming down with that. I'm going to put a track on this. And by the way, just to give you a little info on it, we have the tornado warning for Dyer County. That's going to be in place until 1030. Lake Mississippi, Pemiscot County, you're included in this. Although I think this portion of the storm uh, is pretty much clear of Mississippi County right now, but there's another storm working where you are. But let's track the most intense area of precipitation and the greatest threat for the strongest winds. We'll move this to the east. It's moving through Cloverdale right now, 11 minutes away from Dyersburg. Folks, 15 minutes away. That's going to get into New Bern in about 23 minutes, 25 minutes before it gets into Templeton. Mason Hall, 33 minutes away. Yorkville in 37 minutes, 45 minutes before it gets into Kenton. Now, let me draw another track because we've got this other line, this other tornado warning is right here. Let's show you the information on this. This will expire, I believe, at about 1015 or 1045, excuse me, for now, Dyer, Haywood, Lauderdale, Mississippi County. Yeah, that one is extended. So till 1045 tonight, these are the communities that are, are the counties that will be impacted by this. That's going to impact about 24,000 people. Let's put a track on this so you get an idea of who this is going to be impacting and where it's going. And I'll track it from just south of Dyersburg all the way back to around OC. I think I'm going to have to do another track on that. Let me clear that off. Sometimes it freaks out a little bit when I do this. Let's try that. There we go. We'll track that from just the east of Osceola. And Osceola, nine minutes away. That's going to move into Ashport in 22 minutes, 40 minutes before it gets into Lightfoot. Ripley, you have 53 minutes before that cell moves in. Dave Brown's hometown of Trenton, 75 minutes away, 80 minutes before it gets into Brazil. Alamo, 94 minutes, and we'll see it get into Humboldt in about 112 minutes. So we put those minutes on there just to give you an hour, an idea. 60 minutes, of course, an hour. We're just under two hours before it gets into Humboldt. But these are two very very significant segments of this one line that's moving on through the area. Now there is a portion that is west of Memphis right now and Shelby County that's also starting to come together. Let's put a track on that and show you where that's going. And notice it just kind of stretches from south from northeast to southwest and I'll explain that in a moment and I'm going to track that on through Shelby County. So Langill it's about 12 minutes away. We'll see that move into Wynn in 28 minutes, 56 minutes from Earl. Turrell, 61 minutes away, just under, just over an hour and a half before it moves into Covington. It will get into Millington in about 111 minutes, 135 minutes, just over two hours before it moves into Brownsville, and it will get into Arlington in about two and a half hours. So that is going to be impacting areas along and north of I-40 in Shelby County. Now it has been tranquil throughout the evening in Shelby County and around much of of, uh, the Mid-South. As a matter of fact, here's what we're dealing with, though. We have a very strong wind that is coming in from the south, and that strong south surface wind is causing these cells to just kind of move this way. They want to move to the east. 
this whole line is trying to move to the east, but then it hits this wind, this south wind, and when it does, it gives us a little bit of a spin. And that's what we've been seeing, I do believe, today. And that's certainly been the case in eastern Arkansas. So we're, we're seeing this directional shear, as we call it. We've got winds at the surface moving in one direction, but winds aloft moving in another direction. That's what makes that area so much more conducive to tornadic activity. That's what we're looking at tonight. Now, we still have a tornado watch in effect for all of eastern Arkansas, much of West Tennessee, and counties along and west of 55 in North Mississippi that will be in place until 11 o'clock tonight. Then, just to the east, it's been expanded to include the Tennessee River Valley for McNary County, northeastern Mississippi. You are under a tornado watch until 2 a.m. And we've got strong winds just to the east of that. Wind advisories in Middle Tennessee, northern Alabama. Strong winds already in place here. Look at this. Out of the south at about 10 to 20, 25 miles per hour. Starting to see a shift in the winds to the west into Blyfield. That's an indication that there may be uh, a weak little front trying to move through. I think what we're seeing is a series of little fronts coming through with this that are triggering these bands of showers and storms but and allowing them to hold together, but more of a westerly component right around Craighead County in northeastern Arkansas. But in general, that south wind continues. That's continuing to provide warm air and plenty of fuel for these storms. And when I say warm air, Check this out. Here we are just after 10 o'clock tonight. It's 77 degrees in Memphis. Average high day, high temperature for the state is 55. And here we are just after 10 with temps in the low to mid 70s. We hit 80 degrees earlier today. That is a new record for this date, shattering a record from 1918. Let's take a look at this line because from now till about 11 o'clock, it's still going to be lingering over northern or over eastern Arkansas and slowly pushing into West Tennessee. Right around 1 o'clock, we'll likely see that line moving on through along that leading edge. That's where we could have additional straight line winds and isolated tornadoes. But there may be a secondary line that develops back behind that that's going to move on through, catch up, and bring heavier rain along and south of I-40, the potential for some strong to severe storms, and then migrate to the east through northern Mississippi and finally make its way out of the coverage area between 6 and 8 o'clock Saturday morning. In the meantime, we still have a long night to go, and we are still under this moderate risk along and north of I-40. Spencer, I think I just saw, or did I see a new uh, uh, tornado warning? Is that one? Is that Lauderdale County? Okay, all right, so I did go through that one. Are you seeing anything right now that's catching your eye that, that's giving you any, uh, any uh, cause for concern? Uh, really, I'm just watching along this line. The, the, the leading edge of this line has these little bends in it, and that's where mm -hmm. we're watching for the uh, potential for rotation. So uh, along 155 there in the uh, Lenox area, uh, down towards Stinger, watching that area, there might there's at least some... Uh, high wind gusts there, but certainly uh, there could be some rotation as well. In fact, let me go ahead and see what the winds look like in this. And we're looking at, uh, we're looking, let's see how far are we looking up? This is just shy of 3,000 feet. Uh, we're looking at 70 mile per hour winds. So uh, 76 there at uh, Stinger 72. Uh, so you can see uh, really around 70 to 75 mile per hour winds, at least on the leading edge of this area of storms and then also within that there may be some rotation there might even be some uh, small hail within this uh, in this area here just to the east of the Barfield community uh, we may Do be we seeing some small hail there Arkansas. but these uh, two warnings uh, so that's what we're left with right now two uh, tornado warnings the good news uh, we don't see as many warnings along this line as you trail south and southwest back toward Little Rock. There are some severe thunderstorm warnings, but not any tornado warnings. Um, that cell is still going up uh, around Princeton, Kentucky now heading toward Madisonville. So that's uh, one supercell still on the ground uh, likely up there. But for us, uh, if you're in Dyer County, if you're in uh, New Bern, Tennessee, uh, Bishop, uh, Minglewood, uh, th this threat right now is really a, a high wind threat with maybe some weak rotation within it. And I think it's really uh, down here to the south. I think this part of the storm is the strongest part for sure uh, as you go down toward uh, Porter Gap. So if 
If you're in Edith, Central Gates, Halls, uh, Arp, Ripley, any of those areas, uh, you are about to see some pretty heavy rain, certainly seeing some lightning off in the distance as well. Again, this is the strongest part of the storm that I can find right now, uh, just north of Ashport. This is crossing over the Mississippi River. And if we zoom out a little bit, uh, if you are in Halls, Tennessee, uh, heads up, this is all heading your way, and eventually this is going to head toward Humboldt and Dyer, Tennessee. Right now, most of this, again, still staying uh, north of the Memphis Metro in Shelby County, but eventually we will see some storms roll through. It's just going to take some time for the uh, southern end of this, uh, which is well back to the west. This is the area that will likely affect Memphis here at some point as it moves on through. We'll see if it holds together or if it fizzles out. But like Ron said, this is uh, an area that hasn't been tapped as far as the moisture, the instability, all that stuff. So these could still, Ron, technically they could still fire up again as we head toward midnight and uh, into the early morning hours on the southern end of this. I want to I want to ask you to do something quickly, and if there is a skit that you can touch on near those strongest storms, I want to see what storm tops are at right now. Earlier this evening, we had storm tops of 40,000 feet on some of these cells. 40,000 feet allows the storm to tap into some very cold air, bring that down to the surface, increasing the hail threat and the instability, also the wind threat and also giving those cells a little more incentive to spin. But I wanted to know what those tops are right now, Spencer, because if we're seeing lower cloud tops, that's an indication to me that we're likely going to see this transition from a tornadic event into uh, a straight line wind event. But I just want to see if we're still able to tap into some of that cold air. I would think we're likely still at about 20, 30,000 feet. Not sure, and I'm not sure if you even have access to that data. Yeah, yet. I don't. I, I'm not seeing access to it right now, but I would. I would imagine we're at least at thirty to forty thousand feet right now. Okay. All right. I tell you what. Let me try it on this, Brian. Let's come back to me on this, and let's see. And by the way, look at this severe thunderstorm warning starting to break out right around Heber Springs, west of Marvel, and uh, south of Little Rock. Those storms intensifying and moving in our direction. Right now, I want to zoom into this area. And I am going to try to take a little slice of this storm and see if I can see what the top on that is. I was having some issues with this earlier in the week, and yeah, the data's not there, unfortunately. I just don't have it here, but I was uh, hoping we'd be able to show you that on links. But earlier this evening, those storm tops were at 40,000 feet. Whenever we see structures getting that kind of height, we know they're going to be intense. We know they're going to be in, they're going to be severe. Um, well, okay, you've got something there. What is that? Yeah, I'm trying to uh, try to see. You're, it, you're it, doing the 3D view on yeah, that. Yeah, I'm looking at the uh, 3D view of the radar right now, and uh, these storms are still pretty impressive. They're uh, about 30,000 feet. I think I caught a glimpse. Yeah, yeah, they're they're at least at 30. You can see that's the that's the view of the storm, and I was yeah. trying to zoom out so you could see the. Uh, the uh, what the heights are on those right now, but definitely uh, th these are still some pretty potent thunderstorms for sure. Yeah, the taller the cloud, the greater the instability and the more significant threat it poses for severe weather. Look at all those lightning strikes out there too. That is tremendous, absolutely amazing. But this line still moving through. The greatest uh, activity again has been along in north of the I-40 corridor, but we're starting to see storms approaching from the south and south of I-40. That's really intensifying just over the last couple of minutes. Let me put a little loop on this and let's take a look at that because it's really starting to come together. You can see it started off as some light rain and now it's intensifying as it moves a little farther to the east. And as we take a look at the Looks like we've got a little Boeing segment there. We do have a severe thunderstorm warning in effect for that cell. That's going to go until 11 o'clock for Arkansas, Lone Oak, Monroe, and Prairie. But I would be willing to bet that will likely hold together. So folks in Phillips and Lee County, I want you to get ready as that's going to be moving in your direction within the next, oh, say, hour or so. And as a matter of fact, we'll put a track on it. We'll give you an idea of when that's going to be moving in. Looks like it is moving, making a push 
primarily east northeast. So I'll take that on to the Mississippi River. It's about 12 minutes away from Humphrey, Stuttgart, 22 minutes, Duncan, 42 minutes. Aubrey in about 73 minutes, 83 minutes before it's into Mariana. Hughes in 102 minutes. That will be an hour and 42 minutes, so just under an hour and 45 minutes. It looks like it's about two hours away from Horseshoe Lake and about two and a half hours before it gets into the town of Tunica. There's another cell that's just behind that that will likely impact southern Phillips County and possibly even move on into um, Oklahoma County. So Clarksdale, you could have a storm coming in later on tonight as well. Now, I was talking about this lingering into the early morning hours, and it certainly looks like that's going to be the case with this as it shows no signs of letting up. I do see something promising here. I believe this storm seems to be kind of weakening to some degree. Let's take a look at this. I'm going to zoom in just a little tighter because I want to bring in the scope. The scope allows me to do two things. I can show you this is rainfall, this is precipitation, where you see the, the red, the yellow, the orange. That's where heavy rain is coming down. As a matter of fact, rainfall rates right now showing that there may even be some small hail in there, about 2.73 inches of rain per hour. That's very, very heavy rain, some small hail embedded in that. But what I really wanted to look at was the potential for circulation within that line. So I'm going to bring up this scope and that allows me, we're looking at the velocity, all right? So I'm looking for red and green coming together, a little red pixel, green pixel, kind of butting up against each other. That's a sign of rotation. I'm not seeing that. Here's what I am seeing. That little curvature right there, you see that? That's an indication it's likely straight line wind. Let's put a track on that. Yeah, it even advanced a little farther to the east. Let's put one more track on that. Here we go. There we go. So three minutes before that uh, heavy wind moves into Dyersburg. Folks, five minutes away. Vyer, nine minutes. Newburn, 14 minutes. 21 minutes from uh, Trimble. Stokes, about 24 minutes away. It'll get into Mason Hall in 30 minutes and about 30 three minutes before it gets into Eaton. So folks in Dyersburg, hopefully you are in a safe place in your home or one of the two uh, city storm shelters in that area riding the storm out as it moves on through. Right now, under a tornado warning, again, that's going to remain in place until about 1045 tonight. So heavy rain, at the very least, some strong wind. I don't see a tornadic hook in there at this time, but I can't completely rule it out. There's a lot going on just within this little bitty area. And what about hail? I don't think I put the hail tracker on there. Um, I'll go back and put the hail tracker on in just a moment. Spencer, you were looking at, is that the hail top or the storm top on that? Yes, I find, it took me a second, but I what, finally found it. I'm gonna show you an easy way after this. Yeah, so, <laughs> so here it is. This is a look at those storms right now. And uh, what we're looking at is the height of the storm. So the taller the storm, the stronger the storm. These are over Dyersburg, so we're zoomed in. That's the city of Z Dyersburg right there. And uh, as we go across, let me uh, draw this one more time for you so that I can get a better view of it once again. And uh, let me zoom back out and do the uh, vertical slice here. But uh, these storms are essentially uh, almost at uh, really about 30,000 feet. You can see right there, there it is. 30,000 feet is uh, the height of these storms. Wow. So. Those are the ones that are moving over Dyersburg. I'll zoom back around. I can just fly around it and you can see. Now, when they reach 60,000, that's typical of like springtime, just massive uh, yeah. storms that blow up. This is our secondary severe weather season. And typically, this is more typical of uh, what we would see as far as uh, storm heights and storm strength. Uh, I, I would imagine that's that cell that uh, tracked all that uh, all those many miles across eastern Arkansas. That one probably was a pretty big storm, but these that storms, was showing 40,000 feet earlier. Yeah, that, so, and and that time, that kind of height, Spencer, this time of year is typically unheard of. Yeah, and and these these storms uh, still are packing a punch tonight. It's just that they're not as uh, they're not individual cells. They're, they're, it's this more of a cluster. So you have to deal with the more heavy rain, more lightning, uh, more gusty wind, damaging wind. This one might have some small hail in it uh, that's heading toward Unionville. So if you're on the uh, southwest side of Dyersburg, maybe some small hail with that, uh, maybe even up to some quarter size hail possible with some of these. And then on top of that, we're still looking at 
uh, the uh, threat for maybe some brief spin-up tornadoes. In fact, look at this, Ron. The BTI on this is 8.1 right Whoa, now. Whoa, that's a tornado. So that is it is picking up. Let me see what the BTI is on this other one uh, over here. And let's see, let me go to that. It looks like, yeah, it's given a BTI of 8.1. So somewhere in here. There's is, a spin up in there. Is a, oops, let me uh, flip back to this, uh, flip back to that. Yeah, there's there a, there, it is. Yeah, there's a spin up in here. There so there, it is. there is likely another tornado on the ground here. If you are in New Bern, uh, Good Hope, you need to be in your safe place. They haven't extended this warning yet, but I have a feeling they're going to through parts of Obion. So this is in central. Dyer and Northern Dyer County. Uh, if you are in those areas and even all the way down to uh, Halls in Northern Lauderdale County, uh, you need to stay in your safe place. But New Bern, this is almost right on top of you. It's a broad circulation right there. Uh, I'll circle it so that you get a better idea of what I'm, what I'm talking about. So there it is. This is northeast, northeast side of Dyersburg, uh, stretching into the Good Hope area and then stretching down. Again, there may be some uh, little spin ups here around Edith as well. Uh, Porter Gap. Uh, let's go back to the other view. And yeah, this this all is telling me. Let me look at the uh, one more thing here. Let's look at the uh, the debris detection. Yeah, I bet there's uh, there is likely some uh, a couple of different areas here that we could be seeing uh, potentially one there near Porter Gap and that next one and then another one near the Lane community. So Ron, there could be three different, maybe even four. So Edith. Look at that. That's four wow. different areas. And let me uh, turn that off so I don't do that. So four different areas along that line could be rotating right now along with damaging winds. So heads up Trenton, Dyer, Greenfield, back to Maury City. And then uh, this is all just north of Ripley, Tennessee. And by the way, that Dyer uh, County tornado warning has now been extended. That's going to go until 1115 for the eastern half of Dyersburg from or Dyer County from Dyersburg East into Gibson County. Crockett County is in this as well. Trenton, you're under a tornado warning. So is Dyer, Greenfield and Martin. So that's what we're looking at. And you're probably wondering, how can you get so many potential tornadoes in a line? like that. Well, we explained that earlier this evening and let me run through it again. We call that a QLCS or what is moving through. This is a quasi linear convective system. All right. And we call it, it it's quasi linear. In other words, it's kind of a line, but within that line itself, you can get these little spin ups. And let me point these out for you because I'm going to show you, you see these little segments that just kind of bow out right here. That's where we've got air coming in aloft and it's just kind of punching through and it pushes a portion of that storm out. Well, as it forces that air out, it creates these little eddies on the north side of that and then again on the south side of that. So we can get quick little spin ups. We've got another little bow right here and there may be another little spin up right there that Spencer was showing. This is not the best tool to draw this out, by the way. And then there's another one that's right there. So you can get multiple little vortices along this QLCS. And I've seen as many as five or six at a time develop as a line is coming through the area. Now, the main concern with this, of course, is the straight line wind. But these quick little spin ups can still produce winds of 75 to 100 miles per hour. They're typically EF zeros to EF ones. There have been occasions where this QLCS is kicked out an EF two or an EF three. So it's certainly not unheard of. And there's still a lot of warm, moist air in this area. And as a matter of fact, around the entire coverage area, there is still a lot of warm, moist air. As a matter of fact, we've had little of any activity all across West Tennessee and Northern Mississippi. So all that daytime heating that built up, all that moisture, it remains in place and is just waiting to interact with this line as it moves on through. Now keep in mind, we still have the enhanced risk that's in place for overnight tonight and we still have the tornado watch that will be in place until 2 a.m. for much of the coverage area. We're also seeing hail associated with this. As a matter of fact, look at that little area right there, right there around northern Lauderdale County. That's an indication of hail just over an inch in size. We've seen some larger hail through the evening hours. 
primarily confined along and north of I-40, but now we're starting to see hailers develop just to the south of I-40 in central Arkansas, and that is moving in our direction, and so the potential for more strong to severe thunderstorms moving in for the southern portion of the coverage area will continue, and that's where we're seeing, again, more areas of Boeing and that's, well, I don't know why that did that. Let's try that again. I wanted to zoom in. We're going to clear this out. And look at this, seeing a little bowing right there. So there could be another possible little spin up to the north of that. There could be another little spin up to the south of it. So we want to watch these very closely right there around Pine Bluff, another little Boeing segment. There's strong wind coming in behind it and forcing that leading edge out. That's where you get the straight line wind. So you've got the potential for tornado, straight line wind, tornado in that area. We're going to watch that closely as it's now getting closer to Lee and Phillips counties. Let's put another track on this. Take a closer look at it one more time. Let me zoom in just a little tighter as well and show you where this is going to go over the next few minutes because it's moving along. And by the way, these storms are moving at about 50 to 60 miles per hour, but when they encounter the south wind that's at the surface that's coming in out of the due south, it's almost like hitting the brakes on these storms. It just slows them up. It starts to force them in this direction. They're trying to go due east, but they start getting moved a little bit to the north and east. So with that in mind, Let's put a track on that line and show you where that's going to go and who it has the potential to impact over the next couple of hours. And I'm going to track it right there along I-40, mainly east, northeast, just a bit. So Brinkley, nine minutes away. We'll see it move into Duncan in 26 minutes, about 35 minutes before it gets into Morrow, 56 minutes from Aubrey, Mariana, 66 minutes, 83 minutes before it moves into Hughes, Horseshoe Lake, 106 minutes, and just over two hours before it moves into Memphis. Yeah, that cell has the potential to impact the city of Memphis and Shelby County. We're going to watch that very, very closely over the next couple of hours before it finally, hopefully, moves on out of the coverage area. In the meantime, we still have the tornado warnings in place. I think we're down to two tornado warnings now. We've got one tornado warning that still continues for a portion of Lauderdale County, Mississippi, Dyer County. That's until 1045, and now the new one that has replaced the one that was for Western Dyer County, that will be in place for Eastern Dyer, Gibson, O'Brien, and Weekly until 1015 tonight. So this is the line, this is the setup, and there's still plenty more coming our way with now more activity developing back to our west, and that's what we're keeping a very close eye on. Of course, what's happening here, but also what is developing moving out of Little Rock and then what's developing back to the west of Little Rock. I do believe these cells will likely just be rainmakers, possibly hailers, but the threat for more strong storms and isolated tornadoes will continue in this southern segment along and south of I-40 on into the overnight hours tonight. So that's what we're looking at. Spencer, what are you, you pointing out? You've got a couple of tornadoes right there. It looks like something around Newburn. Yeah, what is that? Newburn, uh, Ron Newburn, Tennessee right now is seeing uh, potentially a tornado on the ground. And I was looking at this just a second ago and I was seeing debris within this. Now I'm not seeing that as much now. Let me go back for the uh, past 30 minutes or so so I can see if. Was if, it quick? Yeah, it was kind of it was kind of quick. It, yeah, it, it it jumped up and then went back down. But this one actually has a uh, 7.1 on the BTI. So this one is still a fairly strong rotation within this. And uh, let's uh, let's go back. Let's clear this off and let's uh, see. Let me take that that uh, track off as well and and go back to the velocity because. Yeah, that, so the latest imagery has it now just to the north and east of New Bern, but there's definitely rotation there. There is a, there is a pretty uh, tight rotation. Uh, it's not strong, but it's very tightly wound up. So uh, this is near the Churchton community. So if you are in Cool Springs, Churchton, 
Uh, this is just northeast of New Bern. This is a possible tornado uh, with this radar, radar indicated. Uh, we don't have any confirmations at this point of anything. And I'm looking back to the west, and I don't see anything with that other tornado warning box. But this one is going to continue uh, into portions of uh, really into portions of uh, Gibson County and uh, even uh, clipping a portion of Crockett County as well. But uh, if you're in Gibson County all the way up to Martin, Tennessee, this is uh, the cell you need to be paying attention to, close attention to, because that's really the main circulation with any of these cells right now. And uh, as I look back, I'll turn back on the uh, reflectivity. Looks like generic storms back to the west of that. Uh, as you look uh, really over toward Osceola and Lepanto. So, uh, Ron, I think once we get this circulation out of here, out of the WMC Action News 5 viewing area, we <clears throat> will see uh, that uh, those storms will kind of pay attention to those back to the south and west. And so far, uh, there t seems to be a weakening trend a little bit with some of these cells. Yeah, and I want to get to a point and, and take a break in just a moment because we did have damage in Monad, Arkansas, and we've had reports of two nursing homes that were possibly hit by tornadoes. Um, and I want to check in with Joe and Kanji in just a moment on that. Also find out a little bit more about power outages in Northeast Arkansas. So if we can get that ready, I want to touch base with them in just a moment. In the meantime, I do want to get us back to what we're looking at here and what we are tracking because we still have a considerable line of storms in the area and it's going to take a bit of a it's going to take most of the overnight hours before this slow moving line finally makes its way through. We're starting to see that southern segment move on in now and along and south of I-40 and that's going to make that push to the east. The more promising aspect of this is the stronger storms seem to be really ejecting out of the area right now. That will take them out of our coverage area. And then what will follow behind that along in north of I-40 looks primarily to be like rainfall. Now, what this will also do with additional rain falling over an area that's been experiencing rain for the last few hours, there's now the potential for flash flooding in that area or possibly even widespread flooding. And there are rescue efforts that are going on as we speak across Craighead County in Northeast Arkansas right now as a result of what came through. Joe and Kanji, do you guys have some information that you can share with us tonight on this? It's been a remarkable storm system, Ron. The, the, the major event that's happened with the storm system that extends all the way up to the St. Louis area is that a tornado struck an Amazon warehouse tonight across from St. Louis where some 50 to 100 people are trapped inside this massive Amazon warehouse and you are looking at live pictures from Ed Edwardsville, Illinois. So this is directly across from St. Louis in Edwardsville, Illinois and you can see they have called in every first responder they can get to respond in Edwardsville tonight because some 50 to 100 Amazon workers have been trapped in there. There's, you can see the wall is down, the roof is off on this warehouse, and uh, people uh, suffering from the effects of the tr uh, severe weather we're experiencing here in the Mid-South in a major way tonight across from St. Louis in Edwardsville, Illinois. But this uh, storm system through our region of mid-America is across the map. Uh, we had two fatalities in the Monette Manor nursing home in Monette, Arkansas, Craighead County, five serious injuries, 20 people had been trapped. And we are seeing pictures here from a storm chaser, Brian M. Fager, who shared this drone picture with us. So this is an aerial a shot looking down on the scene where you see there is no power in this uh, town, but what we see there are the lights of emergency vehicles and the first responders who, and, and if you look very carefully right at the center, there are a lot of people there working to extract the folks at the Monette Manor who were trapped in the basement, Kanji. And we should also point out, if you were um, in the Memphis area, we have been seeing growing uh, power outages uh, throughout the evening. We um, initially, there was, there were about 1,100 homes. Um, had 
that have no power. And now that has grown to 8,565. You can see uh, the yellow areas, um, that's where there are fewer customers impacted. And then the, you know, goes to the um, red areas and that is, those are the hot spots where there are concentrated uh, power outages. So right now, um, MLGW is uh, saying that they have their crews on alert and that they are, you know, attacking the issue as, as best as possible right now. And we also know that there are some other power outages with Entergy as well tonight. But this is before really the storm right. system has hit right. our community. And so this is, I guess, winds that have caused outages, uh, 57, some 5,700 uh, outages here in MLG and W served Shelby County. So, and when you think about uh, that Amazon facility, I mean, think of how close it is to Christmas. We, you know, we just hope that everybody's okay there. But then, you know, you think of all of the people um, who will be impacted by that. We just have to hope that um, you know there was no damage to items that are being shipped um, across the area. And you know, one would think that some of them could be coming. Uh, some of those packages could be coming. Uh, to this area here. But I mean, what a massive scene there. Uh, you know, just such a great response to this Amazon warehouse in Illinois. And we see the structural steel there of the Amazon warehouse standing naked in the night uh, as we uh, look at uh, all the emergency vehicles with their lights. There should be walls there instead of that uh, steel that we're seeing there. Uh, but uh, the, a massive tornado struck there. Uh, earlier tonight and the reports say some 50 to 100 people are trapped inside an Amazon warehouse in Edwardsville, Illinois, directly across from St. Louis. And there's just no telling how much damage all of these long track storms are causing tonight in areas that we don't know. Braggadocio, Missouri, which is in the Missouri boot heel, eight miles east of, or I should say west of Carruthersville, which is on the river, Pemiscott County, Damage there tonight from a, a friend who has uh, relatives there. They called in reports. There are lots of little pockets of the Mid-South that have suffered from these storms tonight. Right, and we only hope that, you know, when it impacts a place that has people, that is when it becomes a big problem. And I know that uh, Ron Childers is now standing by uh, to continue your coverage to make sure that you're uh, prepared and ready for anything that might be coming your way, Ron. And Kanji, the thing that, that really struck me are the number of power outages in Memphis and Shelby County. And we've had nothing move through the area yet but there are still strong to severe storms that will move through overnight tonight. That's why I want you to take a moment, download the First Alert Weather app. If you do not have it on your smartphone or tablet, get it. It's free for Apple and Android products. Should you lose power, you'll be able to continue watching our live coverage right there on your smartphone or your tablet. It's right there on your app and on the Action News 5 News app as well. Now, also, if you have a weather radio with these storms moving through late tonight and you're thinking about going to bed, make sure that is on. It has fresh batteries and the volume is up so that you will get warnings should additional warnings be issued. And by the way, you're going to get them on the app too. Multiple means of getting warnings, weather warnings. That's what you need in a severe weather out. Uh, in a, in a severe weather outbreak like this. And of course, it's a little too late to secure any loose furniture items unless you want to venture outdoors now and give it a shot. But make sure everybody in the family knows your severe weather plan and where to go in the event that you have to get up in the middle of the night out of a dead sleep and f go to the safest place in your home. Just make sure everyone knows where to converge should there be a tornado warning issued for your specific county. And of course, you can follow us on Facebook and on Twitter for additional updates. Joe mentioned the uh, Amazon warehouse struck in St. Louis. Look at this. St. Louis, much of the middle and Ohio, middle Mississippi River Valley and Ohio Valley under an enhanced risk. The sweet spot determined by the Storm Prediction Center today was this moderate risk that they painted over southeastern Missouri, southern Illinois, western Kentucky, west Tennessee, and eastern Arkansas. And that is the area that we have seen the strongest storms tonight. And they continue to churn across the Mid-South. And for areas not under the moderate risk, there's an enhanced risk. So no matter where you are in the Mid-South, 
there is still the threat for additional severe weather overnight tonight. And now a new severe thunderstorm warning just issued this from the National Weather Service. This was that line of storms we were tracking just moments ago. Let's give you some information on it because that line or that severe thunderstorm warning now for Lee, St. Francis and Tunica counties. Let's make sure I got them all in there. Tunica severe thunderstorm warning. That is going to be in place until 1130 tonight, a severe thunderstorm warning. So that's in advance of this cell that is just to the west of that area. But we still have tornado warnings that are working right now that are across parts of northwest Tennessee, right around Dyer, even near. Let me, uh, let me move this map up just a little bit here. We still have this one tornado warning. Now there are two, one just outside our coverage area. Let's take a look at this one for Gibson County, Crockett County, Eastern Dyer County. That's going to remain until 1115 tonight. That's affecting about 45,000 people under that warning right now. So watch meaning that conditions are favorable. A warning meaning that there is a radar tornado or a radar that has been detected or tornado detected on radar or one that has been spotted on the ground. So we have that tornado warning there. Now for folks that are up around Bayan County may have interest in that area. There is a tornado there and tornado warning there until 1115 tonight. So that for Obion County just outside the Action News 5 coverage area. But this is what we're looking at right now. This whole line we're tracking as it continues to move off to the east. I think this is going to turn into more of a severe thunderstorm event, but we can't let our guard down because there's still going to be the potential for additional isolated tornadoes or quick spin ups to develop within this line. So right along that line of storms, we could see little spin ups develop. So we want to watch that very carefully through the continuation of the overnight hours. And it is going to be a little while before this finally moves on in. I want to put another track on this cell that is just to the south. And that's making a beeline toward Shelby County. So with that in mind, I'm going to move it over just a little bit. Let's do this. Move that over and down and now let's put a track on it. Still moving at about 50 to 60 miles per hour. May slow up a little bit as it gets to the river, but we'll track it at that and we'll keep it right there along and south of I-40. So it's going to move into Duncan. Its current speed will be there in nine minutes, 22 minutes before it moves into Forest City. It will get into Mariana in about 50 minutes, 64 minutes from Hughes, about uh, an hour and 22 minutes before it moves into West Memphis. And it should be moving into Memphis in just over an hour and a half. We'll see it get into Germantown in about, uh, in about two hours, just over two hours. And it looks like we'll see it move into Hernando in about two and a half hours. So that is what we are looking at with that cell and that portion of the storm. But it is still very impressive. This entire line still continuing to churn. It's a, what's really been impressive, though, is the amount of time that this line here has just remained over that area, over northeastern Arkansas. And Spencer, I was talking earlier about the potential for this to go from a tornadic situation to now a flooding situation because we have these training echoes that are just basically just driving copious amounts of rain into areas that are already rain soaked and it shows no sign of letting up anytime soon with another band behind it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, and, and these lines, instead of moving directly east or southeast, a lot of times if these move southeast, you don't have to worry about uh, that training effect as much. But uh, right now, these are moving northeast. And so even though the, uh, the cells are moving quickly northeast, the line itself is not moving as fast. So that's why you end up with a lot of rain in some areas. We didn't think that we would have quite as much uh, flooding if this would move through a little quicker, but uh, this seems to be uh, again taking its time and you've got a couple different areas that you have to worry about. So uh, we will have one round come through and then the main round along the front is still back to the west of that. In fact, if I go back and I'm going to zoom out a little bit and head over to and look at uh, the uh, let me see if I can pull up the main area here that we're looking at of national radar and here we go got it now and it will basically show you 
that area, we've got those two, two distinct lines of showers and thunderstorms. But uh, as you mentioned, Ron, this is not a, uh, as much of a tornado threat as it's going to be a damaging wind and a, maybe a flooding threat now. So that's something uh, we'll certainly have to keep an eye on. I have been watching these storms, though, uh, and I've been looking along them, and I'm not seeing as much uh, concern for uh, spin ups at this time. Now, again, as you mentioned, that could change, but for now, things seem to be uh, a little bit better than they were, uh, say, an hour or two ago. I'm going to look at the reflectivity one more time. In that area that has the uh, potential for damaging wind, there might be a little bit of rotation near the uh, Morrow community and uh, just to the uh, north and west of Mariana. So this is uh, US Highway 79 here. So just to the north and west of Highway 79, there could be a little bit of, uh, of uh, rotation here. This is that area that I'm looking at right here. Let me look one more time. Yeah, and there is, you can see it. Oh, I see that, yeah. Yeah, so we're, we're getting a little bit of rotation, but nothing that looks as bad as it did earlier. Now, we're still pretty far away from the radar, so uh, mm -hmm. I think we're looking up at about almost 6,000 feet. So that's still a good ways from the radar, but we'll watch those areas uh, over the next little bit. But, Ron, it looks like uh, the tornado threat has now ended at least uh, – there are no tornado warnings in our DMA as they have now moved on or in our uh, area as they have moved on now toward uh, Martin, Tennessee, which is uh, covered by uh, Paducah. But uh, right now uh, we are certainly uh, doing better, faring better than we were uh, a couple of hours ago. Yeah, that is very, very encouraging to see. And as, as Spencer likes to say, the storms are behaving. <laughs> which is, uh, that's, that's one of his favorite lines. I like that. They are behaving. But we still want to keep a close eye on that southern portion of the line. And, and Spencer, it, it looks primarily like I think we could transition from a tornadic situation into a straight line wind, severe thunderstorm situation, especially from Memphis south. Yeah, especially yeah, and that and that's uh, that's the hope is that even though that area hasn't been worked over, Ron, and you know we talked about the fact that this area. And let me let me zoom out on this, and I'll I'll point it out to you here. Uh, this area, and if you guys could come back to me real quick on the uh, on the screen here, and I can kind of show you the area that has not been impacted at all is south of Memphis. So along and south of I-40 is the areas where the atmosphere could be more unstable, but we're in the uh, overnight hours now. And as we enter the overnight hours, typically the atmosphere just by nature is not as unstable as it is during the day. So that's going to help us some, but we'll have to see if we ha if we can tap in or if the atmosphere is still unstable enough to kick off some of those severe storms. I am noticing back toward uh, Pine Bluff, see a little bit of uh, rotation down there. So these storms could still rotate. It's not out of the question. I just don't think we're going to see, uh, fingers crossed, that what we saw earlier tonight with that big, long track tornado that moved across Arkansas all the way into western Kentucky. Yeah, it is looking more encouraging, but we certainly cannot let our guard down by any means. And there is still a lot of energy there. We have a very strong south wind that remains in northern Mississippi right now. Winds of 15, 20, 25 miles per hour. And then, Spencer, it's still warm. Look at this. It's 73 in Holly Springs. Oxford's at 72. We're at 77 in Memphis right now. Average afternoon highs for this date are in the mid-50s. And here we are right now coming up on 11 o'clock at night. And our coolest temperature in the area is Blytheville at 65, the warmest Memphis at 77. So it's going to be very interesting to see what happens when those storms enter this warm, saturated area that still has a considerable amount of energy and a pretty good amount of wind shear available in it. Now, it's primarily uh, stronger winds at the surface, but as this moves on through, we could see the potential for straight line winds and additional power outages in northern Mississippi and in West Tennessee that will continue into the overnight hours. And once again, a quick look at future casts. It's got a pretty good handle on the line, slowly bringing it through from now until about 1 o'clock in the morning, crossing the river, moving on into Memphis and Shelby County. But right there along that leading edge, that's where we can likely find the strongest winds. And there's a possibility of a secondary line developing back behind that and then catching up and all converging to create 
a series of just scattered downpours and possibly strong to severe isolated storms, especially into parts of North Mississippi and into West Tennessee. I think things will get much better overnight for eastern Arkansas and by early morning you'll be in the clear, but much of the Mid-South will still likely be dealing with rainfall, especially into northeast Mississippi and along and east of the Tennessee River Valley. And then the focus shifts into Middle Tennessee and northern Alabama by early morning. But we are also going to be experiencing falling temperatures. As a matter of fact, we'll find temps likely in the low 60s in northeast Mississippi around 8 o'clock, while temperatures in northeast Arkansas will be in the 40s. And those temperatures will continue to fall through the day. So make sure you're ready before you go to bed with your weather app, your Action News 5 weather app, first alert weather app on your smartphone. Make sure you've got your weather radio on and make sure everybody in the family knows where to go. We still have a night of severe weather to get through tonight. We still have that moderate risk in place. This is the day one outlook, and the Storm Prediction Center has not changed that yet. So the moderate risk still there. The enhanced risk remains to the south, and we still have a line of storms that continue to slowly progress through the Mid-South. Although the tornado warnings have now moved out of our coverage area, severe thunderstorm warnings continue, and that's what we have to watch as we get into the overnight hours and as we continue to watch this line move on through. Spencer, I think we'll take this up until about 11 o'clock since we have no active tornado warnings given uh, should, any, should there be no additional tornado warnings issued. We'll wrap up our coverage at 11. That'll give us a chance to regroup and get ready for what's going to be moving through overnight tonight. But I just wanted to check in with you quickly to see if you have any final thoughts before we wrap up our on-air coverage here on what uh, you're expecting tonight. Well, I just want to say, too, that we still have one warning that is it is outside of our DM or our area, but there may be some folks that have friends and family there up in uh, Martin, Tennessee. There is mm -hmm. a likely tornado on the ground there. So for the folks that are up there, uh, th there's even a tornado debris sh signature showing up on our radar right now. Move through uh, Kenton, Tennessee, Cool Springs, now moving into Sedonia and toward Martin. So if you have friends or family in those areas, be sure and uh, give them a call and check on them. We're watching uh, those cells, but again, as you mentioned, they're moving out and right now things look pretty quiet, although we'll watch this uh, storm. We're starting to see it ramp up west of Mariana, so we'll be watching that closely. All right, Spencer. Well, it's been a pleasure working with you this evening. Spencer's had a long day today. We're going to cut him loose here in a little while. Brittany Bryant will be in in the overnight hours along with Aaron Thomas, and I'm not going anywhere until this moves on out of the area. In the meantime, just to give you a quick recap on what we are dealing with. Again, the line of rain and storms continues to push through the area tonight, and we have the one severe thunderstorm warning that is in our coverage area. This is the only active warning in the Action News 5 coverage area. That is for Lee, St. Francis, and Tunica. That's going to go until 1130 tonight. The main concern with that cell is the threat for some damaging wind, some heavy rain, possibly even some hail. But even the hail threat does not seem that great. We could deal with some flooding across parts of northeastern Arkansas tonight. So I want folks in that area, if you are going to be traveling before sunrise, especially in some of the back roads, be very, very careful because there could be flooding that you won't see until you're in it. And remember, if you do approach, approach a flooded road, turn around, don't drown. We say that often. But right now, this is what we're dealing with. The one warning that is working its way through the coverage area. We'll continue to keep you updated on our First Alert Weather app with videos there and on our website. I encourage you to check out actionnews5.com. We'll have some updates there. And of course, Facebook and Twitter will have updates. And should there be additional tornado warnings, we'll be back on the air and walk you through them through the overnight hours. In the meantime, we'll now get you back to your regularly scheduled programming. On behalf of meteorologist Spencer Denton, Kanji Anthony, and Joe Birch, I want to thank you for joining Action News 5 tonight. Have a safe night and know that we are watching and will not sleep until this leaves the area. And you can count on Action News 5 and the First Alert Weather team to keep you updated on the air, on the web, and on the First Alert Weather app. Talk to you again soon.
so safe. Like that was amazing. Thank you. This, this thing, I, so think when, I think when the sun comes up tomorrow, you're going to see trucks all over yeah. the yeah. interstate 55. Yeah, I got a text from somebody who's told me there's trucks all over. Everywhere. Yeah. I think we're going to see. They're flipped everywhere. Tornado strikes all over our area that we don't know about. There's, there's one that just went through Gibson County right now, multiple houses destroyed. Right now, just three minutes ago. Literally. Uh, should we have stayed on for that? I almost said something, but it's in Kenton, Tennessee. Kenton is the home of the white squirrels. 